On Monday, the world lost a true auto racing pioneer in Bill France Jr. He dedicated his life to his passion, stock car racing. Bill France was a man of vision, integrity, wit, and a true leader. Tonight, we dedicate this broadcast in his memory, one of the true giants in the history of American professional sports. It's all about getting out on the dirt, being able to sling it sideways and have a great time. You've got the best of the best in the Cup Series. And all on the same night together, how can you afford to not see that? Good old fashioned horsepower. I feel the need for speed. I want to capture the checkered flag. I'm sitting in a hot rod today. You need to be fearless. You're going to see a whale of a race. It's going to be fun. It doesn't get any better than that. I just love to race. <laughs> Eat my dust. Catch me if you can. Twenty thousand fans have packed this fifty-three-year-old historic dirt track facility, all coming for a great cause, but all coming to see great names like Jeff Gordon, Kenny Schrader. The list goes on and on. Drag racers, Formula One drivers, they've all come to Eldora Speedway. It's the third annual Nextel Prelude to the Dream, presented by Old Spice. And Tony, we've talked about it for months and it is finally here. The cars are all lined up. The drivers are here. Jeff Gordon is debriefing. He had a bigger debrief moments ago with the crew members from Hendrick Motorsports See, that they flew that, up here. We don't call that debriefing in dirt track racing. He's storytelling? He was uh, telling the crew guys what happened in his hot lap session. So we only debrief in, in Nextel Cup and Indy cars and stuff like that. But it's finally here. This is such a huge night for a great cause. And so many people have put so much into tonight. I know you've got to feel relieved that finally we can drop the green flag and go have fun. Yeah, it's, uh, it's been so many man. I can't imagine what, what guys like Humpy Wheeler and Eddie Gossage and, and Ed Clark and uh, guys uh, across the country that host Nextel Cup events. Uh, I can't even fathom what it takes to put on a big event like that. It's just, just to have 20,000 people here and, uh, and to have 25 of my, my good friends come here and race with us, it's, uh, it's a huge undertaking. But, uh, you know, guys like Eddie Jarvis and Brett Fruit and Mike Arning and everybody at Eldor Speedway and the people from, from Sprint Nextel and uh, everybody at Old Spice really worked hard and worked together to, to make all this happen. It was a logistical nightmare uh, because of where we're at. There's no major airports around here. We had everybody coming into three different airports and so shuttling people in and out and, and uh, just the logistics of making everything happen here. It, it's on such a bigger scale than what dirt track racing seen for a long time that uh, I'm just glad we're finally uh, up and going here and uh, I, I'm I, the happiest I've been in the last 30 hours has been just that three or four minutes I got to drive the car a minute ago because I wasn't worried about packing the track. I wasn't worried about uh, how we were getting people from the airport. I got to drive, but uh, I'm really excited. I mean, a uh, perfect example, just seeing Jeff Gordon get out of his car after hot laps. He's parked next to me here and to see the smile on his face and he's like, man, thanks for inviting me. Uh, that's made my night right there, just knowing that uh, just one, you know, four or five lap hot lap session was enough to put a smile on his face. Well, let's take a look now at our Crown Royal lineup for tonight. We're going to have qualifying sessions for two laps, and then we're going to have heat races, followed by a B main, and then the 30-lap A main. So a big lineup tonight. We've got some more action getting ready to take place in the racetrack, but now let's go across the garage area to the editor of Speedway Illustrated, Dr. Dick Berger. Well, you've already heard tonight that Juan Pablo Montoya had never driven a car like this, had never driven on dirt, so he surely needs practice. There was a practice session just a few moments ago, but Montoya didn't fit properly into the seat, and as a result, he sat here while the mechanics worked on the seat. Indeed, they are still working on the seat, trying to get him going. How anxious are you to get out there? It's pretty exciting, and it's a... Uh you want to try to get as many laps as possible. You know, you're a little, I'm a little competitive, so a I want to just a little bit. But I think it's pretty exciting. I think the, the whole experience is pretty good. And just, uh, just learning a new world of motorsports for me. You know, I never even imagined you could run on dirt until I came back to the States. So it's pretty cool. And they are still working on that seat, and there's a good lesson for racers all over America. Be sure your seat is right. Don't drive the car if the seat and the belts don't fit properly. 
Well, Dick, we've caught up now with Jeff Gordon, who has officially taken his hot laps. Now, we're looking at the sheet, and we're looking for the Jeff Gordon name. Fifteen. Fifteen. But, yeah, but I was in the last session, so... Uh no, I'm not making excuse. excuse. It was fun, man. These things are a blast. I'm so glad that I'm here, and uh, well, I think it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. But, uh, you know, it's an interesting car. You know, you, you got to drive it in really hard uh, into the corner to get to turn, but then the track's pretty slick, so you got to really get off the throttle and be careful for the wheel spin. So we're going to make a few adjustments, see if I know anything about dirt track racing, and uh, I know these guys do. I just want to give them the right information, but we had a lot of fun out there. I'm just glad I didn't spin out because I thought I was going to a couple of times. Well, you last raced here in 1991. How has this racetrack changed in that 16-year period? Well, the biggest thing has changed is the car. You know, I'm just, uh, I've never been in a dirt late model before. I was in a midget, sprint car, silver crown cars. And, you know, th those cars are just, you know, really hooked up. But uh, it's amazing what they can do with these things to, to hook them up. Uh, you know, I think, I think, I like how, how equal these cars are, how much driver input is in there, and this track is just a blast. I mean, it's, it, to me, this is probably the coolest dirt track that there is to race on. Now, looking around your car, I see all your crew members from Hendrick Motorsports, the 48 crew member guys, 24 guys, and I think they were having more fun watching you in this situation than almost you. you I mean, they were like kids in a candy store. Yeah, you know what? It's so cool to have support from those guys, and, and when I first said I was going to do this, uh, they said, hey, can we come? Can we come? We want to watch. We want to watch. So I said, heck yeah. So, you know, Hendrick was, uh, uh, you know, good enough to, to put an airplane together, bring all those guys up here. And uh, it, I don't know what, what was more exciting, you know, me being out there in the track or coming in, seeing how excited those guys were to see me on dirt. <laughs> well, you can see how excited he is about this event tonight, the third annual Next Al Prelude to the Dream. Hot laps coming up shortly. Let's go upstairs to Mike Joy and the gang. Mike. Mike Joy and the gang. The gang is Kyle Petty and Daryl Waltrip. Now, usually, Daryl, you've been out in your Petty driving experience, ride and drive car. You were just on the racetrack. Tell us what it's like. Oh, yeah. I was just out there, folks, so I got firsthand information for you. That water truck is not very fast, and it pushes like a dump truck. Now, I can fill you in on that part. Plus, I was going the wrong way, which if I was in one of these stupid things, I'd be going the wrong way anyway. So, Kyle, but I watched practice. I watched the warm-up, Mike, and these guys are serious, baby. There's Daryl in the there truck. You there, there you are in the truck, going the wrong way, like you said, going the wrong. But you're exactly right. These guys are serious. It's funny. They 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 sit over there and they talk about it and they talk about the race and they talk about coming up here and doing it for the Victory Junction Game Camp and having doing it for a good cause and having fun. They crank those engines and their brains pop out of gear. <laughs> Let me tell you something. They're going for the trophy. They're going to beat everybody. You heard the drag racers talking about beating each other. That's all they're concerned about. These guys want to run in the top five. Want to run in the top ten. Uh, it's going to be a fun race, man. With the like we talked earlier with the diverse group of experience and that type thing, it's going to be an incredible race. The field range is from Kyle Busch, age 21, to Charles Red Farmer, age, I think he's like Jack Benny, he's like 79 and holding. I think Red's 77. I know he's been racing for 59 years, and you know who's standing by in relief for Red? If he needs it, <laughs> Dick Trickle. Trickles older in dirt. And, and, and Red told me, he said, I don't think I can last 30 laps on this track. He, but, and let me tell you why. He said, this is like trying to run Talladega. He said, this joint is fast. These cars are a handful. They get off on the right rear. They're sliding. you got to fight the wheel here. He said, this, tra this track is like a quarter mile as far as uh, how long it takes to get around it. 15 seconds, Mike. From hot laps, if I had to pick one driver to beat tonight, it, my pick would be Bill Elliott. Yeah, watching Bill, you were exactly right. You picked Bill right off the bat. Bill went to the high side right up next to the wall. Uh, and he was up, through, everybody else was throwing up dirt. He was not throwing up a lot of dirt. He was on the cushion getting it done. And I'm going to tell you something, though. Uh, it's just like we talked about. You, when you look at those guys, you're going to see him, you're going to see Schrader, and you're going to see Tony and JJ. There's a few of them, but uh, Elliott may be a great pick tonight. The guy that's going to get his first win of the season, it's not a cup race, but I think it's going to be the 07, Clint Boyer. Wow. He was awesome looking going around there to me. I like him. All right, it's going to be a fun night tonight. Pay-per-view telecast of the next Nextel Prelude to the Dream is brought to you by HBO Pay-Per-View. We got comments earlier today from these drivers on transitioning from asphalt or concrete to the dirt at Eldora. There's not many half-mile tracks like Eldora. Uh, it's a different world, you know, no doubt. 
the cars, the tracks, everything about it's different. You don't have a mirrored radios and uh, the groove changes around a lot. It's car control is what it's all about. And, you know, when you're in the corners and the, and the cars slide and you're actually back steering the car and turn to the right while you're still going around a corner to the left. It's getting used to, to how that car hikes up and, and moves around quite a bit and getting it to turn into the corner. I just enjoy being on the edge and being able to, to race there, race on the edge like that sideways and, and getting all you can. Sometimes you've got to be right on the cushion, sometimes your car might be too tight and you might run right in the middle of the racetrack. So it's a matter of finding the groove that suits your race car uh, and it's not always the, uh, the most favorite groove. Second round of hot laps has begun. I see. I like. I like dirt track. I like short track racing. This. This is like going back 30 years for me. We're not having practice. We're having hot laps, baby. That's what's exciting about watching this place is you've got guys out there who are running all the way up next to the wall and guys that are trying to make it work all around the bottom. And you don't see that on a weekly basis at most of your local short tracks or anywhere you go. You always see that on dirt. And, and what I love about this, I don't know. I'm not really sure. I know I couldn't at my age. I don't think I could do what these cats are doing out there tonight, Kyle. They are throwing these things around there, and they are on the gas, baby. Let's, I, I, let's do them. I, look at look at Bill Elliott here coming out of the corner and some of these guys. My toy is out there for the very, very first time. Uh, the first time on the road. Think about what he's thinking when he's out there tooling around and Bill Elliott comes by looking down at him sideways, <laughs> looking straight at him on the inside. You know, I can kind of see how you might get around here by yourself. Oh, yeah. But by golly, I don't know how you race out there when you got to slide around the way you do. I, I, and I, but here's the one thing that kills me, Daryl. When I came here for the first time and these guys run on dirt, they don't run mirrors, man. How can you have a race car without a mirror? I don't care about all the other things in the world. I got to have a mirror to see who's going to hit me from behind. <laughs> Well, that's the end of those hot laps. Yep. 39 is uh, Ryan Newman. Now, only four drivers are driving cars here that they own. Everyone else is driving a car provided by a local racer who will run here this weekend and every week. And we're going to give you a little time to see if you can figure out who has their own piece here. And, and then we'll fill you in. But there are only four of them. Even uh, Matt Kenseth, for example, is not one of them because a lot of these cars tonight were repainted or vinyl wrapped in the colors of the Nextel, Nextel Cup driver that's behind the wheel. And, and that was, you know, that was just for the people at home who are buying this on HBO, who, are, who want to see the pay-per-view so that they don't have to, to look for Jeff Gordon's car. You see it, it's a DuPont car. You know what he's in. You know that, you know, when you look at the 99 car, it's an, it's a, a, an Office Depot car. So that was for those reasons. And these guys really went out of their way. These guys work on these cars on a weekly basis. You know, we run cup cars. We just expect this stuff to happen. These guys that, that are furnishing these cars tonight, my hat's off to every one of them because they prepared some great cars and made them look like cup cars. So, so we're going to let you guess, kind of think about it, who's in their own car, and we'll tell you during time trials. Well, the other thing is these cars that are, are borrowed cars, loaner oh, yeah. cars, if you will, they're going to race Saturday night. So there's some guys down there that are saying, hey, dude, you know, could you back off just a little bit? Don't tear my car up, please. We've all done that before. We've gone somewhere to a local track, borrowed somebody's car, ran it in the wall, and then jumped over the fence and ran whenever it was over <laughs> we didn't want to, Not that we didn't want to confront him. We didn't want to confront his wife when it was over with, though, because that's who the car owner the really is. The crew member, yeah. That's exactly right. Well, I think as you watch these guys go around here, you'll see what I'm talking about, folks at home. This, this is serious business, right? I want you to watch that car right there. This dude, now, he is a dirt track racer, and he knows what he's doing. He's not out here trying to learn. He's, he knows what he's doing. But that's not fair, okay? Because he's only four or five years removed from running these cars. For Jeff Gordon just said, it's been since 91 since he run one of these cars. So it's like the, the newer you are to the Cup Series or the newer you are to, to round track racing, you've got a better chance on dirt. Now, in this practice session, everyone is driving a car with their usual number on it. The exception is that number 10 is not Scott Riggs. It's Ray Evernham. Riggs' car owner is driving that one. But, Kyle, just just so we, we'll see how it works out. When you said it's not fair, let's see how it works out. Okay, I'm going to say that's, just, that's not Jeff fair. Gordon. It's not fair. That's Jeff Gordon. And then these other guys, they've got a little bit of experience on uh, dirt, and sometimes a little bit's all you need. Some, you're exactly right. There's some guys who have really run good here. Uh, Kenny Wallace come over here a couple of years ago and just fell in love with dirt. Here's inside Casey Kane's car right here. And look uh, at him work that wheel. Now, if, we were, if we were at Dover last week, we'd say, caution. Yeah, <laughs> that's the way I looked at Dover last week. 
I, I, I got to tell you a quick story. First time I went to a dirt track race, long, long time. I, I went with an open face and bubble goggles. And they didn't make me qualify. I went out and practiced a little bit, put on a show for the fans. They started me in the middle of the field. Come off turn four, Santa Fe Speedway. I thought somebody was shooting at me. <laughs> My dirt was hitting me in the face, and when it was over with, Mike, it looked like I'd been in a knife fight. Wow. My little open face helmet and bubble, bottles didn't, bubble goggles didn't work too hot. There's Red. Red Farmer. They say he's 74. I think maybe that's his official bio. We think that. Well, if he's 74, he started racing at age 15. Well, in 1969, I ran my first race, really big race at Nashville, Tennessee, and Red was pretty old then. <laughs> pretty old. That's, and that is an excellent way to put it, Red. <laughs> pretty old. He has just been pretty old for a long time. Look how intense yep. he is explaining to him. He's out walking around the car. He's moving his hands. It, that right there looks like Jeff Gordon or Tony Stewart after they've run a cup race or after a qualifying effort to say, and this is what my car was doing. He doesn't have earplugs. He just turned his hearing aids up. He that's says, exactly what? Right. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what old racers, all of us, you know, your daddy and all of us got, the, got them little oh, yeah. hearing aids. Yeah, they just turn them down when, you don't, when they don't want to hear you. Here's Dave Blaney. owns his own racetrack, Sharon Speedway, which is a great, great facility. He does a lot for the Victory Junction Game Camp, but uh, he, he is no stranger to dirt at all. All right, we got to give you a few names and numbers here. Kenny Wallace is 36. That's a number he used to use in the Bush series. The 01 is Mark Martin, even though it's not an Army painted car. And the 80 is Eric Almarola, the Joe Gibbs development driver. Everyone else are the usual suspects. And I believe, I believe the car chief on the 01 car is Red Farmer's grandson. I believe I'm oh. right about that. Caution flag, turn four. And how old would Red Farmer's grandson be? My age? He's 40. Yeah, I was say, my age? <laughs> Red and Dick Bergen have a lot in common. Oh. Red is the Jack Benny of auto racing. He'll just always be 39. True, true. Some of these drivers have an impressive dirt track racing resume, and one of those is Dave Blaney. We spent, boy, I bet 10 full seasons with the World of Outlaws pretty much. It was a blast. That's what I grew up doing was racing sprint cars. My dad raced sprint cars. So, you know, to get to the World of Outlaw level was, you know, the, the you know, the furthest you, furthest you could get in sprint car racing and to travel all over the country and make a living at it was pretty exciting. I thought it was the, the best sprint car racing going. Um, maybe the best short track racing going as far as learning. <laughs> how to drive, learning how to get a hold of those, you know, rocket ships of race cars. They are just, uh, they're really fast and really hard to, to get a hold of. And I felt like if you could learn how to win races in those things, you could learn how to win in anything. Dave Blaney, World of Outlaws veteran and now Nextel Cup driver. Prelude to the Dream was not named for that little Honda car they used to sell. <laughs> Uh, it's because the dream is coming up this weekend. It's the 13th annual running of the $100,000 to win 100 lap dirt late model race. Last year they had 138 entries. It takes two days to run it. It's a dirt car racing sanctioned event. And the dream is this weekend here at Eldora. And there's two racetracks as a kid growing up when I think about super speedways of uh, dirt tracks. It was Eldora for one, Knoxville for the other. And then some of the bigger mile tracks, Springfield and some of those tracks, the coin was a great track to go to. But this joint here is one that will get your attention. This thing is fast. Yeah, you know, I, I just grew up in the southeast where everything was paved, where they were mostly paved, paved tracks. So dirt was, was something odd to me. And Eldora, my God, I thought it was out west forever. Uh, you know what I mean? Because it was Eldora, you know what I mean? Yeah. And to find out it's in the middle of Ohio when I first came here, I was just blown away at this facility and, and what it was. And there you see right there, the same banking today on this track that we had at Dover last week, 24 degrees in the turns, 9 degrees at Dover, 8 degrees here on the straightaways. And uh, this joint holds almost 18,000 people. And they're all going to, all these seats and uh, some little camping areas as well and, and uh, blankets are going to be filled tonight. What I like is, is turn two, because the grandstands are way up high on the hillside, and then there's what in the concert business they call festival seating, or lawn seating, below the grandstands. You can get up close and get a few clods sitting out there. How, how close do you want to be? Let me tell you something. <laughs> I went to run with Schrader a couple of years ago out of Peavley, and Schrader said, now if you stand right here between these two billboards, you'll get a good idea of, of what these cars do when they come down in the corner. 
it didn't take me but about one practice session and getting hit in the face like you're talking about with Claude. <laughs> and he's like, you're an idiot, man. It's obviously the first time you've ever been to a dirt track. And he was right. All right, who's fast in hot laps, Dick Bergeron? Well, Bill Elliott is, and I'll tell you what, I've been all over the garage, and the one guy who's smiling more than anybody else is this guy. You're handling this thing like it's Talladega or Daytona or something. Uh, are you as comfortable as you look out there? Well, I thought I looked, I felt pretty bad. I didn't think it looked that good. But, uh, you know, Ray Cook and the guys put a heck of a car together. And, I mean, that's the thing, you know, here for it's a, for a great cause. I mean, for Kyle Petty and the Victory Junction gang, I mean, that's what we're here for, and that's the main reason. And we just need to come have a good time. And the rest of it, whatever happens, happens. But I just enjoy running this stuff. It, it's, it's great to come here to Eldora. I mean, Tony's done a heck of a job with this racetrack. And just to come here and be able to, it's kind of like going to Indy, you know, Indy and Daytona, all the history at those places. And you look at this racetrack, all the history that has involved at Eldora Speedway over the years, it's just an honor to be here. So many of the greats have run here, but none of the greats have run here with the power plant you have under your hood. Who built that thing? Ernie, my brother Ernie, and it's a heck of a motor. It's, it's, it's got way enough motor, but uh, he does a good job on that stuff. He always has over the years. And, uh, you know, this is kind of a test project of his, and we'll just see how it does tonight. All right. Have fun tonight, my friend. Thank you. What do you what do you think <laughs> way enough motor no, means? No, but it was, uh, that was cool, but did you see that little grin he got in his face? You know, uh, way when, enough motor. When he used to run away and lap everybody, he'd just say, oh, I ain't nothing an old short track motor Ernie built for me to run down here at Talladega. <laughs> <laughs> Folks, be sure and check out the new Track Pass Race View from NASCAR.com. Video gaming meets live racing. You can watch live racing action from three virtual camera angles and listen to your favorite driver's in-car communication. Go to NASCAR.com today. Some of these drivers have not been on dirt for a long, long time, like the one who's with Matt. And Ray Everham ran modifies from 79 to 83, and then again back in 91. When was the last time you were on dirt? Um, I did a little exhibition thing at uh, US 13 in Del Mar a couple years ago. Didn't turn out real good. I think, we were, I think we were wheels up at one point there, but it's been a while. I think I might have been on dirt maybe six times in my whole life. You can't wipe the smile off your face. You are having a great time. I am, and, you know, this is something that's really special to, to come here and be able to be part of this, and for Tony to ask me or let me be part of it is just a, a amazing deal. You know, we can help Victory Junction, uh, and, and to be on this track with all these great drivers, is uh, it's a dream come true. He couldn't have given me a million bucks and made me any happier. Now, you were 10th fastest in the first session, but you were a little concerned about the guy parked next to you. You were told to, to stay away from him. Yeah, we're not sure. He's um, a guy out of Virginia, and, you know, like, he, he might not look very fast in practice, but those guys have a tendency to... The sandbag. I just hope he doesn't have the Dover set up in that thing because that didn't work very good either. <laughs> and that would be his driver, Elliot Sadler, driving the number 19. Hey, Dick Matt, Berger? while you, well, Matt, yep. oh, excuse go ahead, me. Go ahead, Mike. Matt, while you're right there, ask Ray because he had to explain it to Elliot Sadler. How you get one of these things in gear and get it going? Well, we've talked a lot about that. And while he's doing a little quick uh, conversation with the crew, describe the conversation talking about how you get this car in gear because this is not like a normal stock car where you have the the h pattern you just put it in gear and put it and drop the clutch and go no it's actually got two little shifter handles uh one's low one's high and you put it in low and push the brake and, or i'm sorry push the clutch push the clutch down to get it rolling and then let off and snap it back into high and with those two little handles but we did tell juan pablo matoya that that was two shifters and he needed to use one when he was on the top and then when he went down the bottom just take that little one and push it all the way forward and what was his response he was making notes we'll see <laughs> i think i saw i hope they're not changing the motor down there <laughs> now let's go to dick Berger. and dick I'm with Rowdy Bush. He's 22 years old. The last time he was in one of these cars, he was 15. So for a third of his life, he has not raced on dirt and never raced a dirt late model. How's it going? Well, it showed so far today. Uh, I hate it for these guys. We've had to put a whole new right front suspension on it. Uh, I got through one pretty good, got through the center one and two, and had a wheel spinning, and the thing was just backing up the racetrack. So I kind of rolled out of it, and the thing got real tight, came back around on me, and then nosed it in the fence a little bit. and. So tore it up, but uh, you know these guys are working awfully hard. I can see that. So uh, hopefully we can get it back out and qualify in the show and just have a good night. Okay, wish you well. Thanks. We under understand that um, Tony Stewart spent about five hours yesterday packing the track, uh, and he's shot here straight from Dover to try to get this place ready to put to have a great racing surface and facility for his friends to come play on. I just wonder if Rowdy's crew though had ever had. Uh, 
uh, that much information about what happened that the car got wrecked. Oh, it got a little bit loose, and then it pushed, and then the tire spun, and then I went backwards, and then I hit the fence. I mean, that's a lot of information. I, I just usually say I wreck. But you, talk, <laughs> but you talk about Tony coming out here. You know, th this track means everything in the world to Tony Stewart. You know, I, I think he, he's tied to this racetrack in a lot of ways. And when he bought this track from Earl and he come out here, he wants not only for the guys that are in the garage area in the infield there, uh, to, to have a good place to race. He wants it to be a great show for the people sitting in the stands and the people that are at home viewing this on TV. <laughs> We're going to go back back to Matt, who is with a racer who uh, is, I think, just about twice his age. He began his racing career back in 1948 in Miami, Florida, and that's the legendary Charles Red Farmer. And if you look at the T-shirt, original Alabama gang member, NASCAR modified champion, what is now the NASCAR Bush Series champion, 67, 70, 71. You can go on and on his racing resume, but on the fun factor for you to come out every year, this has to be something. I know you guys drove up here nine hours from Alabama. This is something that you always put on your calendar every year. Well, that's right. I ran the first one for Tony and I ran the second one. This is the third one. I hope I'm able to run the fourth one because it's such a good cause to help this Victor Junction kids. And, uh, you know, I've got nine grandkids and five great grandkids, so I know what kids are for. So. Anything I can do to help Tony and them to promote this thing, I'm going to try to do it. Well, how's your race car? Do what? How's your race car? Well, it's, right now it's real tight. It's pushing the front end, getting in the corner. I can't get it to turn. <laughs> We're trying to change the front end set before qualifying and see if we can get a little bit better. Now, if you can throw to Dick Bergeron, you two will be able to hear each other. Do so go ahead and throw to Dr. Dirt, Dick Bergeron. The Dick Bergeron. There you go. There you go. What? I can't hear you, Red. <laughs> turn up your hearing aid. <laughs> With Clint Boyer, this guy could really mess it up for everybody else. You've got so much experience on the dirt, a car that you have finished in second place with at the Lowe's Motor Speedway a couple of weeks ago. You're going to take it easy on these guys? I tell you, I'm not the fastest by any means. Uh, you know, he's just looking at the, the practice sheet there. You know, we're fifth on the sheet. We're just trying to get it tightened up a little bit. It's a little bit too free. But uh, all my experience is modified. These late models are something new for me, but it's, uh, you know, a lot of fun being out here with these guys. And the track's a little bit slick, just trying to overcome it. You ready to go qualify? Absolutely. All right, let's send it up to Mike Joy. We're all ready to go qualify, and that's happening right now. Two time trial laps. Your fastest lap will place you in one of the three qualifying heats. The heats will be staggered. Uh, the fastest four will be inverted. And the top five in each heat transfer to the feature. From six on back, you go to the B main. And look who draw pill number one, Bill Elliott. Speaking of stagger, I noticed that they may not, I don't guess they have a cooler policy here, but I don't think they might want to consider the garbage bag policy because I saw about uh, three garbage bags being drug up into the grandstand. I'm pretty sure they didn't have Mountain Dew in it, at least not the kind we know. The man who put number nine on the map in what was then Winston Cup racing, winner of the Winston Million and Winston Cup champion. Bill Elliott from Dawsonville, Georgia, way up the racetrack. Getting way on up. the cushion, baby. Getting up there where the, there's grip up there. And, and that's where he's run all in practice. From the first time he went out, he went straight to the top of the racetrack and ran exactly where he's running now. And this track does, I mean, it'll get really slick. It'll get to real black, and uh, you can see it already has. May have to throw a little water back on it. The guy that watered it early did a great job, but uh, may not have gotten enough water down. That would be you? Well, me and my, my uh, helper there. You and your helper. 18-9-1-3 for Bill Elliott on lap one. Second I, lap was slower. That thing looks loose. That thing looks really loose, but I, I guess that's what dirt does, man. I don't, I don't know, man. I don't, I, I don't they know. all look loose. I, I, the funny part about this dirt, you know, you, you, heard, you heard Boyer and this uh, Rudiman's out here right now, but you heard Boyer talking about, you know, our car's a little loose, we've got to tighten it up. This dirt track will change all night long, and that's the one thing different than asphalt. You've got to constantly be on top of it. All, all right, right. right Daryl, Rudebeck is out there. Brag on his Toyota now, will you? No, well, this, this, I don't think this is a Toyota no, tonight, so. but <laughs> let me tell you, his dad, Buzzy, one of the greatest dirt track racers ever was in the, uh, in the Modifieds, and his brother, or his cousin, Wayne Rudeman, wins a bunch of sprint car races. These cats know how to dirt race. He had the left front going into turn one about a foot in the air. He's always putting on a show. But he's got to go. I think that piece is a little tight. 19082, the first lap. You can hear him really shut the car down when he gets it into the corner compared to what Elliott runs. Uh, but he really drives it up off the corner hard and straight. Second lap is slower. Elliott first, Rudiman second. Yeah, I think I had to work on that piece, David. That's what Bill, see, got Camry on the front of that baby. 
Uh, that's what Bill. say Tundra on that thing. I thought, <laughs> I, thought the Toyotas, I thought they were good trucks and dirt, man. Tundra. Yeah. If that's a Toyota, I'm Santa Claus. <laughs> Where's my beard? Merry All right. Christmas. <laughs> Ron Caps, 300 mile an hour, man. Driving the full throttle number 28. Now he drives He's going to park it in there. He and drives I'm, for the snake, right? And I'm going to drive for a change team. I don't know who he drives for now, but I'm going to tell you, Caps has done a great job out here in the previous couple of years that he's come out here. He latched on that first year, and like he said, he had run in the top ten. He does a great job in this car, adapting from just going 300 miles an hour in a straight line to pitching this thing off in there sideways. Wow, he's quickest, 18.407. Listen to him when he gets in the corner. He, like, almost never gets out of the gas. He's back in the gas right there, driving it straight. You can hear him just feathering it, feathering it, feathering it. He, he knows what it's like to smoke tires up out of the corner, I can tell you that. Yeah, he drives for Don Schumacher this year. Yes, He's on that team right. with, the, I think it's the brute car, if I remember right. I so, watch drag racing all the time, but then we got these guys, they, it's hard to keep up with. The them. only thing he's not going to be used to is when uh, he gets to the first corner and he's got to turn left, and there's a lot of other people in there with him, because when he gets to the end, there's only two of them most of the time. You know that. So Caps is quickest, and here is the rocket, Ryan Newman. Driving, uh, using his old USAC Silver Crown sprint car number, 39. Jasper Engines late model. Well, just like we said last week, and we'll say it all night tonight, if somebody can manhandle one around here, you're looking at him right there. What a great second place run he had at Dover on Monday. That car looks really, really good right there. Yes. I'll tell you one thing, he's trying to run around here wide open, but he does that everywhere he goes. He did it at Dover last week, why can't you do it at Eldora? <laughs> P2 for Newman, 18-601. Look at him, man, he is up Second. there. Second. He is rim riding, baby. He floats it off in the corner and goes right back to the gas on it. Oh, no. Hang on. I think he did that on purpose. I saw Ron Caps, we were talking about him, and he's coming around the bottom of the racetrack to go in the pit lane there. And watch what he does here. Watch this. Da -da 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 -da. Time to go in the pits. Whoops. Oops. That's good. These cars have a ton of rear brakes. Okay, and you got you got and that's a prime example of it. They got rear, rear brakes, so when you hit them, it snaps them out and sets the car getting in the corner. So you just have to stab them. And now you remember what uh, Doc in the movie Cars told Lightning: You got to turn right to go left. And here's the man that knows how to turn right to go left. You bet. If you're over 40, give it up for Red Farmer, age 74, coming to the white. And you know Red Farmer's got it tuned in when everybody else was talking about all this other stuff and Red was talking about making a front end of adjustment. Right. Uh, just a, a small camera or a caster change or a small geometry change. He might have wanted it to steer a little bit easier, what do you think? <laughs> could have, could have. I'd have just changed power to steer from. 18.863 on lap one, that's third fastest, second lap a little slower. Next up, Matt Kenseth. Now this, this car was getting around there pretty sporty yeah. in practice. Saying that Matt was driving the wheels off this thing. When, when Matt came here from one of the first preludes to the dream, uh, he just fell in love with running dirt. I mean, Man. he just had a great, great time and has come back every year and has gotten better and better and better. Watch him, Tom. Now he goes down here and I listen, locks it, just pops it in there and then jumps right back in the throttle. I mean, he really hustles the car. But Matt's smooth as silk. And, and you know that. You watch him run the bush stuff and you watch him run the cup stuff. There's not a smoother driver uh, on the cup circuit. Than Matt Kenseth as far as working the throttle and working the steering wheel. I don't know if it's going anywhere or not, but it looks good. Not fast. 19209. He is the slowest of five so of six so far. Hey Cal, I believe you've got one of these things to handle. You can lap the field. <laughs> <laughs> you can get one to just run straight. I don't know why they won't run straight. I don't either. Oh, In the wall. No. On lap two. That's what the Newman almost did coming to take the checkers. There must be a little bit of a berm here or something because you saw them when they when they kind of jump out, it kind of sends them out into the wall. You see them right there and it's boom. I saw them right up into it. I, I never have quite figured out. They call it a cushion. <laughs> ain't no cushion, <laughs> bud. <laughs> ain't no cushion. I've been there. They ain't that no cushion sense, out there. Does it? <laughs> uh, Carl Edwards on track. Here's Dr. Dirt. Uh, Excuse me, Kenny Schrader. Yep. Uh, well, actually, I'm with David Rudiman, and he is one of the many guys who had never seen Eldora Speedway before coming here. What were your first impressions of this place when you saw it? I was completely blown away. I mean, uh, you see it on TV, but it's just like just like watching Bristol on TV and then going to it. It just, just doesn't do uh, the track justice. And uh, 
place is phenomenal. I got a great car here. The guy's done a great job and uh, have a lot of fun. And he's doing a good job with it too, Mike. Kenny Schrader is just a moment. Fastest, 1824. That thing is Schrader. getting right there, and he's down on the bottom. He's not up in that cushion up high like the other guys were. He's down there where there's some grip. He is digging. I think we saw a couple of cars that went out early. They were up in the cushion, throwing up a lot of dust. Kenny is right in the middle of the racetrack to the bottom, coming off the corner, getting into the black stuff. And down the straightaway here, he was a full lane over in the middle of the straightaway compared to other people. There's very few guys I know of that is as versatile as Kenny Schrader is. Tony Stewart comes to mind. Tony Stewart could race here tonight. He could go in, the, in a stock car. He could go tomorrow night and drive a, a sprint car somewhere. He could go Sunday afternoon and or Saturday afternoon drive a stock car and then go somewhere on Sunday and run an Indy car and be good in every one of them. And he was the, he's the guy that does that now. The guy that when I was coming along that did it is Kenny Schrader. Uh, and he's the one that set that standard for everybody, I think, in a lot of ways. And A.J. was the AJ, guy before yeah, that. When we were AJ, kids, yeah. the guy before AJ that. Boy. So yeah. you put Kenny Schrader in the same breath with A.J. and Tony Stewart, that's a, that's a huge thing. Rowdy Bush using his number for the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series 51, second fastest, Kyle yeah, Bush. Now this car, I think he learned from Kenny. He's running a little bit lower line. Whoops, he ran her up the hill that time. But they've, they've got that car handled a little bit better than it was in practice. Of course, the right front tire was stuffed up under the firewall in practice. That's true. Maybe he just knocked the bad suspension off so they put the good one on. <laughs> Kyle Bush, second fastest. And he's got Rowdy on the roof. I'd be a little worried if I was the rest of these boys. From Modesto, California and Pittsburgh, Indiana, the DuPont 24 for four-time Nextel Cup champ, Jeff Gordon. Now, you know, this is just, a, to me, this is a contradiction. It's an almost, Jeff Gordon doesn't drive a car sideways. No. I, I have never seen him in a car sideways until tonight. He looks nice right there through one and two, and I'm going to tell you something. He's on the bottom of the racetrack, and that's where he spent all his time practicing. We saw Ron Capps qualify down in the middle and on the bottom, and that's the same place Jeff was. The last time Jeff Gordon was here, it was for a USAC midget race 16 years ago. Pretty he pretty won pretty. it. He's fastest, 18.078. Yeah, pretty fast right there, boys. You know, the last time he was here, you know what he did. Of course, it's been 15 years ago. He won. Hey, look, he's looking good right now. They all get up on this berm coming down through here. Though. Second lap for Gordon, 17.998. What's the track record around this joint anyway? What's the track record? That, that's amazing because he almost jumped the berm here on the front stretch and almost had to roll out of it, kind of like we Never saw mind. Matt Kenseth <laughs> and some of those guys. Kind of like we said 15 seconds. No, no. <laughs> we are not in the 15 second range. The no, track no. record here at Eldora, this type of car is in a 15 second range. Now they may see that in the dream. When they, when they start running the dream here, uh, they may see that, but I don't think they're gonna see it out of this, this group. Casey Kane away up the track in the number nine who raced USAC Silver Crowns here in 2000. You see that car going to turn three, it hits the bumps, it kind of washed up. Yeah, it's not exactly where he wanted it to be, coming off four there. This car's just not turning like No, it, it to goes straight, point. and then he has to really juke it to get it around. Listen to me commentate, the, car, the car's not turning like it wants to. I'm not out there driving, how do I know whether it's turning like it wants to? Well, if it makes it feel any better, it's the way it looks. Yeah, well, I'm not gonna say anything else about no, the way they drive. You got a headset on, that's why you're here. I don't know about that. All right, first lap for Kane, 18.335. Second lap, 18.383. So Casey Kane is third. He thinks he'll just keep going. He just wants to keep going. He likes this thing. He's, he's got it set up for the long run. Yeah. Look, when you're out there running and you got pull-offs and you got to turn right and left, you don't know how many laps you yeah. run. Give him a break. Yeah. I got it kind of set up for the long run. I think he kept going. He got down into 15s. From Chesterfield, Virginia, the Virginia Karting Association state champion on dirt in 1995, Denny Hamlin. When we were here last year and it rained us out the first day, uh, Denny Hamlin was the most disappointed young man I have ever seen in my life. He wanted to drive that race so bad that day. He, he had been to practice, he was pumped up. 18714 for Hamlin. He is seventh right now. Let's those little things dig up at back straight. They're going uphill back there, man. I tell you, that's a big pull up that back straightaway. Tell you what, it might not have been the fastest car, but it looked good. It looked good 
good and steady, good and steady, getting in the corner, and he drove it where he wanted to. When he turned the wheel, it pointed the direction he wanted to. And some of these guys have run faster, but hadn't been that in control. I think, I think to qualify fast, you got to be out of control. Yeah, best, I think so. Too. Best I can tell. <laughs> That's what it looks like from up here. Former NASCAR modified and dirt modified on asphalt racer, Ray Evernham. Whoa, Ray. I'll tell you one thing, Ray, you're not hurting for motor, I can tell that. That baby was screaming down through there. But this is what's pretty cool about Ray. I want you to think about this. All these other guys every week go out to lay down a qualifying lap. And they've got to do it. They've got to pump themselves up and they've got to get ready. Ray is an owner. He watches his drivers go do it. Today, he's got to get pumped up to go out there and lay down a qualifying lap. 19-4-29 on the first lap. He just he needs more rear grip. Yeah. yeah he, he just can't get he's not he's making a lot of noise. I think he's spinning the tires too much. Yeah, he's really, really not hooked up coming out of turn two over there. He it just stands uh -oh. up off the uh -oh. rear tires. Uh oh, 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 oh. He's alright. Man. That lap was well looked better. Kind of mirrored the first one. Yeah, he he's just not got enough rear grip. He needs to get a little bit more forward bite up off the corner. Making a lot of noise and not going anywhere. Sounds like that water truck to me. And that thing was right, time. baby. <laughs> and looking good, too. And that, that sounds like the water truck, too, you know? Now, here goes my buddy right here. I think this is the guy to watch right here, boys. Clint Boyer, dirt modified champion at Lakeside Speedway, Kansas City, in 2001 and 2002. Let's do it. Man, I love the way he jacks it down in there. Oh, that's on the hood. Sorry. Jack is in Daniels. <laughs> that's it. I chose him to win the Coca-Cola 600 because I wanted the headlines to say Jack and Coke. <laughs> That's funny. Uh-oh. He, he 18, 5, 1, 7. And that is 6. I believe he's working the invert. What do you think? He could be working the invert. Yeah, I think they're going to invert a number of cars. I think he's working. I told you, these guys, these guys still remember the invert. I guess that's what I'm trying to say about yeah. being young. They still remember that. Trust me, when you run enough of these races week in, week out, like some of these guys do, you learn to work the invert. And for those folks that wonder what we're talking about, that's where they go down, they'll spin a little uh, bingo ball around and a uh, number will pop up, and that's how many cars they re they invert to start the race. And that number will be four. Four here. They've already chosen that oh, number Oh, they've already here. got they've already the chosen okay, that. Good. So, so these guys know, so it's like a chess game right now, what they're playing. First time on dirt. A dirt track virgin, so to speak, Elliot Sadler out of Emporia, Virginia. Now he's kind of driving like I would. Kyle. Yeah, he's trying to kind of. I'm going to back off. I'm going to get it right down next to that inside wall right there, and that's where I'm going to ride. And he's trying to drive it fairly straight. I know he thinks he's really hung out, but he's driving it fairly straight. All the short track racers I ever raced with, they told me eight tires have got a whole lot more grip than four. Yeah, that's right. So you get down on the bottom if she's slow. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. 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 But his first lap was seventh quickest, 18.788. That was a good lap. There must be some grip down around the bottom. The, 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 the mud may still be a little damp down there, and he's able to get a little tackiness. Well, Ray told him how to get it going. Let's see if it works. We'll, uh, <laughs> you'll be at Pocono this next week. You'll have more lingo. You'll have to unlearn all these terms. That's exactly right. Oh, I don't know. Pocono's, little kinda little kinda like dirt. <laughs> Pocono's kinda like dirt across the tunnel over there. You just get there and just pitch it. All right, let's uh, recheck this. Sadler is ninth, ninth fastest as he limps at home after a spin on the backstretch. And Kyle, I just want to wish you great success uh, over your next six weeks here doing this TV gig. But I just want you to know that when uh, Larry McCrindles comes up and says, uh, tell Kyle, <laughs> the boys in the garage, we'll send you a few messages. <laughs> That's good. That's all I need is messages from the garage here. That's it. Yep. Larry says, I don't know why I went in the garage this morning. <laughs> oh, he did. He said that He said that Monday. After our rain out show Sunday, a couple oh, yeah. folks got a little carried away on their predictions for next year. Oh, yeah. And, uh, and their analysis of what had happened this season. Yeah. And uh, nothing wrong with Larry's nothing language wrong with that. was it appropriate. Was, it was a rain fill. And yep. We were filling up the bucket. There's nothing but lies told during rain fill. Right. We all know that. Bobby Labonte, the 2000 Nextel Cup champion. Now, Bobby came out here, when he came out here the first time, too, he fell in love with dirt. Uh, he, he 
He's one of the ones, I'm gonna go ahead and spill it. He owns his own dirt team. Those guys do a great job. Man. And that car shows it too, Kyle. That thing, I like the way he drives off in the corner. Pretty nice entry into the corner. Then he can pick the throttle up and he really is putting down the, some, putting the power down much better than some of the other cars have. Bobby Labonte is fastest. P1 for Labonte. Boy, you can see it too. I mean, you that car, it. it goes in and it just stays where he wants it. And look, kind of, it, that car looked more like Schrader's car. And you know, Schrader busted off uh, a great lap there about three or four cars ago, right in the middle of the racetrack, rolled it in, got off the brake, let the car roll free, and come off fairly straight. Bad news for the field. Bobby Labonte's second lap is faster, 17, 677. All right, jumping Jack. Christopher Yaley, known as JJ around the racetrack. Maybe he'll turn her sideways. What, what did Buddy Baker say? Half wide open and half turned over. <laughs> Whoa, Bobby got up, or uh, JJ got up close to that wall back here. Two time Silver Crown winner here. Those are those big open wheel USAC cars that kind of look like big cigars, big stogies with outboard wheels. Pretty good lap. And Yaley's first lap, 1851. Not a great lap, just pretty good. I'm going to tell you something, he can drive here. I saw him drive those things down in Darlington, what, Thursday night before we come into Darlington? My goodness, I wouldn't have went around Darlington one of them things for all the money in the world. You know, folks at home, you hear us sometimes talk about the springs are hillbillied, which means that the right front spring is much softer than the left front spring. That's the way these cars are, they're hillbilly. Got about a 350 pound spring in the right front, about a 600 pound spring in the left front. That's how they get rolled over and turned. You, you see the body, there's a couple of good camera angles here. You see the body, the body almost lifts up off the wheels or off the chassis and twists to the right. The, the tires stay in one place, and like you say, that wheel, the hillbilly spring gives it that effect. Mark Martin on the green. Mark had his future driver with him in this one today. Little Matt was down there, and he was grinning ear to ear. Yeah. You know who else? Uh, Matt Kenseth had his son Ross here. And Ross has been turning some hot laps. We'll get uh, Dick Bergeron to tell us about that after time trials. You throw Matt in that car right there. Oh, he'd, yeah. He'd get around here. Yeah, he'd get up on the wheel that way. I'm okay. And that's what's great about this sport. We talk about it all the time. Everybody brings their sons, and their sons are, are interested in doing this. Mark Martin, front row. Mark yeah. Martin's first lap is second fastest 17 891 on mark's first lap we're waiting on his second lap there's not a doubt in my mind we talk about versatile drivers if mark martin put his mind to it he could go drive an indy car and be just successful as anybody mark martin can drive anything he's amazing mark martin's second lap slower he is second quickest and in the 71, Cruz Pedregon. 23 NHRA funny car wins. That's a quarter mile at a time in a straight line. So this is something different. This is battle of the straight liners here between he and Caps. And that Caps, you heard Caps talk earlier. You know, he he wants that bragging rights when he goes back, uh, when he heads up to Chicago this week. The Cruiser. He just kind of, oh, oh boy. That's over the cushion. He jumped. That's called jumping the cushion. Jumping there. the cushion. Yeah. First lap, pretty good, 18.672. Not a bad job. Uh, not a bad job at all. And But you know what? Not flashy. Just kind of took it around there and didn't get it all sideways. Yeah. Jumped the cushion over a little bit, but not a bad run, really. Now, Cruz is involved in oval track racing. He owns a USAC midget team. Think they ever let him drive it? Yeah, on occasion. That'd be cool. Dave Blaney, World of Outlaws Sprint Car Champion in 1995. Look out. Owns his own dirt track. Had a lot of success in the his whole family. World of Outlaws and nearly won this race last year. His father and his brother and his whole family and all his kids, all, all Dave's kids run those Bandoleros and Legends cars and all that stuff and they're just a great, great family and a great racing family. 18-9-67, not that sporty. And he 
know it was dirt, though. Okay, so let's uh, maybe some of these other guys are set up to qualify, and they've set up to, to race, man. Just still a little bit. Um, old guy, old dirt track guys like him, been around a long time. Know the dirt, know the system. They know the dirt. Think you, that. Think about inversion. We used to go. We used to go to the dirt tracks long many years ago, and the, the old old guys that go out in the dirt track and take a knife and cut a core out and see where the calcium was and see how it was, <laughs> when it was going to come in. Yeah. All right. Now, right now, to answer your question, if there's going to be three heats. The invert drivers would be Ryan Newman, Cruz Pedregon, and Denny Hamlin. Because mm. right now they're 10, 11, 12. Carl? I'd hedge my bet with this little guy right here. With Carl Edwards? Oh, yeah. Carl Edwards is a good dirt track racer. Yeah, and he just ran a groove through one and two. Nobody else has run. He went in high and cut straight back across the racetrack and came off low. And, and I like the way he just kind of, he's not throwing it in the corner. Kind of driving it in there and really getting up off the corner nice and straight. Well, was he driving slow to go fast? 18 247, fifth quickest. Pretty good lap. Might have a little something for him here, boys. Now that bumps Denny Hamlin out of the top 12. He will not be on pole in his heat. Looked quicker. So right now, the drivers who would invert to the front row of their heat. Clint Boyer, Ryan Newman, and Cruz Pedregon. Oh boy. The rookie. You know what? As much money as he's made this year, he ought to have the best car here. That's why Tony invited him back. He came out here the first year and he got a little bit of a bump up. It cost Tony a little bit of money, but Tony said, since he had won Daytona, since he had won the next Hell Cup All-Star race, that he could afford it for the whole field. Whatever anybody tore up, it's on Harvick's bill this time. Yeah, because he's won almost $4 million already and, this and year. And those two races, and almost. those two races are a million each. Then he's won about a million something in purse. As we should point out, this is an, I mean, two something. This is an invitational. You just can't show up. You have to be invited. That's why I'm in the booth this year. Yeah. I didn't get invited back. <laughs> 19 404 for Harvick. I've been, uh, I've been kind of pouting about not getting to come and not you know, I think my wife won't let me drive. These cars go too fast. And so I told Tony that, and he said, we got something you can drive. That's how I ended up in the water truck. <laughs> <laughs> what was Harvick's second lap there? Uh, 19,278. It's faster. He's still last. Yeah, that's not good. Harv, crank on it. Is that Smitty in that golf cart? <laughs> it looks like he's done it. Could be. Mike Wallace, who is not the most recent winner in the Wallace family, that would be Mike's daughter, Mike's daughter Chrissy, who's here uh, tonight, who won a late model race at Hickory, North Carolina. First time that had ever happened in 58 years. And there she is. And I can hear her now. Now, Dad, let me tell you what you're doing wrong. You're just not getting back on the gas quick enough, Dad. It's not rolling through the middle, and you're wasting a lot of time. My daughter from Lee doesn't even drive, and she tells me that. <laughs> Uh oh, oh, this that is ugly right here. Yeah, that one took look, off up the racetrack on him. I think. Look out, little man on the hood. Because <laughs> you were in it for the fence. 19166, first lap for Wallace. He was getting ready to knock the, the gecko off the front of that. Yeah, thing. yeah. The little gecko guy threw his hands over his eyes right there for a minute. We got to. You know, uh, Tony Stewart sponsors. Look at look! She's getting a cell phone call. Oh, yeah, yeah. Chrissy, you're on TV. No, she's getting a cell phone call saying, "Mom, will you talk to Dad? Tell him let me drive his thing." <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> that could be. That but Tony uh, sponsors her car. Yeah. But that just shows you how how involved Tony is through all parts of racing, owning a track, sponsoring cars, helping people uh, get uh, helping people realize their dreams, just like he realized it. All right, here it is—the most anticipated moment on dirt this year. Juan Pablo Montoya in the Haviland 42. Another dirt track virgin, Montoya, his first competitive lap on dirt ever. Let me tell you, though, he is competitive. As he, he said that in our, his interview, he may not get it going too good here for a little, but you give him a little bit of time in this piece. John, how, how many people do you know, um, no matter what they do, can rise to the top, whether it's an IRL or, or CART or Formula One, go in the cup and then be willing to step back and say, I've never done this, but by God, I want to do it. And I'm going to tell you something, that's an incredible first time lap. Look, Look, at, him uh, for a guy Look like at him in there working, though. I mean, 1909. This, this is hard work getting a car around this racetrack. But I'm going to tell you something. One thing Montoya has always had 
when, when you hear the commentators from every form of racing, it's car control. They used to praise him in Formula One, how he could come out on cold tires and bust off a lap. And that's what this is all about, busting off that lap. Well, you know how AJ became, uh, there's his wife, Connie, taking, uh, she's the photographer, family photographer can tonight. You, can I, you, I, I can you imagine? She may be looking for divine intervention. He just spun her out there getting it in a bit. We've seen that a couple of times. And Montoya's scrapbook. Can you imagine Eldora right behind Monaco? <laughs> Driving the Jakes 36, the shy one, Kenny Wallace. You think he's laughing in there right now? Oh, this is serious. No, not right no. now. If it's he was laughing, we'd hear it <laughs> up here. He's a race car driver right now. And this he, Kenny, this Kenny Wallace, the race car driver right here. And he came into his own on dirt a couple years ago over here, and he has been running a lot of dirt. Um, and he looks forward to this race. He looks forward to coming here and showing these guys how he can do it. 18-8-45, that is 15. And it's still Boyer, Newman, and Pedregon who will benefit most from these time trials. They're 10th, 11th, and 12th. Well, he owns this car, and he spends a lot of time playing with it. And I'm going to tell you, he was almost smoking the right rear up off of four there. Like he was some of these guys, of Kyle, are just having a terrible time getting power down. Yeah, he, you know, and, and he slowed down a lot on the second lap. But coming out of turn four here, it was almost a little bit of blue tire smoke coming up at him. There's uh, Juan's little boy right there and his wife. His wife's going on saying, and tell me why we're here one more time. Yeah, tell me why we're <laughs> on this dirt right now. <laughs> tell me why we come up here one more time. And there was Bobby and, and, and uh, Tyler walking across the screen at the same time. It, it's just good to see all these guys bring their kids out here. Eric Almarola out of Tampa, Florida. Joe Gibbs, racing development driver. Has Eric ever run a lot of dirt? Uh, he raced on dirt in go-karts as a kid. He ran in last year's Prelude and has one other race in a dirt late model. I like the way this car gets around the bottom, though. I like cars that are rolling the bottom the way some of them are. They get in. See, he's not sliding it in. He's driving it in, and then he gets on the gas, and he gets a nice shoot up, a shot up off the corner. And yeah, these guys, these cars, you know, there's five or six of them that we've watched qualify that have really positive front ends. When they point them to the inside, they go to the inside. Yeah, it's that setup on the springs. Kyle, they just roll over on that right front. That sucker's going to turn. 1851 on the first lap for Eric. That is 19th quickest. Second lap is slower. We're about to run out of cars. One, one to go. There's uh, Denny Hamlin chatting up Miss Eldora Speedway. And this is her last night. There will be a new one crowned this weekend. So uh, what better way to go out than with all the cup drivers here to have your last photo? Hey, what do you, what do you think he's saying? Have you ever been to Pocono? No, he just told her, say, hey, watch this. <laughs> my boss is going out or my, my teammate's going out. Maybe he said, I'm Denny Hamlin. Have you ever seen me on TV? Well, here's the owner and promoter, Tony Stewart. The fellow who owns Eldora and who put this event together. And yes, this is his own car. Oh, yes, and it's going to be fast. And it's only fitting that we start with Bill Elliott running the Tata High Line and end with Tony Stewart running the High Line. I mean, that's right up there. where you, That's position A. That is up against the rim and on the gas. 1807. Third fastest. Come on, Excuse me, smoke. fourth fastest. Come fourth on. fastest for smoke. This He's back looks, in the gas right there. This though, looks buddy. pretty good here. He's pretty steamy through three and four that time. What'd he do? 18004. Still fourth fastest. And they're gonna invert four, four. That's in what I each heat. <laughs> now that's what this place looks like empty right here. They're yeah, that's Tony. Rain. Kids painting numbers on seats, Tony helping them. Supervising operations. And then he spent seven hours yesterday, seven hours, packing the track. I think he wore out any uh, Nextel phones while he was talking, while he was riding around out there. I bet he wore out two or three Nextel phones out there. But how many races, Tony, uh, uh, Kyle, did you come home from and frustrated and not had a very good day and you wished you had something he, like that to that's, do? That's uh, exactly right. And I'm sure he wished he had it, but I mean, he, want, he wants this place to be perfect. Let's check with Dick Bergeron downstairs. Well, I rode around with Tony for a while this afternoon, Mike, and I can assure you he was nowhere near his telephone, but he did have a huge grin on his face. He was so focused on getting the racetrack conditions absolutely perfect for tonight's event. Uh, he has indeed controlled everything that has happened here to prepare this surface. It is his focus, and by gosh, so far it looks awful good. I tell you what, he's sitting on the scales down there right now. You know what was interesting? I was, I was kind of hanging out down there during the driver's meeting. Um, they actually have rules for this thing tonight. There are a uh, few. And that yep. just blew me away. I think in the past we just came out here and raced. 
Uh, so, I mean, to, to go through all the stuff they've done has been, uh, they're, they're taking this dead serious. We've got a very special event going to happen down on the track. Daryl Waltrip will be part of that. He gets to uh, strap his helmet on one more time. He will not be driving the water truck. Uh, he'll be driving something really special. That's coming up in just a little bit. You're not ready for the drop of the green flag until you've seen NASCAR Race Day built by the Home Depot. Tune in as the Race Day crew gets you strapped in and fired up for NASCAR's biggest events. NASCAR Race Day built by the Home Depot every week live and only on speed. Kyle, I'll tell you, they had a crowd out there outside the speed stage at Dover you just wouldn't believe in the rain on Sunday. And there was one fellow standing right next to the fence and his back hair had been shaved with a big number 20 and it was very visible and legible from the stage at quite a distance. Maybe he can get on on Harvick and uh, and Tony's, you know, haircut and waxing thing, trying to raise all the money for the for the Victory Junction Game Camp. But I, I tell you what, the fans in Dover are phenomenal fans. Anyhow, we did a track walk for the NASCAR Foundation for a number of charities uh, on Saturday afternoon after the Bush race, and there were seemed like thousands of people out at the speed stage. So. Uh, that's been that, that was pretty interesting. I don't know what went on out there Sunday, man. I was trying to stay in out of the rain up there Sunday. We got a special treat for folks uh, watching on HBO pay per view. A little history on the famed Eldora Speedway. Chick Hale has been racing here since 1954. He's going to tell you about the racetrack. Nineteen fifty four. I was at Eldor, the first race that they ran here at Eldor Speedway, and I, last year was the first year that I had not got to run. The track was flatter, smaller, and of course you didn't go as fast. It uh, don't forgive you too much. You've got to be smarter than the racetrack sometimes, and you've got to know how it is, what's changing, because the grooves in this track do change as you race, and you've got to be able to be able to move with them. We used to have an old raggedy fence around it and everything. You had to be real careful. Now you got a cement wall that don't move. I guarantee you, you can't move it. I've tried it. Always did think you needed a wheel on the right rear out there against the wall, but I never seen anybody do it. I had fast time at the first World 100. I had the car to beat, but things didn't go exactly. We was lapping a, a race car, and he broke a axle, and the wheel come off. And Larry Moore ran up over the wheel, and the first thing I know, I seen him flying upside of me, and I thought, oh, that's going to hurt when he comes down. And it did. He come down, he bounced over, he hit me, and bounced me into the inside wall kind of messed me. I ended up 10th in that race. Should have won, but I did. But I won a lot of championships here at Eldor Speedway. Some of the best race car drivers around ran at Eldor Speedway. A.J. Foyt, all of them guys run here. Jeff Gordon ran here. I run with him. The cars that it draws is the best cars around. And the people that come watching, Lord, they come from New York. They come from Canada. They come from everywhere. And in fact, in my mind, it's one of the best racetracks around. Oh, he'd work all night long on that grader to get that track ready to go and race. He lived and breathed it just like the rest of us. A lot of times the guys would say, well, you come with us and go talk to Earl. Maybe we can change the way he's doing things. I said, no, not me. I said, uh, Earl owns this racetrack. Earl tells you what to do. If you don't like it, he'll tell you you can go leave. And if you want to come back and run, come back and run. But you run according to his rules. Any man that owned a track like he did here and run it the way he did, he knew what he was doing. Tony has fixed things up and made it a lot better for the fans. He's treated us all good. And I think in the end, he's going to receive it back the same way. I think he's right. Take a look at this list, this honor roll of famed drivers that have competed here at Eldora, beginning with Mario Andretti. Chick mentioned A.J. Foyt. 
That's truly amazing. But I, and that was a great piece right there. But yeah, I, I think he's pretty best said it all. You know, Earl lived, breathed, sleep, eat this racetrack. Tony Stewart does the same thing. He may be off in Pocono this weekend. He may be off in Dover. He may be somewhere else. Uh, but Tony's heart is still in this type of racing right now uh, and then the local short tracks. Well, Tony has a great sense of racing history. He also has a great sense of humor. Dick Bergeron is with an example of both. I'm on the backstretch where there is an interesting tunnel. Now, there's no tunnel here at Eldora for fans, but there is a tunnel here for the competitors so that they can go underneath the racetrack, get out of or into uh, the pit area whenever they want to. When Earl Baltus built, first built this thing, people just kept coming to him and saying, I love the tunnel, I love the tunnel. So Earl named it the Love Tunnel. And when Texas Motor Speedway first opened, on one of the very first days they ran, Tony Stewart nearly didn't make it to the driver's meeting, stuck in traffic. So promoter Eddie Gossage, having heard Tony's complaints about access and egress, built a special ramp and called it the Tony Stewart ramp. It only seemed fair when Tony Stewart got this racetrack that he renamed the tunnel the Eddie Gossage Tunnel. That's a great piece right there. It is. That's He's got good. a great sense of humor. Ingress and egress. You know the old P.T. Barnum joke about he had a, you know, his big show and there'd be big signs and arrows this way to the egress. Everybody wanted to go see the egress, and when they went through the door, they found out that was the exit. Oh. See, that's why it's just should be enter here, exit there, or yep. in and out. You know, that's why I don't That'd get that. That'd be too that. easy. Yeah, that's why I don't get that gulls and boys when I go to seafood restaurants uh, either. I don't understand that stuff. <laughs> gulls and buoys. Gulls and buoys. Gulls and buoys, baby. Mm -hmm. Quite a lineup here as they go over the rules for the heats and the features. There will be, of course, a B main and an A main. Yeah, and, and right now we've seen them. They put some more water down on the racetrack. They're out there running the racetrack back in while these guys are having their, their thing. And, it, and it's just like Chick just said. This racetrack constantly changed. You know, he said he's run here since 1954, and the groove constantly moves around. And it's like we saw during qualifying. There were guys at the wall. There were guys on the bottom. There were guys in the middle and all busted off good laps. When you look at the top three or four cars that qualified, they all ran in different places on the racetrack. And that's why I say that the guys that are running dirt and understand how to run dirt are going to be able to move around and move around really good. Let's, let's see what they have to say down here. Well, Mike, we're down here at the start-finish line in probably one of the biggest conversations right now is a big bench racing session of who qualified where and being impressed with each other's laps. And the guy who was on the pole was Bobby Labonte. Great lap by you and your guys there. It was the guys. It wasn't me. I don't know. <laughs> I'm still not sure exactly how that happened, but uh, I'm sure I'll fix it here in a little bit. But uh, no, I mean, it was, um, you know, we just did uh, Earl and those guys and Jason and Matt, they just did uh, did the right thing on our lifelong locks uh, Mopar. And, uh, you know, hopefully we can, uh, See what we got for the heat race. You know, one neat thing that we're seeing down here is a lot of fathers and sons. Yeah. I see a little Chase yeah. Elliott. I've seen your son. Yeah. It's a very special night, father-son night for you and a lot of guys. It really is. And uh, Tyler's over there hanging out with uh, Dave Alpern with Joe Gibbs Racing on the licensing thing. So hopefully we can get us a good deal on some <laughs> licensing product coming out here, learning the whole pro program. So, uh, so, yeah, it is it's pretty cool. And Matt's got his son here. So it's a lot of fun. Well, Mike Jover getting ready for driver intros coming up shortly, and DW's down here. He's getting ready to make a historic run himself, like you mentioned, here at Eldora. I wonder, is, is he debriefing Juan Pablo, or is Juan Pablo debriefing Daryl? That, that is an I'm excellent question. I'm not really question. sure. I, I, yeah, I, have, have we ever heard, has anybody in this area ever heard, um, has anybody in this area ever heard anybody speak like Juan speaks? Has that accent ever been run here before? In Ohio? In Ohio. Or El Eldora. How about Bill Elliott? accent now that's true that's true this could be like the the night of accents or Kenny Wallace's laugh all right let's have a look at the Old Spice starting lineups for the qualifying heats remember the top four are inverted in each heat so there's qualifying heat number one Bill Elliott and Juan Pablo back in the fourth row ahead of uh, Kevin Harvick Boyer on gets the pole he was the 10th fastest, I believe, in time trials. 
Eric okay. Amarillo on the pole of uh, heat number two here. Kyle Busch on the outside, and then you've got Carl and Mark and Cruz. Mike Wallace, Kenny Wallace starting nose to tail. Everham starting shotgun on this field, but you got Blaney back there in row four. And the final heat, four rows deep. Boy, what a talent pool that is. That will be a race right there. Oh, yeah. I think it's going to build to the crescendo. The, the, the third heat race will be the race. Montoya pulls out. Stewart. Daryl's debriefing Bill now. It was all in Elliot Sadler's arms. <laughs> that was it. Now, we'll have three 10-lap heats. The top five finishers go straight to the, the feature event. is called the A-Main in dirt oval racing. See, I never understood that. That's why I, I just grew up where you just run. You know, even the 125s, now the 150s at Daytona always confused me, and they were the closest thing we had to heat races. And this year, they were the most confusing of all. Most confusing. Oh, my gosh. We don't have enough time tonight to tell you how to qualify for the Daytona 500 anymore. It used to be pretty simple. But the rest of the field goes to the B main, uh, what you would call a concy in pavement oval racing, and that determines the final starting spots. But let's be real clear. Everybody's going to race in the feature. This is not like other races where we have heat races and guys get eliminated. No matter where they finish, this is still a qualifying process to determine how everybody's going to be in the feature. So just because your favorite driver doesn't finish in the top three or four in the A main or whatever, he still makes the feature. Tony is either giving or getting a check. Let's see which. I'm glad to see Earl back here. For those that don't know Earl that well or do know Earl, he, uh, he had a broken hip and that little overhang, uh, the little box up there, he's up there, and it's the little old guy with the, the bill of his hat bent up straight to the sky. So that's the guy that, that's responsible for building Eldora Speedway and, uh, you know, giving us a place like this to, uh, to carry on the tradition. And uh, if it weren't for Earl or Bernice, we wouldn't be here tonight. And tonight we have a lot of great people making this event possible. Yeah, you know, I, I can't say thanks enough to Nextel. I mean, uh, thanks to Nextel, we're here for a third straight year with the Prelude to the Dream. And uh, this year with HBO and Old Spice sponsoring that portion of it, I mean, we, we've got something awesome, guys. I mean, we're, we're setting history tonight with this race here tonight, and you guys are all a part of it. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Stewart. Racer, promoter, and pitchman. And now on the stage for our official driver introductions tonight, you know him well from TV. He's got the voice, and he knows the dirt on every one of these guys. Ladies and gentlemen, Matt Yoakum. Well, thank you. Now let's get ready for our lineup for tonight's heat races so that we can work our way to the big 30 lap A main event. And there's already been a lot of talking back and forth with the different drivers talking about each other's laps. And I know that uh, Kyle Busch was impressed with Clint Boyer's laps out there. He told me that as well. But let's start out heat number one. And starting on the pole will be the 07 Jack Daniels late model, Clint Boyer. By the way, great lap. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was just about right, it looked to me like. Yeah, you've got to work that inversion perfectly. <laughs> well, uh, I tell you, we wouldn't want to uh, just have a little bit of a tire game out there. Just like real racing, uh, you know, the slow cars were on 20s and the fast cars were on 40s and uh, put the harder tire on, so I think we'll be a lot better in a heat race. All right, Clint Boyer will start on the pole, starting on the outside front row from drag racing, Ron Caps. <laughs> starting on the inside of row number two. How you doing, Capsy, by the way? Glad to see you back here on the dirt. It's good to be back. I appreciate Tony. Uh, any NHRA fans out there? Uh, that's good to hear. Gary Selzy just called me, and he's in a he's in a bar in Brownsburg, and they got the place packed watching a pay per view. So uh, we got a lot of NHRA fans cheering us on. But I appreciate Tony inviting us, and the Cruz is here this year. Um, great cause, of course, but just to be invited with these guys, a great bunch of drivers, and uh, just having a blast. Good luck tonight. Thanks. All right, that's going to be your front row. Let's go to row two now. Starting on the inside, the number 99, Ken Trader. On the outside of row number two. Driving to DuPont Chevrolet, 24. Making his return to the dirt since 1991, Jeff Gordon. Row three. Former USAC national champion, driving the number 39, Ryan Newman. On the outside, 
But see, you were a little slow there, so we just moved ahead to your right. But hey, great line. Thank you. Starting alongside, driving a Dodge, number 19, Elliot Sadler. <laughs> Row four. Former Daytona 500 winner, number nine E, Bill Elliott. Making his debut tonight on dirt. From Colombia, driving the number 42, Juan Pablo Montoya. <laughs> Moving on to heat number two, starting on the pole. From Florida, NASCAR Bush Series driver number 80, Eric Almirola. And by the way, he was so slow in qualifying, we forgot somebody who was actually in the very first heat. Number 29, Kevin Harvick. On the outside of heat number two, Rowdy Bush, Kyle Bush driving the number 51. Moving on to row two, driving the number 99E, Carl Edwards. On the outside, row two, driving the 01, Mark Martin. From NHRA, driving the number 71, Cruz Pedragon. Number 36, a former winner of the Nextel Prelude to the Dream, number 36, Kenny Wallace. Inside row four, somebody who almost had the race won last year, number 22, Dave Blaney. On the outside, row four, heat number two, number seven, Mike Wallace. Former Daytona 500 winning crew chief, former championship winning crew chief on three separate occasions, driving the number 10, Ray Evernham, rounding out heat number two. <laughs> Moving on to heat three, starting on the pole, number 18, former USAC national champion, J.J. Yaley. On the outside, another USAC national champion, number nine, K, Casey Kane. On the inside, row two, number 20. He loved this place so much that he bought it. Tony Stewart. On the outside, the fastest man tonight, number 43, Bobby Labani. Inside, row number three, number 11, driving the FedEx Chevy, Denny Hamlin. On the outside, a legend driving F97 all the way from Alabama, Red Farmer. On the inside, double zero, David Rudiman. And on the outside, making up the final spot in heat number three, former NASCAR Nextel Cup Series champion, number 17, Matt Kenzie. And the drivers are making their way to the pickup trucks to take their parade lap around this famed historic half mile. And Mike Joy, our legend, Darrell Walter, is getting ready to lead the field. Thanks, Matt. Everybody climbs aboard one of the Chevy Avalanche or Silverado pickups that's been provided for the parade lap. And uh, trying to get Daryl going here in a car that was raced in Arca on dirt, a 1968 Ford Torino Cobra that was raced by 
former ARCA champ, NBC commentator, Daytona 500 winner, and Winston Cup champ, Benny Parsons, who won the ARCA race here on Eldora's Dirt, August of 1968. Well, the decals were a little different, Kyle. But the desire was the same. It didn't make any difference what the cars look like. These guys love to race, and, and those are great pictures of Benny with LG DeWitt, uh, with Red Farmer. Uh, with John know, Markham, with John Markham, the head the of founder, ARCA. The founder of ARCA, uh, and what a cool tribute to bring that car out here uh, and think that Benny Parsons had won a race here and won an ARCA race here in 1968. That's, an, that's a really cool deal tonight. That's a nice touch by Tony and by everybody here. And in those days, you know, most all the ARCA drivers didn't have but one race car. Dirt, asphalt, big track, short track. Didn't make a lot of difference, That's did it? That's the way it was. ARCA was a short track series, and they, they picked up dirt racing, and they picked up, they came to Daytona. That was their big race. Uh, you know, that's where I started. I ran my first race in an ARCA race. So it was, it was pretty cool to see those guys bring the cars and run them everywhere. Now, that's a stock car that looks like a stock car. It's got a roll cage, and it's even got door handles. And, and that's what's cool about those cars. You know, when you go back and you look at them, and you remember the 17s of David Pearson and the, the home and the Moody Fords and uh, the Roadrunners and the Superbirds, they were stock cars with stock handles, and that Torino was just a pretty car from the time it came off the drawing board. Now, this car was the Torino Talladega. So it had, and a, had the, a little bit of that sloped nose on it. That, right, that little sloopy nose up in front of the hood, and, and the big spotting feature is the grill is flush with the nose. It's not a recessed grill like most of those Torinos had. Yeah, I and mean, we hear the fans scream as, as Daryl rides around, and that's a tribute to Benny, I think. You know, all the, all the drivers are behind him and, uh, and kind of following Benny's car around the racetrack one more time here, but that's a, that's a huge tribute as he comes down the front stretch here. It was August 11th, 1968. Benny Parsons drove a Ford Torino to the checkered flag, beating Iggy Katona, Paul Wensink, and Andy Hampton here at Eldora. And here are the cup guys here tonight, and this, this is always cool, and I, I think this is one of the, the neatest things that the Next Hill Cup Series and NASCAR has done in recent years is put the drivers in the back of cars and ride them around the racetrack to wave at the fans because if not for the who's, fans in the stands, we wouldn't be here. Who's the fellow in the hat? That's my man, Ron White, uh, Blue Collar Comedy Tour. He came down from, uh, you've probably seen him on some HBO specials on, uh, on some of that, and he's just a, a great guy, and he came out tonight to help support the Victory Junction Gang Camp, and uh, he's just a big race fan. He's been to Talladega. He's been to a lot of races, so I was glad to see him down in the infield earlier. You ever notice the older Red gets, Red still does all the cool stuff, like a goatee, and he's got his Powerade with him, and, you know, like all the young drivers, they got their, they got their sports drinks, they got their goatee, they got their sunglasses, Red's right there with them. The only thing he's got different than all the young guys is he's got a set of hearing aids that he uses every now and then. Listen to the fans here. This, is, this shows you how much these fans appreciate what Tony's put on here tonight and what Old Spice and HBO and, and Nextel but these guys that have come from, from Bush Racing. You know, Old Spice has been a great sponsor in the Bush Series for a number of years. Uh, Nextel obviously being, being our primary sponsor on, the, on our series now, and uh, HBO, this being their first venture into to pay-per-view and a pay-per-view sports event, especially a motorsports event. What better place to do it than in a place like this where the people here really appreciate <laughs> what they've done and what Tony's done. Having a blast on dirt, that says it all right there. HBO, having a blast on dirt. So time trials are completed, still to come, qualifying heats, which will transfer some drivers directly to the A main, the feature, and the rest to the B main. And that will set the field for the prelude to the dream. 30 laps around Eldora in late models. They say 24 degrees of banking, Kyle, from here atop the start finish line, hardly looks like 24 degrees. You know, it does hardly look like 24 degrees, but we talk a lot about, uh, about the, the, the Miami Homesteads tracks and, and some of the tracks where they've gone to 
progressive banking. Okay, dirt tracks are basically progressive banking. It's not a constant all the way to the top. It starts flat and it bowls up okay. to the top. So when you see that 24, 27 degrees of banking, it's at the very top. Down here on the bottom, it's just like Wilkesboro used to be. It's as flat as a pancake. Daryl's getting a little feisty. They took Daryl out of the water truck and he's getting a little feisty. Getting a little racy there. Bergie. Well, Mike, before tonight's race, I spent a lot of time in the garage area talking to team owners, and I asked them about crash clause. Well, there isn't much of a crash clause. So I asked them, why bring an expensive race car? And these things are worth twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a piece. And, and I asked these guys, why bring a car out like this and just risk it when there's really no crash clause? And they said, because we just wanted to participate in Prelude to the Dream. There are five backup cars here in case anybody needs one. Anybody loses a car in their heat, they've got a backup car right out here, ready to go. This is one of them. And, but I, I think that says a lot about the respect that these owners that race here have for Tony and for these drivers that have come out. They're, they're turning their babies loose, uh, you know, with a Matt Kenseth and with some of these guys to go out there and run them. So uh, that shows, uh, I, I think, the, the respect that Tony has in, in the motorsports community, but especially here at Eldora. Time for uh, opening ceremonies here at Eldora. Let's go trackside. Let us pray. Please rise and let us pray. Almighty and sovereign God, we thank you for this beautiful weather which allows us as a great racing family together at Eldora's prelude for the dream night. For Tony Stewart, his organization and staff and the vision to invite us as friends to join with many of the racing legends for a fantastic night of competitive dirt track racing. We praise you, Lord, for the owners, drivers, teams, sponsors, and the Eldora staff. A safe night home. We thank you for the freedom that we experience this evening because of troops that, are, that have fought in the past and are fighting now. We thank you again. We thank you again, Father, for the protection that we receive and the freedom that we have. And now, Lord, as we go racing, we hear the roar of the engines. Our hearts are pounding with excitement to see a safe night of competitive racing. We ask all this in the precious name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, curb recording artist Bombshell. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early? What so proudly we hailed as the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight, all oh, the ramparts we walked. We're so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, came through through the night, that our flag was still there. Who saved us that star-spangled banner yet waves for the land of the free? And the 
Ladies and gentlemen, from Curb Records, that's Bombshell. Bombshell. Power of One is uh, Bombshell's latest single. And we are set to line up the qualifying heats. Daryl will rejoin us in just a moment. Let's have a Coca-Cola recap of qualifying tonight. Bobby Labonte fastest, Mark Martin second. Fred Farmer was 18th. Juan Montoya 22nd. Three qualifying heats to set the field coming up. I always like that. You've got 25 or 26 of the greatest drivers in the world, and it says other notables. Uh, <laughs> Red Farmer and Juan Montoya, you pick two out of that group. It's, it's just tough to pick two out of that group because they're all notables and all just great guys. Here is uh, Dick Bergeron. With Danny Hamlin enjoying a burger here this evening. Well, sun is gone, my friend, and it's gotten dark. With as little experience as some of you guys have with dirt track racing, how do you figure out what you've got to do in terms of finding the line? Uh, well, luckily, I've got the fastest qualifier, Bobby Labonte, in our race, so um, I hopefully can follow him um, if I can see him uh, by lap two. In the driver's meeting, you asked, is anybody ready to give driver's lessons? Yeah, I mean, I'll take any advice anyone's willing to give me. I'll take any advice except from Kevin Harvick. I will not listen to anything that guy has to say. <laughs> but you're fast here. We're pleased to see you. Thanks. <laughs> I wonder if Denny's trainer know he's, knows he's eating like that out here. Well, this is a night off. Okay, it's night off. You can have a burger. That's good. There's your Old Spice starting grid. Heat number one coming out on the racetrack. Clint Boyer, Ron Caps, the front row. Kenny Schrader, row two with Jeff Gordon. Ryan Newman in the third row. And, yes, he does own his own car. Elliot Sadler, Bill Elliott. That is Bill's late. No, it's not Bill's late model, according to our sheet. Oh, I thought it was. I, I, he said Ernie built the engine. It's got to be. Yeah, that's, his, that's Bill's car. That's got to be Bill's car. Okay. Or either Bill just showed up with an engine <laughs> and put it in a car. Maybe that's what he did. Because he said Ernie built the engine. Right. So, so I'm that, assuming it's his car. Yeah, that's definitely uh, yeah. Bill's. He's at least a part owner yeah. of uh, that race car. Well, Daryl, uh, for Torino Cobra, you yeah. whistle around there a little bit. Well, you know what? Uh, I didn't realize this when I drove it. That's Benny's car, Benny's yeah. Arca car. And Benny won here in that car in 1968. Yep. That's incredible. That's and, a and piece we, of history. I'm telling you. And it, 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 this racetrack in that car, and I don't know about these other cars, but, man, it, Kyle, they get these, these uh, little grooves in the thing. It, it, it was amazing how the car was hopping around just no faster than I was going. It's, it's like the, there's tracks in the track. I, I tell you what was amazing to us. While you were out there riding around, they showed some old black and white photos of Benny and LG and... Uh, John Markham from, from ARC and stuff from when he was here in 68 and stuff. But the crowd reaction from up here, you could hear the crowd reaction when you went around and they knew that was Benny's car. That was, that was just a, that was a cool, that's one of the coolest things I've seen at any racetrack lately. Well, you know, even back then, Benny Parsons was a champion and a fan favorite everywhere he raced. Everywhere he raced. People just love Benny. Benny's one of those guys, you know, when, when they started calling him Buffet Benny just because he would eat and that yeah. stuff. Benny was the kind of guy that you would have over to, to, to you know, Sunday dinner, every Sunday. If you could get him to your house every Sunday because he was just that good a guy, and that came across. He was a genuine guy, and it came across to the fans, and, you know, he, he's always been Mr. Nice Cat. Like I said, I'm, I don't think I ever remember in all my career anybody being mad at Benny Parsons. At Benny Parsons, no. something that happened on the track or anywhere no. else before that goes. I, I agree with you. Speaking of John Markham and ARCA, uh, I was running an ARCA race at uh, Nashville. And I was on the pole by a good bit, and Markham came down, old fellow. You know, he gave yeah. everybody a silver dollar all the time. Gave me a silver dollar, and I said, what do you want me to do with this? He said, uh, you like fish? 
I said, no, sir, I don't. He said, you mean to fish? Yeah. 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 You, you'd like to go out fishing? I said, no, sir, I don't fish. I just race. He said, you go out here and stink up my show. We're going to come in. You're going to sit here for a while. We're going to talk about fishing. I could not <laughs> believe you said that. When I run that first darker race at Daytona, he said, now here's the way it works. If you get too far ahead, there's just a caution. <laughs> I'm just going to go ahead and tell you that. So don't nobody get, no, nobody stink up my shows to get too right. far ahead. That's where I heard that first time stink up the show. Jeff Gordon getting ready to go, and he has quite an impressive resume on dirt, even though it is not in his recent past. How about that young fella? He won a USAC midget race at Eldora in 1991, when he was also USAC Silver Crown champion, and 1990 USAC national midget champion. Quite a progression from those little open wheelers. His first big sponsorship meeting, his mom had to drive him there. He was 14 and convinced Valvoline to sponsor his sprint car. And well, the rest, as they say, is history. Well, I give him a lot of credit. Uh, since 1992, we have created a, he has created a whole new audience for our sport. The youth movement started with him. Qualifying heat number one rolls onto the racetrack. This is exciting. I, it's, it's like Tony said in, that, in, in his interview a minute ago. This is history. These people are, are, you're witnessing history tonight. When you see this many cup drivers and this much talent at a place like this, you know, I know the dirt series from sprint cars to, to dirt modifieds to whatever has some of the greatest drivers in the world that drive on dirt. But to, to take these guys that run at Daytona and run at Charlotte and run all over everywhere. Communication problem big. right here. Little communication problem. Where's Donnie Wingo when I need him? He just learned, he just learned the Wingo lingo. Now he's got to learn a whole new lingo here for this guy. That's you know what? And I, I, looking at, at Montoya in the car here, you know what I was thinking about a minute ago? What about tear-offs? Has he ever driven anything that he's had to pull tear-offs? Well, I, I mean, that's something new. I, that, that, I don't know. In Did Formula they pull a one? lot in Formula One? Maybe, Maybe in Formula I, I, One. I just never paid yeah. that much attention yeah, to him. You know I what think, I'm saying? I think they may have. Yeah. I, I'm not totally sure about that either. You think they were cut as far to the right when he had to reach up? <laughs> I, don't think so. <laughs> I don't think he was worried about dirt hitting him in the face. Oh, here he goes. They got him going now. They got. They, he had to push car. He couldn't get going. Boyer on pole, caps alongside, Schrader in row two with Jeff Gordon. And if you folks just get ready, buckle up your seat belts, hang, maybe, maybe even tie down the TV, because if you think these guys are here to play, you are wrong. They came here to race. This is like anything that race drivers ever do, Colin, you know this. What starts off as fun, it's all fun until somebody gets to pushing somebody around. It's all fun going to the hotel until they drop the green flag. <laughs> right. Green flag. Clint Boyer jumps right out there. Schrader gets second from Caps. Gordon on the outside. Jeff Gordon the for third. Side. Gets it. I'd say you're looking at probably the three of the best dirt racers here tonight. Gordon in the 24 and uh, certainly Carl Edwards in the 99. Oh, the Spinner nine. Around. Bill Elliott. The nine goes around. Ryan Newman had been battling Gordon for third, and Gordon slaps the wall in turn two. I think he uh, may Ron, have Ron Cap, slow down. Caution's out. Yeah. I don't well, do they have radios? I'm not even sure if they have radios. They don't have mirrors. They do have communication with the tower, and they went through some of that stuff over in the, in the driver's meeting that they would come over the radios and let them know when there was a caution, which is a great thing in an event like this. So you don't depend on spotters and other people that necessarily call the caution. They're calling it from... from uh, from up in the tower. And I tell you what was pretty cool about that. Jeff run into turn three and got in way too hard behind Schrader. And you see the back of his car right there where he had to correct and get up. I think the same thing happened with Ellie. He got in, they stopped in front of him, he hit the brakes and spun around. Bill told me the track tonight was a lot different than it was last year. Last year the track was very tacky and it had a lot of grip. He said tonight it's more slick and harder to get a hold of. And they had had so much rain here last year. You see, this is after the almost after the caution comes out. Gordon is just let off right here, jumps the jumps the cushion like yeah. we talked about earlier and just barely slaps the wall with the right rear. The cushion, folks, is a berm. It's the dirt piled up against the outside wall there. And we're back to racing, and Clint Boyer wastes no time in putting the 07 Jack Daniels car out front. Boyer, Schrader, Gordon, Newman, Kevin Harvick grabbed a couple of spots on the restart. Newman's car looked good through one and two right down on the bottom. He's got the measure of Gordon on the bottom. A couple of ex-USAC stars. And Newman moves up for third. Well, he's got that Newman in the 29 car, the blue and white car, folks. 39 car, I'm sorry. That thing looks good around the bottom of this racetrack. Really makes good time through the corner. Right through the center, right here. The transfer. And now look, look who's joining the party. 
Jeff Gordon says, oh, I like that line, Ryan. That's where Jeff ran all in practice. He just went to the high side when they started the race because that was the open lane. The only car running the top is Elliott. Juan Pablo and Elliott side by side. Elliott makes the pass. I'll tell you what, do you think this isn't physical? Uh, this is just a heat race. You wait till you feature tonight. Uh, Red Farmer was telling me, I know, you know, Red's a very physical man. He runs these things all the time. He said, this place is one of the most physical. It's like running at Dover. Second place battle. Newman has it in the 39. Make that third place battle. Gordon wants it. These two guys are racing like it's the last lap at, at, at a cup race. Halfway, here's the battle for the last transfer spot. Tell you what, you got to give your hat, tip your hat to Kevin Harvey. He has not been very good on these dirt tracks. And uh, he doesn't like it all that much, but he's done a pretty nice job here in uh, this heat race. He's done a great job just starting, jumping around a couple of guys. And I'm going to tell you something, Bill Elliott has come from the back, and he's passed three or four cars and is making time on these guys. He's, he's got to pass out a lap. Got to pass one more, Kyle, to stay out of the Concy. He's got his eye set on Ron Caps. I think he'll get him. Caps is fifth, last transfer spot. Caps goes to the low side, and Elliott goes to the high side and jumps up there on the cushion. Look at his run he gets coming out of the corner. Caps is drifts out in front here, Here's the battle. These two guys right here are, are after each other, man. Now, Jeff has forced Ryan up off the bottom, and now Jeff's trying to make the right, make it work around the bottom. That's third place. Fifth is still a great battle. Caps just gave Elliott the nerf down the back stretch. Only one of them's going to make the show. Well, they better side it pretty quickly here because we're coming to this time, next time out. One to go. Clint Boyer. And he is a stink. As we said earlier, Stunk Clint Boyer is stinking up this heat race. Boy, hey. Ron, <laughs> just. My God, I'm going to tell you, Bill Elliott just gave Caps a little shove going down the back stretch, and that's not bump drafting. Right there he there, comes. Jump. Bill got the position that time. Bill just let him know where he was at. That's yeah. all he was trying to do. Caps One to go. cut him off that time. Checkered flag for Boyer. He wins it in a walk. I tell you what, if Bill Elliott had a few more laps, he'd win this thing because he is coming, baby. He's up on that high ride. He's high, wide, and handsome. Coming around. Coming, coming around. to the flag. Right near. Here right here. Oh, oh, my God. Oh. No, but we didn't need that. That's not good. Bill had a run off turn four, and Ryan was on the bottom. Bill's on the top, and I just they just came together. Just and came. There's, there is a berm down this front straightaway wall here. There's Bill. You can see him hanging upside down in the car. Now, this is one of those times when you tell the safety workers, no, 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 don't cut me loose. Flip yeah. it over. They'll get it back over. they got a great safety crew here. These guys have run all kinds of cars here. Uh, they've got a great safety crew, a great organization here. That was just Ryan didn't know he was there. Bill got a great run coming out of turn four. But it, once again, that shows what we talked about. These guys are going for it, boys. They, they, they went for it right there. You don't see that. Newman finishes fourth. Elliott finishes fifth. Both qualified directly to the A main. Now, this is uh, the 28 and the 9 over here. The 28 is drifting up in front of Bill. Bill's got that high line working now, and the 28 needs a little room. And all Bill did was just let him know, hey, I'm here on you. And you know, not, because there are no mirrors in these cars. And you see Caps does a great job coming out of turn four here. Caps gives him room to the outside. And now, yeah, this is Ryan and Bill, and, and there's just that little berm right there up against the outside retaining wall that launched those two cars over. And Ryan was coming, Bill was coming with a full head of steam. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah he wasn't going to lift. No. Nope. He and was Ryan going for the spot. <laughs> and Ryan was, too. Ryan was coming with a full head of steam off the bottom of the racetrack back out to the wall. We're trying to get that car over gently because Bill is in it. Ryan looking over his car. And they'll have time to make repairs. Tony Stewart out there as well, helping uh, direct the recovery operation there. No. And we do have backup cars yeah, if needed. Say. These guys have all got backup cars, so. Uh, Let me ask you a question, Daryl. If you just did that, you want to get back in a car? <laughs> I, I don't care if I got 20 or 30 minutes yeah, to wait. That yeah. might be the wrong thing. You know what, Kyle? I'd say let's push it over there and just look at it. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly. Did you get any good pictures? Ryan's got parts to his. And a big cheer for Bill Elliott as he climbs out and up on the roof of his car. <laughs> Trying to flatten out that roof and straighten it out. You know, there's Bill and there's Tony right out there in the middle of it. That, and that shows you once again, Tony's right in the middle of the show. Yeah, well, Tony, the last thing look, Tony would want. And here's Ryan. Look at him laughing at it. Well, that's the best part. That is the best part, that these two guys get out, uh, talk about it, and laugh about it. Nobody's mad about it, and, and that's just it. You hate it for the guys who own, obviously, Elliot owns his car. You hate it for the guy that owns Ryan's car. Uh, 
I'm sure Tony hates that more than anybody else for the guy that owns Ryan's car. I believe that may be Ryan's car. Oh, okay. Matt? That's all right. Well, first we caught up with Bill Elliott. What was that like? It wasn't that bad. Uh, just got together and just kind of one of them things. Well, we've got five backup cars. Is That is one of your own race cars? Unfortunately, it was <laughs> one of my race cars. But, uh, it, it was running good. I kind of got a groove on the high side and got hooked up pretty good. And we'll see what we got. I, I don't know if I'm going to worry about much about it, though. <laughs> and now over with Ryan Newman is Dick Bergeron. And uh, Ryan Newman is looking at the remains of his race car. What happened out there? Uh, we just uh, got cornered there a little bit off of four. Uh, Elliot, I guess, was coming. Bill Elliott was coming, but I never saw him, never heard him or nothing. But uh, um, just missed a little bit there, just didn't have enough forward bite. But uh, I thank Tony for giving us the opportunity to come out and play. We'll get her fixed, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so you're not going to a backup car? I, I don't think we need to. Good, good for you. Ryan Newman, okay. But I, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to say something here. That's where we get used to racing with mirrors and get used yeah. to knowing when people are there. Out here, when you run dirt, it's a, it takes a, it's a, it's a special kind of guy that drives dirt. It's a special art to driving dirt, to knowing and feeling and hearing. Like you heard Ryan say, I didn't know he was there. I didn't hear he was there. I didn't feel he was there. And if you don't feel that, you know, we get so used to it in cup racing with spotters and with radios and so much communication. But these dirt guys, they do it all off field. And there's an art to doing this. And these guys put on a great show. But like I said, that shows they were going for it. I might, I might say that one exception to the rule should be that you give these guys a mirror. Yeah, just because we're because used we're to used driving. To just because we're used yeah. to driving with yeah. them. And, th and that's the only reason. You know, you get used to using certain things. Uh, as, as you know, we've added mirrors to cars. Jeff Gordon showed up at Daytona this year with a mirror on the right side of his car up on the dash. It looked like an old bus mirror. But it, you could see tremendously, you could see so much better out of the right side of the car. So uh, maybe that's something that we all look at. But, man, when these things are hung out sideways, you're just looking at the people in the grandstands anyhow, so you're not really seeing them. But it does give you an opportunity to check them down the straightaway. I, I've just always felt like uh, when you get out of your custom, what you're accustomed to and into a strange environment, you don't think the same. You're, you're concentrating on other things. Uh, you're not thinking about somebody being on the outside of you. I think that's the thing I always worried about when I drove somebody else's car or drove in some other series, is that I was so concentrating on my driving that I didn't pay any attention to what other people were but doing. But that's a perfect word, think. You don't think about it. Here's the problem deal with, you know, driving a cup car. You don't think, you just naturally drive. Right. And when you're put in a position where you have to think, and not that we're idiots, but when you have to think about other things, then it kind of confuses your natural talent and your natural ability, and you, you, you get confused. Let's join Matt with our first heat winner. And with all the excitement, we've now made our way back to Clint Boyer, the winner. So what did you learn in the first heat? Uh, tires was everything. Uh, we put those 40s on and the old girl was rolling there. But uh, man, I came around there and I saw everybody upside down and all sorts of stuff. I was a little bit worried, uh, you know, but um, this is for fun. <laughs> that's that's got to remember that. But uh, no, I think, uh, you know, Shane and then, uh, Dale McDowell, I really want to thank you, you know, especially Shane. He's been working his butt off uh, on both these cars for Kevin and I to come out and do this. And, um, you know, we both really appreciate it. Now, you won the first heat. Let's work our way around to his teammate at Richard Childress Racing is Kevin Harvick. And the first thing you said to me, I passed somebody. <laughs> so I'm getting better. It's, um, you know, once Bill went by me up there, I moved up the racetrack and, you know, it's just a lot of confidence uh, in, in what the cars can do. So uh, I'm definitely not very good at it, but I'm getting better. So it's uh, a lot of fun. How different is the track surface compared to last year? Well, I didn't, you know, last year when I was here, it was a lot of mud and a lot of rain, but uh, the year before it was really, really grippy and and you could run um, you know pretty close to you just barely letting out of the throttle all the way and and get right back in it but uh, this is a lot different than, than what I expected and you know you can run the bottom you can run the top and uh, but we're just having having fun with our uh, shell shell little shell car here and and um, we didn't get last so that's my goal not get lapped <laughs> that's a big goal Mike Joy thanks Matt smiles all around I think that's that's the best thing uh, about this event you know, perhaps not for the pit crews of Bill Elliott and Ryan Newman right at this moment, but if they can get those mounts prepared, uh, repaired, or get the backup cars ready, they'll be good to go for the feature. Let's take one more look at this on the last lap. And you can see Bill is coming off that corner hard, man, and, and Ryan just car takes off up the track a little bit, not knowing that Bill was coming off on that outside as fast as he was. They just hung together, and you can see that berm of dirt along the edge of the, up next to the wall, and that just kind of lifts the car right up and runs it up the wall and turns it over. <laughs> Bill said, did I bend the roof? Well, if I didn't, I'm going to do it now. 
Well, let's find out how one of the rookies fared in this event, Dick. Indeed, one of the great questions going into the night before the prelude was, how's Juan Pablo Montoya going to do in his first night ever on dirt? Great yourself. How'd you do? I've, I've been fun. It's been fun. You know, it's, it's a shame I couldn't run a little bit more. You know, it's, it's hard. We missed all our practice. We had like seven or eight laps of practice only on God qualifying that race. It's, it's hard because it's still a little bit dusty. So when, when people run hard, it's like you kind of got to guess a little bit how deep they're going to go. And it's hard, but it's fun. It's, I'm having a blast. Guess what? You're going to get a chance to race some more. We're looking forward to that. Thank you. I thought he did a great job. I'm yes. telling you, for, for, like he said, to get four or five laps on the racetrack and then to come out and be able to race, I thought he did a, a tremendous job. It shows the talent he is and the natural <laughs> talent he has. I kind of like what Glenn, Clint Boyer said. He said, come around two cars upside down. I thought this was supposed to be for fun. <laughs> yeah, just like we said. It's like a race to the motel, man. <laughs> right. It's all fun and games. <laughs> two young guns on the front row, Eric Almirola and Kyle Busch. Carl Edwards and Mark Martin. Cruz Pedregon, the drag racer with Kenny Wallace. Dave Blaney back there with uh, Kenny's older brother, Mike. And Ray Evernham. We're going to take a couple of laps here to pack in the track where uh, Bill dug it up a bit with his flip down the front straightaway. And then we'll be good to go for qualifying heat number two of three. I guess if I'd have been Carl Edwards, he would have flipped right off the top of that wrecked car. So. Maybe we'll see him flip before the night's over with. And not like that. Hopefully I mean, not a like, back not like that. Right. Tell you what, some good cars in this race right here. Um, the 99 car of Carl Edwards, good on dirt, man. Really good driver on dirt. Dave Blaney's Blaine. back there. He's been really good. Kenny Wallace has got his own car here, the Jigs car, yellow car. One to go. And uh, Rowdy is on the outside of the front row. And, folks, I got a good idea. You'll find out here in just a minute why they call him Rowdy. I may be re rethinking my position as a car owner if I uh, had brought my own car to this event after after that last little display we just saw. But that was uh, that's good racing right there. And that's just for a transfer spot. That just wasn't for the, for, spot, that wasn't for the win. <laughs> no, just for the transfer, just to get in. That was just to get into All the right. next race. Nine cars, five of them go straight to the A main. The rest of the field will have to run the B main to find their starting spots, green flag. Good start here, good clean start. Everybody gets off. Amarillo on the inside there and the Rowdy on the outside. Who's gonna get the line here? Bush to the lead. It's about all he needs, I believe. He'll set sail. If he's got clear racetrack and can pick his place, he'll go. Whoa, he uses it all though, buddy, I'm telling you. Kenny Wallace on the bottom, Carl Edwards on the top. You know, Edwards holds third. Wallace digging. He's going to get passed by the 01. Mark Martin. Mark Martin. Mark Martin's digging on the outside, looking good on dirt. Kenny really gets into turn three and up off the bottom good right here. And it's no big surprise to me, though, that Mark Martin's car looks like it's handling better than anybody's. I don't care what that man gets in. He's just got a knack for getting it set up to where it will handle and where he can drive it the way he wants to. And look out, baby. We saw something there. Look at Kenny carry that left front tire up off the... He is getting tons of grip out of that rear to be able to pick that left front. And he knows Mark's there. You see him. He's given Mark plenty of room to the outside, uh, unlike some of the stuff we saw in the first race. I saw Kenny run at Billy Sawyer's track, Virginia Motor Speedway. He drove a dirt modified for uh, Al Hanke and John Holland and uh, did a good job in that team's backup car, brought it home in the top 15. Well, the challenge is these things have got plenty of motor in them. You heard Bill Elliott say that. The challenge is getting the power to hook the things up, not spin the tires off the corner. The guy that can do that is the cat's going to be the one to beat. Now, they're well out in front of Dave Blaney. Right now, Mark Martin in the 01 is in the final transfer spot. And I'm going to tell you something. Kenny Boss is doing all he can to stay off of Mark Martin. I mean, he is really giving Mark plenty of room right now. But I, Mark, I think if we saw another race, they'd be a slide move already. Well, yeah, but I think it, Mark showed him his nose. So Kenny knew he was out there. So that, that helps Kenny not to come up the hill in front of Mark. And I'm going to tell you, Rowdy has checked out on this field yep. about like in the first race. One thing, uh, I know we talk about clean air in the cup stuff. This ain't got nothing to do with clean air right here. This, Caution. This, Turn three, Mike Wallace. I believe this is just a clean view is what helps clean you here. Maybe yeah. that's what it is. Maybe yeah. that's what it's we'll it's a different kind of clear, clean maybe, air. Maybe that's what we ought to start referring to it as. It's not clean air. It's a clean view. Clean when you get out view. I, and, you know, I'd say we see it every week in the cup. Whoever gets up front, they can kind of hold it. 
And these cars, obviously, look at them. There's a lot of aerodynamics involved in these things. Oh yeah, there are. There are. I, I, you see it with the with the, the front fenders. You see how the evolution of what the front of these cars look like compared to what they looked like only three and four years ago in the spoilers. Now there's a boy having a good time in the dirt. Yeah, and show what, me a kid who doesn't. That's what dirt track racing is all about. When I was when I was young and used to go with my father to Greenville Pickens or to Raleigh, man, I went home with rocks and gravel and mud in my hair and my ears. And, and, and I, that, those are some of my fondest memories. Yeah, that was little Juan there. His uh, little son there. Yes. Yep. Green flag once again. Al Marola makes a stab at the inside, but Rowdy Bush is going to walk away with a lead once again. Now, you know, we saw Rowdy. He, he knocked the whole right front off of that thing uh, in practice. They fixed her up, and I think they actually fixed it better for him, uh, Kyle. That thing is looking really racy now. He is. I'm going to tell you something. My man Dave Blaney made a move on that restart. And Got around Kenny Wallace right now and dove it in under Mark Martin on that, on going into turn three there. Mark, I don't think Mark realized he was there. And he is now in fifth place. Blaney is. He's Blaney. in a transfer oh, spot, and he's he up jumped, to the wall. And that's a prime example of jumping the cushion right there. You saw the rear hung out and then the front hook and turn right on him. He just got the right front out over the cushion. And, and you know, a lot of times you can do that in these dirt tracks and in these cars, and it won't hurt them, but I don't oh, think this is Blaney's the one. in trouble. He's got a, I bet he knocked it, probably cut a tire down, rubbing it up against the wall. And fifth goes back to Kenny Wallace. So Kyle Busch driving the car you saw in the late model 101 piece earlier. It's owned by Mike Lawrence Motorsports. Jerry Bowersock is the regular driver, and Rowdy's going to get himself an Eldora checkered flag. He's you got, in. You got to like that because he, he hurt the car in practice. The crew worked really hard on it, got it back, and he rewarded them with a heat win. And that, that, that's, that's, what, that's what people that work on his car, uh, whether it's the guys in the Cup Series or here tonight, the one thing you know about him, he's going to drive the wheels off of it. If he wrecks it, you know what? You don't mind wrecking it. And, the, and fixing it if the guy's going to go back out there and give you all these guys. Because you know when he did wreck it, he was driving the wheels off of it. And you know when you get it fixed, <laughs> he's going to go back and do the same thing again. I believe he's one of those kind of guys you say, look, it wasn't very good. Fix it. Yeah. That's it. We'll fix it and we'll go. Kyle Busch the winner. Eric Almirola second. Carl Edwards third. Mark Martin fourth. And Kenny Wallace fifth are the drivers who transferred directly to the A main. Everyone else will go to the Concy or B main. Heat number three. All right, this, Ready is, to this roll. is a good little race here to pick a winner. What do you think, Kyle? I don't know, man. You've picked the best. You've picked the winners in almost every one. You picked the winner in the first one from the very beginning when we got here. Clint Boyer in 07. You say he's the man. Yeah. Then in the next one, you said, okay, if Rowdy gets out front, he's gone. So I'm going to have to ride your horse today. Let's go with JJ. What do you say? Let's go with JJ then. I'm going to pull for Bobby, but let's go with JJ. Well, Bobby's car is in. Bobby had an awesome looking car yeah. in qualifying, but you got smoke there right behind JJ, too. So I don't know. It this, just depends on how this is. This is a tough race. Start. This is, a, this is, a, yeah. this is, a good, this is probably a, the best race. This, this is a dead gum good one right here, boys. JJ Ailey on the pole, 18. Casey Kane in the nine. Smoke Johnson in the number 20. Bobby Labonte, 43. Danny Hamlin in the 11. Red Farmer, the 97. David Rudum in the double O and Matt Kenzer in the 17. I have to revisit that Smoke Johnson there in the 20 car now. That, that's Tony Stewart. Oh, Smoke Stewart. Oh, yeah. Close. Good call. Green flag. Oh, Smoke Stewart is going to go to the bottom right off. Oh, this is going to be three wide down in the turn one. I think uh, Tony's pulled that move on the restart here once or twice. Casey Kane, the leader. That one, that one came out of nowhere, but he was on the front row, so uh, that had a whole lot to do with it, I would say. Kane, Stewart, Yaley, Labonte, and Hamlin discussing the transfer spot three wide with Rudiman and Kenson. Good move by Rudiman right there. Rudiman can drive dirt. Yeah, that was a slide on right there. He hey, slid it right up. He didn't have a very good car in practice or qualifying, but uh, he'll get it right. Bobby Labonte moves up to third, made a great move coming off turn four. And he does have the only Camry in the field. Rudiman does. Really? Well, you're playing, he may be in the Camry. I'm not I'm sure, but I know, I know, I know Dave's in. You can, you can almost hear the throttle in them, how they just, they just milk the throttle, just play with it. Now, Charles Red 
He's going to kind of bring it up the back back here. I thought he'd run a little bit better than that. He's got to pace himself, man. Like you said, he, he didn't know whether he could go 30 or not. You don't want to throw an extra 10 on a heat race here, baby. You got to pace yourself. Yeah. I'm going to tell you, these top three in this this, this group between uh, Kane and, and Stewart and, and Labonte here, they're not driving off from each other, but they are. these three are getting away from the pack. Like you said, this is a strong race. Yeah, well, if you think about Casey Kane, a lot of wins in the uh, in the Silver Crown Series and uh, a lot of wins in the midgets on dirt. Certainly we know what Tony can do. The guy that's really doing a really a great job for a limited experience, I guess, is uh, Bobby Labonte in the 43 car. Yeah, Bobby's doing a great job. And I'm going to tell you, that group that worked on that car, that, that you know, that he owns that team and works with, they're a great group of guys. Yeah, I know he, Sunday morning at the driver's meeting, he's always proud about what they do on Saturday night. Kane has the fastest lap of the race, 18.007. Yaley and Rudiman fourth and fifth there. Boy, Kenson right. trying to close. Rudiman has got that thing in the, it's got it in the wind, baby, and he's got it sideways coming up off the corner. Rudiman is running that left front all the way. And here, look, here's Red Farmer going around uh, Denny Hamlin here. Boy, Making that, a run at Denny Hamlin. That is that is huge. What's Denny, 24, 25? Maybe. 50 years difference in their age. All right, upper right of your screen is the last transfer spot held by Rudiman in the double O. Next is Kenseth, another second and a half back. And the white flag's in the air for Casey Kane. Boy, that's an engine Kane. number nine. Woo. You're riding with him on the bottom of your screen. He needs to take that thing to Pocono. Or he needed over to Dover maybe last week. That yeah. thing is on a rail right there, man. And look at that, rolled over. Casey Kane wins the third qualifying heat. Tony Stewart comes home second. Bobby Labonte brings it in third. Fourth is J.J. Yaley. And fifth, David Rudiman. But these guys are racing to the end. Red Farmer on the inside right here. <laughs> oh. Then Kenseth. Red Farmer says, well, that's the longest 30 laps I ever ran. <laughs> Kenseth, Hamlin, and Farmer. And here's Dick Bergeron with Rowdy. Yeah, Rowdy Bush at his very first time at Eldora, his very first time in a dirt late model, and he wins it. This guy's not satisfied, though. Talking to the crew, what do you want these guys to do to make it still faster for the feature? It's just too tight in the center of the corner. You know, we roll in there, and I get the car rotated and turned, and I'm, I'm not even really using much brake, and I'm still on the gas. And it just wants to tighten up too much on me. You know, it wants to bring the front end around a little bit, and I got to have the back staying out for me, and then being able to aim and drive straight up off the corner. So. Uh, we got a little bit more work to do here. We'll work on it some. I mean, we didn't get much practice laps, so as much as these guys have brought such a good race car to the track, I'm proud of them for that and proud of them for all the work that they've had to do to it because I, uh, I fenced it in practice, so we've had to do too much already. With as little experience as you have with these cars, how do you know what they need to do to fix them? Well, it's just what I'm, I'm accustomed to sort of with the, with the modified car. You know, I've raced those, I mean, six, seven years ago, but I still have a feel and a sense of what I want my car to do. And, you know, it shouldn't go in the corner sideways and then straighten up and then go back. You know, it should just kind of stay through there nice instead of all, through, all the way through the corner. That was the Eldora dance. Matt? Back in the garage, Dick Bergen. We're back at the 39 and Ryan Newman. He is thrashing with this team trying to get this race car back. They've already changed out a lot of the left front suspension pieces, spindles. They've got a new bumper out here parts and pieces laid out all over this racetrack. But you know, when you look at tonight, tonight is not about points. It's not about prize money. It's about a very special place, 65 acres, which was a dream of a young man, young man named Adam Petty. His brother gives us a tour of the Victory Junction. Welcome to Victory Junction Gang Camp. I'm Austin Petty. On behalf of my parents, Kyle and Patty, and my big brother, Adam, welcome. We're going to take a tour real quick and I'm going to show you why Victory Junction is so awesome and who it benefits. Behind me is Adam's Race Shop, one of the biggest buildings on camp. Losing Adam in 2000 to a racing accident helped build this place. So inside, kids learn about NASCAR and other racing events. Come on, let's check it out. Although Victory Junction is a racing themed camp, Adams Race Shop is the one place where kids can come and learn about it. In here, kids can do mock-up pit stops, 
get into a full-size race car and do a racing simulator, or just learn anything and all about racing. Now we're over on Cabin Road. This is where the campers stay while they're here for the week at Victory Junction. I want you to come inside and check it out. These campers are not roughing it. So this side is the camper side. Eight campers sleep over here, eight counselors sleep on that side. Being a cabin counselor before, I know personally that this is where campers bond with each other. This is where they get to talk to another camper that has had the same disease they have. And they just more or less come in here. This is their home base. This is where they're safe. They can play in here. They get to know other campers in here. Um, no expenses spared. Uh, handmade beds, they take a napkin, they take a quilt with them when they leave. So this is just their home for an entire week. Here at Victory Junction Gang Camp, there's no cost to any camper or family. However, it does cost the camp $2,500 for a kid to come for one week. Thanks to people like Tony Stewart and the Prelude to the Dream at Old Speedway and the Cal Petty Charity Ride Across America and other donors out there that make camp possible. Let's go inside and check out what the water park looks like. This is one of the coolest places at camp. Kids come here for the first time sometimes and swim. Anything from a water cannon, water slide, lazy river, basketball, deep end, and even kids in wheelchairs can roll into the pool with a zero degree entry and swim with everybody else. So we've made our way down to Jesse's Horsepower Garage. This building is sponsored in the memory of Jesse Hazelwood who was tragically killed at the age of 16 in a car wreck. She always wanted a therapeutic riding center so her parents sponsored this building. This is a place where kids can come and ride a horse for the first time, play with some goats, some donkeys. We got llamas. It's just a cool place for kids to come and experience what a barn is really about. The Victory Junction Gang Camp is the largest medical camping facility in the United States. The Goodies Body Shop behind me enables us to treat kids with chronic illnesses. We can treat anything from a bee sting to continuing chemotherapy. Here at Victory Junction, we try to take as much of the hospital away from these kids as possible. So if they come to the body shop, they're greeted by a very kid-friendly atmosphere. Video games, stuffed animals, movies, colors. We try to make this experience as fun as possible. So we've made our way up to the Bass Pro Shop's Catch, Kiss, and Release Marina. Here on a seven acre pond with over 6,000 fish fully stocked, a kid is guaranteed to catch a fish. When he gets done, he can hop on a paddle boat, canoe, maybe a pontoon, go out on the water, have a little fun. Behind me is the 55 foot tall high ropes course. Handicap accessible, any kid in a wheelchair or any kid that wants to do it can get to the top in three different routes. They have a pulley system, they'll work with their counselors, get them up there, and they can overlook the 72 acres, which is Victory Junction Gang Camp. I hope you enjoyed your tour of the Victory Junction Gang Camp. Without your support, it wouldn't be possible. So for any more information on volunteering, camper applications, or donations, visit us on the web at www.victoryjunction.org. I'd like to stay, but I'm going to go hang out with some campers. Peace. Now that's your son, Austin. Doing, have you seen that piece? No, that's the first time I've oh, seen it. That was incredible. He did a uh, he, wonderful he did a, job. He did a great job. I, you know, that's, we talked about all the other sons being here. Austin being here tonight is special. Yeah. Doing that piece. That was incredible. Almost when we cried. That was a good piece. I, I know. It did me, too. And I, yeah. I, I hope somebody, you know, Austin wants to get involved in some, uh, oh, yeah. maybe at a racetrack or with one of the networks or whatever. Folks, great audition, Austin. You might. I think you got a future, buddy. Well, what I love about that piece and about going to the camp is everywhere you go in that camp, you would never get the idea that this is a camp for sick kids. Because when the kids come through that gate, they're not sick. They're just kids. And that's the whole point of camp. The whole point is to empower the kids. This week is neuro neurological week, uh, neurology week. And what we're doing this week is you have 120 kids who have neurological problems. And you put them together and you want them to just be. You want them to be Mike. You want them to be Daryl. You don't want them to be the child with this illness or the child with that illness. And I think that's what camp's all about. We've been very blessed. Guys like Tony Stewart, but these other guys out here and these fans sitting in the grandstands and you people watching out there on TV tonight, by being a part of this HBO special and Old Spice, uh, you've made, you're making these kids' dreams come true. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, God bless you guys, and thank you for, for helping us. One of the things I like about camp is every week it's the same. Whatever illness you have, that's the kids you're there It's with. kids like you. Yeah. And it's so the you, same problems and challenges. Exactly. And that's incredible because you take a child six years old with spina bifida. Maybe he's never seen a 14-year-old or a 15-year-old, never experienced some of the same things. He thinks he's the only child in the world, or she thinks she's the only child in the world. 
going through that experience. Her family thinks they're the only child going through that experience. So you put them in like that, they're the majority at camp, not the minority like they are at the hospital or at home. They're the majority, and for a while, they're empowered to be the kids they can be. Well, aside from the Petty family, one of the camp's biggest benefactors is with Matt. And, Mike, I think that young Adam would be very proud of what his family has done carrying on his dream. And one of the guys that he has really helped jump on the bandwagon with that dream is Tony Stewart. Talking about smoke, the Victory Junction Game Camp, what a special place it is for so many kids. And you've jumped on the bandwagon and really helped the Petties carry that dream to fruition. Yeah, and, you know, it's, it's, it's an easy charity to support, too. I mean, if you go to Randleman and go to the camp one time and... You know, when, when we think we're having a bad day, you go and see kids that their best day isn't as good as our bad days are. And you see the smile on their face when they go to a camp that's designed for them and, and they have the right uh, hospital care, you know, the right doctors and nurses that are there exactly for their specific needs for that week. And, uh, you know, to see them having that much fun, I mean, it, it really puts uh, life in perspective for you and makes you think about how good we really have things. In the week that they're there, those 120 campers, they're just a kid. They're not a kid with anything. They are just a kid. And I know those kids would be very excited what they've seen tonight. Some e-ticket rides, some e-ticket drives. First off, as a promoter, your thoughts when you saw Bill Elliott tumbling down the front stretch? I didn't see it, but I saw the whole front stretch grandstand stand up, and then I saw people from down here running saying, he got upside down, and both of them are upside down. I was like, both of who got upside down? So I just jumped in one of the Eldora uh, push trucks and went out there, and I saw Bill upside down. I was, this is one of my heroes, you know, so... I, I was just excited to hear he was all right, and then we just had to figure out how to turn it over without getting him hurt, tipping it over on him. Promoter hat on as well. This is a new surface this year. Uh, grade it right now what you've seen tonight as the promoter and driver. Well, I mean, I, I'm really happy with the fact that it's smooth, and you can, you know, guys can run from the bottom of the racetrack all the way to the top, and as a racetrack owner, that's what you want. You want guys to be able to go anywhere and pass. So uh, I'm, I'm happy with that. I'm, I wish I could get the dust down a little bit, but uh, two out of three ain't bad. Well, we're at a dirt track. That's one thing that we do expect a little bit of. Let's go to Dick Berger. I want to point out that all the drivers who are participating tonight are doing so without any compensation whatsoever. Everybody on the TV crew is doing the same. So the money that is generated by tonight goes to the Victory Junction gang. So you're not going to get paid for winning that heat, but you drove that thing as if it was worth a million dollars. Yeah, I don't really care if I get paid or not. I'm, I'm having a blast. I think everybody here is... Uh, to be at Eldora Speedway is just a, a great event for the Victory Junction, and I'm pumped, man. That was a blast right there. Uh, the Beitler family here gave me a great car. They painted up Mopar colors, and uh, it's going to be fun. I think we'll start seventh in the main, so we got 30 laps to battle with uh, whoever else wants to go fast. All right, so where is this racetrack going to be fast for the main event? Upstairs, downstairs, in the middle? If it's how it is now, it'll be across the whole track. It'll be very uh, similar, you know, bottom, top, middle, wherever, but... I don't know if it'll start patching a little rubber or if it's just going to stay like this. I hope it stays like this because it's it's a lot of racetrack right now. Sounds like we've got an opportunity to see a lot of passing, Mike. No kidding. Right now, the uh, Ump Modifieds, United Midwestern Promoter Series, are running on the track. And they're running top, bottom, sideways. So everywhere, in the middle, every good groove is a good groove right now. Here's a Coca-Cola recap of the qualifying heats as we get ready for the B-Main. And Darrell picked about every one of those. He picked Clint Boyer. He picked Kyle Busch. We may, we may have missed the third one. Yeah. The third one was the hard pick. That was a hard pick. J.J. let me down a little bit there, but uh, I'll tell you what, Casey Kane didn't let anybody down. That car is his. I'm more anxious to see Casey Kane, Clint Boyer, Smoke. Those cars are really good in their heat races, and I'm anxious to see those guys get it on. You know, it, it, we, in, that, in that third race, you know, with, with Casey, he and Smoke and uh, and Bobby Labonte, they they kind of got a separation of eight or ten cars apiece and just kind of maintained that, but they got away from the rest of the field. I, I'm really, you know, I'm not surprised in some of these guys, but the, the one guy that really surprises me is, is the guy we're getting ready to talk to, Mark Martin, and how smooth he is around this racetrack, and I, uh, I didn't know he was that good on dirt. How's he doing, Matt? Well, I think he's doing pretty good, judging DW, like you mentioned, how smooth he looked out on those high banks. Now, Mark, you began driving in Batesville, driving that old number two in the 70s. But what's it like running Eldora? How scary is the high banks here? It's uh, It'll get your attention. But Tony did us a favor this year, uh, made the track a lot drier. And so uh, it's a lot easier. I was scared to death last year, but I really want to thank Billy Moyer and those guys from uh, hometown Batesville 
given me such a great car. If nothing else good happens tonight, I'm real proud of where we qualified. I, I was embarrassed a little bit of how we ran last year, and uh, we laid down a great qualifying lap and uh, didn't do quite as well in the heat race, but uh, hopefully we'll get it dialed in a little better for the feature. I really appreciate them giving me such a great car to drive. Mark Martin, he's all jacked up getting ready for that 30 lap A main feature. Dick? And I'm hell with Eric Al Almarola. Did a great job in that heat race, finishing in second position. How much experience have you got on tracks like this? <laughs> None. I came here last year for the first time, and it was my first time ever on dirt. So uh, this is my second time on dirt. Man, it is so fun, and I'm just happy to be here. It's for a really good cause for Victory Junction Gang Camp. And, uh, you know, Garrett Durrett brought an awesome car for me to race, and just uh, really proud to be here and, and really thankful that Tony asked me to come. It's just uh, it's an awesome experience, and uh, now I know why these guys are so good when they go to the slick tracks on asphalt, because it's, uh, it's unreal car control. How did you find the line, and how did you figure out how to drive these cars into that line? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't even think I'm still running the right line, but uh, yeah, I'm just doing the best I can and uh, riding around. The track's really in, in, in my favor, I think, right now. Is last year when I came, it was really wet and heavy, and, and you had to really be aggressive. And now you can really back your corner up and be a lot smoother and go faster because the track's so dry slick. So uh, it's really worked in my advantage for, as far as the inexperience goes. So I'm just having fun. Good for you. Well, let's go from one of the rookies, Eric Almirola, to one of the real veterans here, Kenny Schrader. What do you think this racetrack is going to be like for the feature? Uh, <laughs> it's going to be slick for sure, but I think it'll be multi-groove. It's going to be slick at the bottom, slick at the top. It's the way Tony wanted it, and they, they accomplished it. So you can run all over the place. With your experience, who do you like for the feature event? Who looks really strong to you, uh, besides Ken Schrader? Well, I'll tell you what, Boyer was Boyer was good. Uh, I don't know. You know, there's there's four or five of them that are going to be going to be good, and we're we're making some serious changes uh, on our little Red Baron Pizza car to try to make it better too. So how far are you sticking your neck out with all those changes? Uh, well, you either win this thing or you're not in it. So. We'll, we're, we're going for it. All right, Schrader's a past winner here at Eldor. It was a while ago in open wheel racing. Thanks, Dick. There is the winner of the UMP modified race. Pretty car. Got flames on it. Even dirt cars have flames on it. That, that was a good race also. Scott Orr, congratulations. Feature winner. And you'll see those type of modifieds race from here all across the Midwest and to the East Coast. Very, very popular class of car. I don't know what max crowd is for this joint, but it's here tonight. It's here tonight. It's a big crowd, boys. So hey. here's what's next, what they call the B main, uh, which we would have called a Concy at asphalt short tracks, uh, like where we grew up. And this will determine the final oh, 11 positions in the feature. Ron Capps, Cruz Pedregon, Denny Hamlin, Elliott Sadler, Red Farmer, Dave Blaney, Juan Pablo Montoya, Mike Wallace, Matt Kenseth, Kevin Harvick, and Ray Evernham. And I think Dave found his way into this race a little bit through some uh, through some trouble. I think when he got in the wall, like Daryl said, I don't know if he cut a right front tire or whatever, but uh, he found his way into the B this way. Let's find out what Herman's up to. Matt? Mike, a quick update on Dave Blaney. They bent some suspension pieces in the right front when he bounced off the wall. And I don't know of anybody who has more passion for dirt racing. You even have it on your website, Kenny Wallace's Dirt Track Schedule. <laughs> yeah, and actually, these guys back here, this is Bob Sargent. And, uh, you know, myself, Tony Stewart, Schrader, you know, we all went and bought Macon, Illinois. So that's what type of passion I have. And, uh, you know, but Tony's put together a great deal. And now, you know, all the tr dirt tracks are trying to carbon copy what he's doing here as far as NASCAR nights. And you were the 2005, the first annual yep. Nextel Prelude of the Dream winner. Talk about your chances here tonight. Well, that first race, uh, I was teamed up with Shelter Motorsports, and that, that car was just incredible. You know, when a track gets slick like this, that's where the money's at for these dirt guys. And that's why Bloomquist and Moyer, they rise to the occasion. Their chassis handle really good. My car's driving good, I just have no grip. That night when I won that 2005 race, I felt like I was on asphalt. Matter of fact, I won a race, Tony Stewart. Lasoski, Blaney, they're like, what was that all about? <laughs> like, I don't know, man. I think it was just flying. I think you're seeing that tonight here. There's, you know, good good race car drivers that probably don't think they can drive dirt, but you come and get it, and, uh, you know, you get experience, and you have a good time with it. And I saw on your dirt schedule on KennyWallace.com that you've got a big event coming up at Macon. Yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, 
Thursday, June 14th, uh, Speed TV presents uh, NASCAR Night at Macon. So it's going to be a televised event on speed. We're excited, but we're going to run the Modifieds. Uh, it's a little fifth mile. It's a legendary racetrack. So next Thursday, everybody show up. And we got, we got what well, we got? We got Kyle Busch. We got Blaney, Yaley, uh, Schrader, me, a lot of great race car drivers, about 15 of us. Mike, you can just see the passion on his face. How much fun he and just so many other people have going dirt late model and modified racing. Well, all these folks are having a great time here tonight, uh, Matt, and, and that's the point, and it's for a great cause, Victory Junction Gang Camp. Let's uh, have a look back at some of the highlights of tonight, along with Curb Records recording artist Bombshell. One simple dream, one gentle word, one act of love from someone can start a chain reaction. It all begins in the heart and the power of one. Oh, no. I don't think a single fan has got up out of their seat all night. I think they're in the same place they started when we started this show at 7 o'clock. I think they're just waiting for the, for, the big, for the big show. Some of these people are left over from this past weekend. They were here this past weekend for a big dirt race, uh, and they stayed over. These people are from all over the country. They don't just live around here. Uh, Mike, I think you got some uh, statistics there about where everybody came from. Yeah, fans as far away as Florida, Wisconsin, and California and Washington State. 30 states are re were represented in the pre-buy for tickets. Amazing. That is truly amazing. It I, is. Maybe Bristol can rival that, but there's not many cup tracks that rival that. I'm going to tell you that. But you know, dirt racing is kind of cyclical. Cyclical. It comes and it goes. There was a time when everybody had dirt tracks, and they paved all the dirt tracks. And now I think it's slowly, because of the efforts of people like Tony Stewart and others, it's slowly finding its way back again. But that's what it takes. It takes guys like Tony Stewart who have a passion for the sport. And it also takes guys like Casey Kane and like Ryan Newman and like Jeff Gordon, guys who came from dirt, grew up running dirt, go-karts, grew up running dirt, midgets, whatever it is, and still have that passion and still have that ability to go back and put on a show and show these guys that run here on a weekly basis, hey, you can make it to the big show too. This is dirt. This is a great show, but you can make it to Daytona. You can make it to Talladega and Charlotte and places like that if that's what you want to do. If this is where you want to be, stay here. It's still a great place. And this is the second coming of dirt tracks because dirt tracks for many years, like asphalt short tracks, were run by owner operators who put the weekly haul back into the facility and back into the purse. And now some of these very well-heeled people from Major League Stock Car Racing are buying these tracks and they have the money to invest to improve the facility. They have the connections and the marketing know-how to fill the billboards, and they attract the stars to fill the seats. I don't think dirt track racing has ever been healthier than it is right now. No, and it's not. You take a guy like Tony Stewart. Tony Stewart knows his, his driving career is a limited number of years, but his promotion career can go on indefinitely. And he took over from, from one of the greatest promoters ever, from Earl. And, and when you look at things like that, you know, he can continue this tradition and drop it off to a guy who's not even, who maybe is driving go-karts at this point in time. Yeah. We may not even know who the guy is. The thing about it is, uh, the dirt track racing is not follow the leader racing. No. It's, uh, it's, it's like drifters. People go watch drifters because they're exciting to watch. Dirt track racing is exciting to watch. What Tony brings to the stage, too, is that passion, but he brings the ability to draw Old Spice to the table. He brings the ability to draw Nextel and HBO and put on an event like this, you know, whatever it may be, and that's helping reinvigorate the sport of dirt racing in this country right now. Let's check with Dick Bergeron. And people were wondering how long it was going to take Jeff Gordon to get back in the spirit of dirt track racing. Was it 50 feet, 60 feet? Yeah, oh, it was before I even rolled out there. Uh, just, you know, coming in the gates here, this is a place that I've always admired and, and loved, and uh, to get a chance to come back here and, and do this is such a blast. I didn't know what to expect with this car, but it is so much fun to drive, and these guys have worked so hard. Of course, I put them to work a little more than I expected because I got in the wall a little bit in that heat race, but they give me a great, they've given me a great car, and I'm just having so much fun here. It's a blast. We're all having fun, and they're getting ready to race out there, Jeff. It's the B main to determine starting positions, 16 on back, in tonight's feature event.
And like I said, the people like to this kind of racing because cars are going to be everywhere. And they're going to be sideways. And, I mean, it's just a, it's a whale of a show. It's but look at this. That, that shows what, what a great show it is. There's Carl Edwards up on the truck watching the show. You know, so these other drivers that are going to be in the A main are going to want to see how these guys are competing in the B main and what the racetrack's going to. Everyone will transfer to the A main, so there is no bump spot in this event. Ron Caps, Elliot Sadler, the front row. Red Farmer in the 97, Juan Montoya, Dave Blaney, and Matt Kenseth, Mike Wallace, Kevin Harvick, Ray Evernham, Cruz Pendragon, and Denny Hamlin, the lineup. Although Hamlin has moved to the second row. That's interesting. Well, that's, that's where he belongs. We have a revised uh, yeah. lineup. I, I think he, he knows that's where he belongs, and everybody yeah. does. They just let him fill, drop in there, and, uh, and that's his starting spot. All right, let's try this lineup again. Caps on the pole, Pedragon on the outside. And there you see Bill Elliott up on the hauler. We're told that Bill and his son Chase have parked their car for the night. The number nine will not compete in the A main. He parked it right here on the front. Yeah, exactly. Sure we, we saw him. We, we saw him yeah, parking. We saw that. Valet parking. Yeah, uh, Ryan Newman uh, assisted. Denny Hamlin, Elliott Sadler, row two. Red Farmer Dave Blaney, row three. Montoya and Wallace. Kenseth and Harvick, Evernham. Here wow. we go. Wow. Uh, Maybe a little early start there by the uh, 28 car on That's Caps. Right. Hey, he's good off the line, baby. I think he red light yeah. He got him I on think that he red light That's that reaction time. He did good. And he's, and he's run a good line through one and two and got away from him. Uh -uh. And I, he waved it off. It's not going to work, buddy. I'm no. not. I mean, I know it's for fun. I was pulling but for it. I wanted that one to happen. <laughs> that was a red light start right I, there. I like Caps. And he got through one and two good and put a little distance on him. <laughs> no, he got off a of turn four good. The yeah, problem was true. nobody else was coming with him. That's true. <laughs> I'm well, now, I don't understand that, because you got two drag racers on the front row, Caps and Pedregon. So Re Reaction time. <laughs> <laughs> they just got it. No. <laughs> I think they've been watching these heat races. You get out front, you've got a good shot of winning them. Yep. Oh, this will be much cleaner. Now, Mr. Caps, you do that again, and you're going to have to go to the rear. You get one chance. Yeah, ask Kevin Harvick about jumping the restart from the pole. He knows. Oh, yes. Oh. Let's try again. Here we go. They were ready this time. I don't know that it was a good start, but everybody was ready. It's a lot closer. That's good. Exactly. Hamlin oh, for whoa. second. Slides up in front of Pedragon, who goes to the bottom for second. And here comes Montoya on the inside. Good crossover move by Pedragon there. Very good. Man, look at Juan. He's down on that. the bottom. Juan's down in there now, man. I'm He's telling digging. you. You give him five or six laps, he's going to pick up on it. Montoya is fourth. Farmer on the outside. Uh oh, oh round goes. goes. Oh, Elliot Sadler. Elliot Sadler in the 19 car. I don't think he got any assistance. No, just got in there and kind of ran out of talent. That happens. I'm not going to say he ran out of talent. I I'm know. just going to say he ran out of race track. You know, say, I, you these, know guys don't run, these guys don't no. run out of talent. Ran out of I know grip. you're joking. They didn't have enough grip for what he was joking. trying to do. He's probably know. laughing about he jumped, it. He jumped the berm there. Yep. He got over the berm. Watch him. I don't think he's up here in the. He didn't oh, get to the berm. No, he didn't get to the berm. He hit those brakes going in, and it just turned around. Man. I think I think what he was trying to do was plant that thing. You know what you do on dirt? Oh, that's a little bent. Yeah, I'm afraid he planted her a little too deep there. We've seen worse this evening. Yeah, at least he's still upright. Yeah. <laughs> but he was trying to get over. These things are these cars are pretty left side heavy. I'm not sure what the percentage is. Probably way up there, somewhere near 60. That means that when the things get up on those right side tires a little bit, they're going to kind of try to roll over. Well, I was really impressed with that cross under move uh, of Pedragon's trying to get back past Denny Hamlin and by Montoya in the opening laps. I was too. He let the 11 car slide up in front of him and, and Cruz turned dead left and drove right back by him down the back stretch. And that was a great move, man. When I said 60, 60% 60 left side weight. So it's pretty light down the right side. We knew you didn't mean uh, 60 years old. We know you weren't talking about red there on any of that. <laughs> All right, Sadler trying to get into the pits, uh, and the car won't steer, so we're going to go one more lap of caution. Broke the left front tire rod, I reckon. He wants to get it in the pits so they can work on it and get it ready for the feature. And he's there. He's done it. He gets it in the pits there. The wa they just watered that down. It's a little slipperier. The left front will slide now. Right side looks nice on that car. Caps, Hamlin, Pedregon, Montoya, 
Kenseth, the front five, then Red Farmer, Dave Blaney, Kenny Wallace, Kevin Harvick, Ray Evernham. We'll go one more lap. I hope Denny sees that cone set in the middle of the racetrack. The way they do on the dirt tracks is you have to run to this side of the cone or to the outside of the cone. They've got it on a rope and they'll pull it back. Uh, Denny may just go the inside, man. Well, that's uh, you can't pass till you pass that cone. You're not supposed to pass. Right. And what I always thought was funny is how they got it tied to a rope. You know, <laughs> if NASCAR, they'd throw a caution flag and go out there and pick it up, but they just tie a rope to it and drag it right on off the track. That's it. Works perfect. Been working for 100 years that way. I've, I've always said they needed debris retrievers. Yeah. Well, they, <laughs> used, they used to flag a lot of these racetracks from the track, from yeah. the track side on the inside of the front straightaway. I've started races with a flagman standing in the middle of the track. Yikes. Green flag. Here's Montoya. Where's the cone? Where's the cone? Oh, he missed it. He missed it, baby. He thought about it. That's pretty heads up, though. You that know, was very heads up, man. Kenseth coming on the inside. Yeah, they don't have those cones in Formula One. No. That's a good move right there. Montoya gave him plenty of room. He knew that, that Kenseth was there. We see Caps. Caps is checked out on these guys. He's an abstract. See, oh, oh, Caps knew that. He, he watched those heat races. He said, if I get this thing out front, I'm going to check clear it. Got that view. Adios, boys. Crews got a little nudge there from uh, from my man Kenseth coming up out of turn two. Kenseth's got a pretty good looking piece down on the bottom. Searching that uh, low line. Yep. Montoya still digging. Blaney, he's up against the berm, oh, yeah. I mean, on the outside. So I see that's what makes the dirt track racing exciting. Three Slipping wide. and sliding, three wide, one high, one low. Yep, Blaney up in that championship groove. It, it, there's no follow the leader on this kind of racetrack. And I'm going to tell you, Kevin Harvick has followed him up to the high side and is making some decent time. Whoa, where's Caps going? Caps took a detour. Car I hooked think, on him, Daryl, and he yeah. had to gather it back. Wow. And here comes Kenseth on the inside of the 17. Yeah, Matt's car is getting it, baby. That thing is coming around the bottom of that racetrack. Hey, Denny's holding tight on the on the on the high side here. Yeah, but I tell you, look at that Man. seven. Look at that seventeen go down in the bottom of that track, and right around Caps he goes, and he is checking out now, baby. Matt Kenseth started ninth, and he's your leader. He's got that thing figured out, man. Right on the bottom, he makes great time through the middle of one and two. Halfway. Matt is just driving pretty straight into the corner, but then the car really accelerates. But look out on the outside. Whoa. Here comes another player. But you see, Matt's car worked good for the first 10 laps, and now Denny's car seems to be up on. And here comes Blaney. Blaney's moved into third place right now. And and Denny and uh, Blaney both have got their out, the cars working up next to the wall, up next to the cushion. And that's really paying off as they come off the corner. Hamlin really closes up on the back bumper of Matt Kenseth going into three. But Matt pulls away down at the bottom. Kenseth's got, uh, rather, Hamlin's got such a launch off the corner. He just loses a lot of time getting in to Matt. If he can ever get in a little better, he'll be able to make that pass down the back straightaway right here. Matt gives him the outside. He's Matt. looking. Hamlin trying to keep him wound uh -oh. up. The spinner, Montoya. Montoya's car had begun to fade, and he was in fifth place when he spun at turn two. Looks like it uh, Cruz Petragon, I think it is, and yep. he must have gotten together because Cruz has got to uh, all kind of little bars sticking up in the back of his car. I don't know where they came from. Kenny Schrader having a look at it. Here's what happened. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. oh man. They just got hung together, and Juan goes into the wall pretty hard right there. Now, you know, A.J. Foyt won the Indy 500 four times, the Daytona 500, and Le Mans. Montoya trying to become the first driver ever to win Indianapolis, the Grand Prix of Monaco, and Eldora. I'm going to tell you, that would be a feat. I don't, I don't care in anybody's book. You know, that would, there's a lot of guys, A.J. Foyt and Mario Andretti and guys that ran sprint cars used to and stuff like that, they'd love to have Eldora on their resume along with those other wins. Back in the day, I used to go to Springfield, Illinois, and DeCoin, Illinois. Those were two right. of the great state fairs. And uh, they would run sprints, champ cars, and stock cars Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And you talking about a show, and that's back when Parnelli drove and AJ yep. and all those all those USAC drivers back in the day, and it was a really great weekend. Matt, what's uh, Carl Edwards' take on all this? Well, we are high atop the team hauler, and Carl, when you're looking at this uh, race going on right now, uh, you know you're seeing different lines. I mean, this is exciting up here. I can't get the smile off my face, man. Uh, I just can't thank Barry Wright Race Cars and uh, Stacy Holmes for you know let me drive this thing and. 
all you fans for coming out and the fans at home for, for getting this thing. It's for a good cause. And we're seeing, I got a newfound respect for Matt Kenseth. He's just doing unbelievable. But uh, I think Danny might get him with that Jack Hewitt line up there. Well, looking ahead <laughs> to the A-Main, what are you learning from this event that you can carry over to the A-Main? I'm going to have to go uh, hide Matt's helmet or something. I don't know. <laughs> um, it's going to be pretty fun, man. I just got a good car and just, just so happy to be doing this. I mean, I, I can't believe what I'm seeing here. It's, uh, it really is like a dream. It's cool. And he has dreamed about racing here ever since he was a young man, and now he is finally here and racing and getting ready for the A-Main event. And, and again, I just can't reiterate enough about these guys that are driving these cars tonight on dirt. They're accustomed to working really hard to be smooth, keep a car straight, keeping a, not binding it up, not getting it crossed up. And uh, tonight, it's just the opposite. you got to throw this thing around here and cock it sideways, turn it right to get it down in the corner. And I'm amazed. I am, I am amazed that these guys can get around this racetrack the way they are, Kyle. The, the way they do. And it, it's, it's car control. You know, and they do it with, they're driving the car not only, you know, we talked so much about the cup stuff. Be smooth on the steering wheel. Be smooth into the corner. These guys have to be smooth on the accelerator here. They pitch it off into the corner, but they got to really feather it to get that grip and get what they need coming up out of the corner. And I am, I'm totally blown away by the way they're doing it. And just think about it. It may not be, there's that bar I was talking about sticking up in the back of, uh, that 71 you know, car that's, there. That uh, looks like the gurney lip off uh, off of his uh, rear spoiler. Yeah, it does. That, that could very well be what it is. But, you know, I was thinking about Pocono, a little dirt tracking at Pocono in a bad thing, Kyle. It's only no. at 190 miles yeah, an hour. It's, it's a difference. A lot you go down that long back straightaway, long pond straightaway, you want to kind of throw it into turn two there and then turn three, kind of throw it in there to get it up on the straightaway. But Pitch it across the tunnel and unload it coming on turn <laughs> three to get it down the straightaway. <laughs> now, this is kind of new. It took them a while to get Cruz Pedregon stopped because, of course, they don't use the black flag in drag racing. That's true. There's no reason to. How would you stop if they threw it at you halfway down the straight, uh, halfway down question. the drag strip? All right. So uh, this is yeah yeah don't uh, don't trigger the parachute. This is a safety stop. They're going to pull this off for safety reasons. I think they're winding the rubber band up. That's to tell you the truth, it. yeah, they're getting yeah. a little tighter. Okay. It's hard yeah, to there they go a little more now. Yeah. This thing's going to take off. You wait. Watch this. All right. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. Yeah, yeah, I was getting ready to say six pop rivets and one will hold it forever. Yeah. He's got it now. It's cranked. He got a little more. The rubber band's cranked. He's good to go. There's some fans. Yep. Got their goggles on. See, Cruz is, Cruz is right not there. used to running this long. He's used to running about four or five seconds. And right. tonight, he just didn't have enough tor attention on the rubber band. So he added a little bit more, and he's good to go now. Starter has the green flag in hand. We've completed 8 of 12 in this B main. Now this cone, you got to keep an eye on the cone, folks. Sitting down there on the straightaway, right at the start finish line. You can't pass till you go by there. Pretty good rule. It's kind of like our no passing to, to the left, all passing to the right. Here comes Cruz and Blaney. Blaney gets third away from Caps. Harvick's coming on the bottom. I think the guy would be worried about is Blaney. Uh -oh. Who's in the fence? Cruz. Yep. Who's in the fence? Yeah. I, I tell you, they just broke the rubber band on that car. That's what happened. Couldn't get it cranked tight enough. Goggles I, at the dirt track. Now, there's a great idea. No, it's a Even one, for fans. No, I'm telling you. Bubble oh. goggles are all right for the fans, but ain't too good if you're out there on the racetrack. I, I was getting ready to say, <laughs> bubble goggles are better for fans than they are for driving, aren't they, Darrell? I done tried that. <laughs> it didn't work. All right. I know you've been dying all night to do this. Tell us your golf story. Oh, man. <laughs> I played golf today. I hit my second shot behind the grandstand. Uh, now, I was playing in, in, in Iowa at the at the principal golf tournament, which is uh, a, a senior a champion champions tour, tour yeah. and playing uh, playing in a, a pro am and hit my ball behind the grandstand, and I'm should I drop it or should I play it? And I decided I'd play it. We're going green here. Never mind. We don't need to hear no golf stories. Don't worry about that. We'll well, well, no, 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 that's, a that's what's the race, man. That, you got it. You race, got it. You got it set up. His ball's behind the grandstand. We'll get back to it at the end of the race. All right, green flag. Matt Kenseth. Denny Hamlin, and now Dave Blaney drops to the bottom. A spinner, Everham at the start-finish line. Now, what was that? Was he trying to miss the cone, or? He wanted to hear the rest of the golf story. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry about that. All so right, it's so behind the grandstand. Yeah, behind the grandstand. A covered, tented grandstand. Behind the grandstand. My, my caddy and I, Luke, we're, we're over behind the thing there, and some fans are there, and they're like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, doing the Michael Jordan thing, you know, off the rail and off the chair, down the bank, in the hole, you know, making the call. So finally I said, well, what can I do? And he said, either drop it or, you know, take a, take a penalty or you want to play it. And I said, let's play it. 
He said, how are you going to shoot it? I said, up over the roof, down the front of the roof, down the bank, on the green. By God, I called it. <laughs> then I putted it in for a par. The greatest golf shot ever, and only me and a couple of people are are allowed to tell about it. A Kyle Petty, ladies and gentlemen. That was great. That's not no, that's not a fish tail either. That's called a scramble right there. You scrambled on that one. That's a double up and down. We're getting ready to see Dave Blaney doing up and down here because he's been coming. He I'm might too. just split the middle. Hamlin's running the top and Ken's at the bottom. If he doesn't run out of time, Blaney might be able to slingshot him. I don't know. He's getting down in that corner, man. He drives in there better than anybody. Blaney has been moving around. He, he got to the high side and made time on those guys, but now Hamlin's running his groove, so he's got to figure out another way to, to get around Hamlin. He can't run that groove anymore. Well, Denny's car's got so much forward bite off of turn two over there. Well, look at it. Go down that back straightaway. Yeah. Here's where Matt's got the advantage. He's down nice and low. He gets in the corner low. White flag in the air. Boy, that's going to be a drag race here, boys. Boy, I like Blaney's line. He's in in the middle, and he's out on top like Hamlin carrying. Uh, not that time. Hamlin's I think Hamlin's going to. I think we could see another. Uh, I think Bill Elliott and Ryan Newman, if we're not careful here, because they're going to come off this uh, turn four. One on the low, one on this. The, is, uh, this is going to have a save. Oh! oh! That was close. That's what's called a slide job. Oh, that so, was almost a repeat. And we thought man. it looked like it, didn't it? Oh, my goodness, that was almost a repeat. Hamlin had Hamlin. That was the first couple of laps that Hamlin had got at least to his door going down the back stretch and just couldn't make it work. Another lap or so, and he'd have been there. Yeah, you, this is setting up exactly like we saw Ryan Newman and Bill Elliott. You see uh, Denny Hamlin up high, and Matt Kent is down low. And this time, I believe, I believe they saw that other accident <laughs> yeah, and I knew better. I believe if we, if we went back to that accident, I think the guy hanging on the fence looking at the car upside down the most was Denny Hamlin. I <laughs> yeah. think he realized that's not where I want to be. <laughs> What, what a great bunch of fans, and I'm telling you, this place has been packed all afternoon. We got here early this afternoon, and people have been coming in. I don't know, I think there's about 20-some thousand folks here tonight. 8 o'clock this morning, they started coming. So, uh, some camped out from yesterday, and there are, like you said, some left over from last weekend. And no telling how many millions of people are watching at home, right? Right. Millions. Got to be millions. I think these guys right now out there with the, uh, with the race cars are just saying, put me four on and let's go back. I'm in a groove right now. <laughs> well, yep. they don't get to do much. I know Kenseth is anyhow. So Matt Kenseth wins the B main. Same safety equipment here we use every week. They got their Hans devices and uh, their same helmets. And pretty it, much the same equipment. And that's important for everybody that's watching this to see and, and all the, the young aspiring race car drivers that are out there. It shows that no matter what you do, and you keep hearing these drivers talk about it being fun. Fun is fun, but safety is safety, and you should always wear everything that you've got to make it as safe as possible. Now, you saw what he said on the dash there just in front of the steering wheel, uh, his two earplugs and the receiver that Dirt Motorsports requires. You don't have onboard radios to talk to the crew, but you do to listen to the officials. And, hey, uh, Dick Bergeron is with a couple of racing Kansas. Dick. Well, Matt Kansas, did you have fun in that heat? That was close. Uh, yeah, I did have fun. I'd have more fun trying to figure out where everybody is around you, but uh, our car was a lot better there. It's real slick here, and uh, we got some more grip in it there at the end, so that was better. This young man standing beside you, I understand he's a pretty talented race car driver. Who is this guy? Yeah, he's working on, he's working on uh, running his first late model race Friday night up in Columbus, so um, just turned 14 a few weeks ago, and uh, he's getting into it. Uh, you didn't tell us who he was. What's my son, Ross? Oh, well, following in Dad's footsteps? Yeah, hopefully. You have fun doing this sort of thing? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. You get scared in the race car? Not really. What do you think of what do you think of this place? It's pretty sweet. It's really fast. Would you like to race here? Yeah. Okay. Upstairs, downstairs, in the middle. Did Dad pick the right lane or what? Yeah. Blocked the crap out of Hamlin then there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's go to Matt with that. <laughs> and the good. guy who hooked up on the high line and almost pulled off that victory was Denny Hamlin. That high line was really working for you. It wasn't too bad. Uh, our car was so loose uh, on the bottom i had to do something different to uh yeah, to make up any ground but um yeah the high line's good it's uh the rim riding's fun but uh yeah we get, we get this thing tightened up we'll be a whole lot better what a difference from last year you almost wrecked the packer truck during the rain delay that we had here for the first time we came to eldor for the prelude you came back and you had a little fan dangle there as well so this is a big big improvement the night is not over okay <laughs> uh, I don't know uh, how well my progression, you know, I don't know whether I'm, I'm haven't reached my peak yet or I'm 
that's all I'm good for. So uh, we'll we'll see here shortly. But you know, we're actually tuned on the car now and, instead of the driver so much. But I do need a lot of help still. I think what's scary, you were looking and trying to read the wear on that left rear tire. This is dirt racing, and it, it, that might be a little scary for you. We're I think we're over cambered and our um, our uh, by tweeter valve and our, our muffler bearings are a little loose. So uh, once we get that fixed, we'll be good. <laughs> Dirt track racing terminology 101 <laughs> or 102, whatever it takes for Denny Hamlin. You know, I, I once had a big sponsor deal with a muffler bearing company. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Their sales just went right in the dumper. And they, they've just the not like they used well, to be. Just no. not like they used to be for muffler bearings. See, that's the difference here. They got <laughs> tweeter valves here. We got widgets. <laughs> Cup, we have widgets. You know, our cars, the cars jumped. To, Jump the tires here, you jump the cushion. Next week we'll be able to buy a T-shirt that says uh, Denny Hamlin's uh, tweeter valves and the exhaust bearings. All right. Now I want <laughs> when I was 16, it, I got suggested that I replace the muffler bearings in my 60 Chevy. And I know you've got a, a great story about new people at the racetrack uh, <laughs> about trying to find a long wait. Oh yeah, we send the you know first time you get you get a guy and his his name on his shirt is new guy. Then right. You put it on with tape and you tell new guy go down to the 29 car and. And, and get a long wait, and uh, and he goes down there and he's and you know three hours later he's still there waiting. But yeah, he's they, got the long wait. He's by got then. the <laughs> he's, he's got the long wait. They by gave him a long they, wait. They, yeah. <laughs> you go down there, he goes down. And he says he wanted me to come down here and uh, get a long wait. They said we'll just stand right there. We'll get back to you. <laughs> Talking about uh, muffler bearings, my wife had a real problem with the Volkswagen she had back when she was going to college. Kept that was trying the first to put problem. Water, put, she kept trying to put water in it. Oh, no. <laughs> Mad, help She's us out. She's gonna get you, man. <laughs> you know, Ryan, Ryan's gonna get that thing oh, put yeah. back together. And he's worked on it. I, I want everybody, to, everybody that's watching this, I want them to see that Ryan was in there with hammers and pliers and pickle forks and jamming that thing, trying to put it together. Yeah, here's the other thing too. He's gonna pay for it too. <laughs> hey, Matt, are you there? I've got you, DW. You know, now, drivers, they always hear from their car owners when they scratch up the paint job. And your car owner, I think, is going to be unhappy with you because you more than took a few decals off this car. Uh, yeah, but, I mean, I need to talk to Tony Stewart because, like, I've never seen this place before, but I can help him. Coming off there. Coming off turn four. Off of four there. It needs to be. Judge about your car, maybe about 12 inches, 14 inches. Uh, yeah, if you could have got me six, I might not have took the decals <laughs> off. But you're having a great time. Uh, it's awesome. I mean, it's it's wild. It's fun just being on a track with those guys. I'm doing the best I can, uh, best I can not to wreck. But I I got uh, ran out of a little talent there. <laughs> Looking at your racing career up in the Northeast, does this place compare to anything? No, and it's one of those places that you hear about, like Indianapolis. You know, you want to go. And like I said, I can't just say enough to to be here, be at this place with all these fans and to be at Eldora and to have made some laps and uh, to put a Darlington stripe on at Eldora. <laughs> I might have to buy the quarter panel from him and take it home. Well, we're getting ready for the big A main coming up. Now let's go back to Dick Burke. And I'm with Dave Blaney, who's had a lot of success in open wheel cars here at Eldora, but an up and down night tonight. What do you think? You're saving the best for last? Man, I hope so. That'd be a good uh, a good story, but I don't know. We, we just haven't been very fast. We're sliding all over the place, and uh, we've got one more shot at it here. See if we can get it hooked up for the feature. All right, we've been talking about fathers and sons. Goat, swing your camera over just a little bit to the right. That's Lou Blaney. That's Dave Blaney's dad, a great race car driver for many, many years. So many fathers and sons here tonight, Mike. And you know, Mike, you go to a racetrack sometime as a driver, and uh, there's there's Chrissy and, uh, and Mike Wallace. I'm pretty sure Chrissy's saying, Dad, let me drive it. Let me get in there. I can do it. Look at her. She's right now. Come on, talk to me, Dad. Let's make a deal. <laughs> I can sell insurance, um, but so many times you go to one of these racetracks as a, as a visitor, you'll come to Eldora because you've heard about it. Tony will have you come in and run a, as, as, a, uh, as an added attraction for one of the races. You don't get the same feel that you would get here tonight when you're here with all your buddies. I mean, they're out here tonight having fun with the crowd that you race with every week. So you don't feel like you're a loner or anything. You're here with, the, with your peers, and I think that's what makes this so special. Yeah, and you know how that is. It, it's, it, you, even coming up and you racing in, in, in Nashville and racing other places, when you would go to another racetrack, you were the outsider going into that racetrack. Those 20 guys raced against each other. They knew all the moves. You were the guy that came in and kind of was like the fly in the ointment. They didn't know what you were going to do or how you were going to handle things. And it was hard. So when these guys are out here racing together, 
they know each other, they respect each other, and they understand that. And it's fun to come do it with a group of guys. To these guys out here tonight, you know, you've heard them all talk about it, you've seen it on their face. To them, this is like a Bass Pro Shop fishing trip. This is like a good day on the golf course. This is hanging out with your friends, hanging out with your peers, but at the same time being competitive with them. Yeah, every, every time you go to the racetrack, you want to be the show. Tonight, you just want to be a part of the show. And we have yet to see a driver shot where that driver doesn't have a big grin on his face. Let's get to Matt. Mike down in the Ron Katz pit area, finishing fourth in the last race. Now, we've talked a lot. You're a drag racer, straight liner. We're on an oval, a dirt track, and you've got to sit there, and this is what we call tear-offs. Walk us through the whole tear-off process for a lot of fans at home that are new to dirt racing. Well, what you do is you, it's real thin layers of clear material, and what you do is you take these on one side and you fold one, put one over, fold one, put one over. So when you're out there in the middle of the straightaway, you reach up, grab the available tab, rip it off, and some fans will see it come off during the straightaway, and then off goes a clean one. So it's like having a clean windshield for about another lap, but if you run out of them, you're in trouble. Now, we've seen you run a, a lot of dirt over the years. We've seen you run at the Chili Bowl, different celebrity events. So you're not new to dirt, but you are a big fan of dirt. Huge fan, and this place especially. Eldora is it's the holy grail of dirt tracks. I grew up in California, and uh, for Tony to invite me two years ago and bring me back every year is... I can't even say enough. I know IROC's not around right now, but it's ignore he's watching at home, but this has got to be the new IROC for every year. This is unbelievable. Now looking ahead to the A-Main, what did you learn in the last race? Well, we had, these guys are really good setting it up, and I don't know what to tell them. You know, I'm used to a drag race car going 330 miles an hour, so I just tell them I go in the corner and it won't turn, and they fix it. And I go, I go in the corner and it tries to spin out, and they fix it. So they're able to tell what a drag race is trying to tell them, and... Uh, you know, if it had parachutes on, I'd probably pull those in the first turn, too. But uh, I just keep telling what it does, and hopefully they make it better. He's a man who normally runs four seconds in his runs. He's also the current NHRA Funny Car Points leader, Ron Caps. And you know what? Thinking about NHRA, Ron Caps is a points leader. Guess what? He missed a show this past week. And there's no provisionals. No. That's one thing I like about them. You're not fast enough to make a show, you load it up and go home. Dick Bergman. Bobby Labonte fell so in love with dirt track late model racing, he bought a whole team. And this is one of the cars, so do you take it easy since you have to pay the bills in this deal? Oh yeah, we pay the bills on it, so uh, these guys do a great job. I mean, Earl Pearson's uh, one of the best drivers out there, I believe, and one of the nicest guys. And um, last year, I, I, two years ago, I drove his car, and then uh, last year I bought a car of my own and brought it, and they just took care of it for me. So I sat in the shop, and then uh, last year I, was, I had the opportunity to buy the whole team. So I did, and uh, got everybody with it, and. Everybody's been great. It's just been a blast to uh, be a part of. And, uh, you know, it's just uh, small enough where it's, it's fun, but it, and it's not too big where you know, worry about it too much. But these guys, uh, Jason and Matt, they do a great job. And it's a lot of fun to be a part of. And, you know, yeah, I do pay the bills. So that's, that's, that's not a good thing. But the way Earl drives, he takes care of stuff and he brings home money. But tonight, you're driving the car, and these cars are so different than the cup cars you drive, where the rear end turns in the car, left front goes jacking up in the air, much lighter cars than we're accustomed to. How'd you get used to this thing so quickly? Well, this is my third time in it, and uh, I didn't go practice this year. Last year, I went practice for a day, but uh, it didn't seem like it helped me out. So this year, early, I mean, they just uh, been working on it, and they, you know, they race every weekend, so they kind of know what goes on, and uh, so they're um, and they're just really good. So. Um, it's a lot easier to adapt to something when it's really good. Good luck in the feature. Thank you. Matt? And down in the Mike Wallace garage area. And Wallace's making history is not something new, but what this young lady, your daughter Chrissy, did last week at Hickory was very special. Oh, it was an incredibly special event. You know, Chrissy won the uh, a late model feature at Hickory, North Carolina. It's the first time in the track's history, 57 years, that a female's ever won the race in their premier division. So really cool. We were in Dover. I got a phone call. Real excited. She came up here with me tonight. She says, you know, if you can't drive that thing, I'll get it and drive it for you. And the way I'm running tonight, I think I need to put her in for the feature. Well, did you bring your fire suit? Maybe we can sub you in for Dad. No, we'll just pull Dad's up and just fit it somehow. Hey, no Mex is no Mex, just no matter what. No matter what, we'll fit in it. So where are you racing weekly? Are, are you running Hickory just there, or are you, are you running other places? Weekly, we're running at Hickory Motor Speedway in the late mile stock. Tuesday nights we're going to run in the summer shootout in Lowe's Motor Speedway, but uh, this Friday we're going to run at Tri-County. 
And I'll tell you what, I don't know who has a bigger smile, you or Kenny or, or the other Wallace over what she did last week. Well, you know, Matt, as you know, our, when, you, when your kids do something special, it's very special. You, you, you watch them grow up, you watch them graduate from school. And Chrissy's the one that says, I want to be a race car driver. I want to drive race cars for a living. I want to succeed at it. And, you know, she, she fights a big uphill battle as being a female. There's, you know, and just she won. And that's just a really cool deal. Our whole family is very, you know, just very proud of her. And, uh, you know, Kenny made a really nice comment on Speed Channel last week about it. And uh, it's just a great deal. You know, you see your kids grow up. But what about this here at Eldora tonight? This is a great deal. The Victory Junction Gang Camp. Everybody here is having a great time. And, uh, wow, what an event. What an event. And, Mike, for the first time in 57 years, a young lady went to Victory Lane at Hickory Motor Speedway, and it was young Chrissy Wallace. And, and Mike, I've been hearing about Chrissy. Mike's been talking about her. Uh, Kenny's been talking about her for quite some time. And everybody said that this young lady was somebody to keep an eye on. And when you hear that at a young age, uh, it, 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 it's just somebody you need to keep an eye on. Yeah, that's, that's, a cool, that's a cool story right there. We talk about fathers, sons, and daughters. How about a second-generation sprint car racer with experience on dirt and asphalt that's in this race? That would be J.J. Yaley. He has two USAC Silver Crown victories right here at Eldora, 2000 and 2001. And the Phoenix native, about like he was born in a sprint car. His dad, Cactus Jack, had a lot of wins in open wheel and still Turns it left from time to time. Dick? Well, J.J. Yaley has also won in a midget, and he has won in a sprint car here at Eldora. So is this kind of a homecoming for you to run this thing tonight? But don't leave out Silver Crown. I won in a Silver Crown car, too. But uh, Oh, I said that. OK. Uh, it is. You know, not one of these things. This is the second time a dirt late model, and they drive really different than anything I've ever run here. Uh, it was just the car was a little bit too loose in the heat race, and he says I got to pick the throttle up earlier, which is just totally backwards from what I'm used to. But uh, they made a bunch of changes. Hopefully, the car's made a lot faster. It's just cool that uh, they painted the thing up Interstate Green, and uh, they've been working their tails off. That's for sure. If you had to use one word to describe the way these cars run, what would the word be? Uh, they're awesome. They're just cool. They look like race cars, and they have so many trick things that you can do with the suspension to make the cars half forward bite that. You know, right now, the race track's really, really slippery. They can do all sorts of cool things to make the cars really tight and have a lot of grip and put on a good show for everybody. You know, for all the J.J. Yaley fans, it's nice to see you covered with mud again. <laughs> good point. This is Barney Craig, who just scored an Eldora Speedway feature win with a last lap pass of number 26, Mike Dirksen. Barney Craig's number 107.1. That was a great That's little the, uh, race. Light Rock car. Light and Rock. Light Rock. Light Rock heavy on mud. Light Rock heavy on mud right there. That was a great race, though. That was a good little race. He'll get to meet uh, Miss Eldora. Our Chevrolet recap of the B-Main, Matt Kenseth, the winner. Elliot Sadler, Juan Pablo Montoya had problems. Ron Capps led the first five laps. And <laughs> Cruz Pedregon had to stop for a little bit of on-track repair. Darrell saw something I haven't seen in a long time in that late model race, a 55 Chevy. Belonged Man. to uh, Paul Smith. And it had chrome wheels. I've cut up on many of those babies back in the day. Yeah. 55, 56, 57 Chevys. That was a hot rod back in the day, buddy. You may, you helped Barrett Jackson Auto. Every time you cut one up to run it on the, on the, That's, the auctions, you helped the Barrett Jackson auction every time you cut one up. But, you know, back in the day, we went to the junkyard and got our parts uh, sheet metal. You didn't go to the Chevrolet dealership. And, no. Or you didn't have it shipped there. You didn't make it. You just went to the junkyard, cut off in the car, and welded on yours. I like that guy right there. Well, I like those guys right there because I Well, that's why I was going to you're going to say which one. I was yeah. going to say both of them. <laughs> I heard Tony say on his uh, radio show Monday night on Sirius Satellite Radio. He was asked, "Who are you most looking forward to racing against?" The answer was Jeff Gordon. And the reason was he saw Jeff Gordon run here on dirt and they were both the same they're, they're the same age. Except Tony was here watching and Jeff was in a 1,400-pound, 1,000-horsepower sprint car manhandling around this place. 
Tony thought that was pretty darn cool. So he was really looking forward to racing Jeff Gordon, and they will square off from row two. I love the story that Beckford tells about Dale, Dale Sr. and Jeff Gordon. Dale Sr. come up to Jeff Gordon. Jeff Gordon was on the pole. I think it was a Rockingham. And Dale Sr. is back behind him a little bit. And he told Jeff, when I get to you, move out of my way. And Jeff said, what are you talking about? He said, well, I'll be coming. So then Beckford, who's his stepfather, walks, goes over his uh, father, uh, father -in what is he? It's Jeff stepfather. 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 You were right. right. He walks over to uh, uh, Dale and he says, uh, what would you say to him anyway? He said, I told him to get out of my way when he gets there. He said, hey, you trying to intimidate him, huh? He said, well, not really, but he said, Pickford said, you can't intimidate this kid. I can tell you that right now. You want to talk about intimidation? You be at Eldora running up against the cushion, wide open every lap. And about that time, a green number 11 goes by you on the outside. That's Steve Kinzer. That's intimidation. <laughs> Dick Bergeron in the midst of it all. Oh, yeah, I'm telling you what. Everybody's down here. Everybody's got a smile on their face. Kevin Harvick, what do you think is going to happen in this feature? Well, uh, hopefully I can keep going the right direction and passing people, but uh, our, shell, our shell car has been really good. Um, driving, uh, the driver just can't keep up with it, so it's, it's been a lot of fun. I mean, just moving around the racetrack and seeing all these fans out here and everybody watching at home. Uh, just appreciate everybody supporting the Victor Junction Gang Camp, and hopefully we can keep moving forward. That's my goal. Don't get lapped. Can you sense this crowd in the car? Not really. I, I can't even sense what I'm doing. <laughs> well, I'm paying attention to the crowd, so uh, I, I'm still searching uh, as to what I need to be doing, but I'm having a lot of fun. All right, let's move to Carl Edwards. We've talked a lot about these cars having no mirrors in them at all. Is there going to be some beating and banging in this feature event because you can't see who's beside you? Clint told me that I better watch out when he gets to me. That's all That's all I've heard about the beating and banging. But, uh, <laughs> What's he going to do when he gets there? I don't know. That office depot fusion is pretty good. I got a great front row starting spot. I slipped Tony a little bit of money, and uh, looks like we got a, a good spot to start the feature. Yeah, but he's got a good race car, so what are you going to do to him? It must have been a lot of money. No, we got to catch him first, so start 11th. I don't quite know how that worked out, but uh, anyway, it is what it is. We got a good race car, and um, you know everybody's been over there working hard on it. I'm going to give it my all and try to win this thing. Have you ever been to a race where there are as many smiles and as many people seem to be having as much fun as they're having tonight? No, and I tell you, Carl and I were talking about that. You know, we came from dirt backgrounds, and, and we've been around this, but never in my life have I ever been to a dirt track with this many fans. And, uh, you know, these, these guys are in our world. Now, this is what we do in the Cup Series, and it's so much fun to see these guys that have never done this and having such a blast, and I think that's a really cool thing. And I've been around dirt racing all my life, and I think this is the biggest charity night in the history of dirt racing for all these people to show up with all these cars for all the fans for the big audience at home watching on HBO just thrilled you're here it's a big deal you're part of it thank you Kyle you ever see a race car with hubcaps where they at man all the, all, all the fast guys up 99 to 20 Jeff Gordon they got I thought, I thought we they were got show, dubs on them baby I thought we were going to show another picture of the 55 that was out here now look earlier. hubcaps <laughs> on a race car nothing wrong with that man keep that mud from gathering up in there that's side and, bite right there, baby. That's and, side uh, bite. Jeff's hubcaps are chrome. I know. I see that. I knew you would. He's got it all. He's got the flames. He's got the chrome wheels, the chrome hubcaps. There they are. Let me tell you. You can say what you want to about dirt racing, but I'm digging it. You know, that, that, that was interesting. Listen, to, you know, seeing Jeff and, and Tony sit there and talk to each other and talking about Tony sitting in the stands and watching Jeff race. And then now, after so many years, having the opportunity to go back and put all these guys who have seen each other race at some point in time, whether it's watch Schrader race on dirt or watch Red race on dirt or watch Tony or, or Jeff or whoever, and you just heard Boyer talk about, you know, now these guys are in our world seeing some of the stuff we've done because he still considers himself a dirt driver in some way. So uh, to get everybody on a track at one time, is that's an incredibly cool thing. Now, we've already introduced the drivers to the crowd. We did that before the heat races. They are trying to get all the drivers marshaled for a group photo before they climb into their cars. And how many times did we do that in our career, Darren? And how hard is it to get all the drivers hurt <laughs> in one <laughs> place? Yeah, everybody's on a different agenda They need right to now. always do that at the driver's meeting. You yeah, know what yeah. I mean? If you don't take the photo at the driver's meeting when everybody has to be there, then don't take the photo. You know, one thing back to the cars. These are cars that are built specifically to race on dirt. Uh, they've got the, the chassis, the, the, the way the cars are set up. These are strictly dirt racing cars. I'm not saying you probably couldn't take one and run it on asphalt, but they are built and designed to race on dirt. Back about uh, 16 years ago, Dirt Motorsports took their dirt modifieds and created a series of asphalt races for them. And they were a sight to see at places like Thompson Speedway and 
and the, the New Jersey tracks. Uh, at first, they looked kind of like fish out of water, but then those fellows figured it out, and uh, they were as exciting on asphalt. Not quite sliding around as much, but they were a thrill to watch. Everham still has the car that he ran in that dirt asphalt series. See, uh, there's a, dirt racing kind of like road racing to me. There's a technique to road racing. You know, there's a there's, you can teach someone to road race. There's a technique to do a dirt track racing. You just have to you have to know how to do it. Hey, look what's fixed. Flying Ryan's car. That, that is truly amazing, man. After yep. all that stuff, they they beat that thing out together, back together through the through the B main and got it ready for the A. Because after he climbed out, I saw Tony Stewart walk over to the car, point underneath, and he was shaking his head sideways, like no way. Let's show you what happened again between Bill Elliott and Ryan Newman. Boy, look at Ryan's car. I mean, it it it, it should have gone over. If Bill's car hadn't been there. It would have gone over. And Ryan's car got up on its side and slid, and then came down hard. So you know the suspension points on that side, whether it be shock mounts or or coil springs or whatever it was, you know they were bent or they took a pretty good blow right there. That's another thing about a dirt car. It doesn't tear it when they wreck. It doesn't tear them up nearly as bad because your, your slide, the cars will slide and they don't. They'll just get rid of the get rid of energy because they're not on the con on the asphalt. And Daryl, because there are traveling series for these cars, the builders engineer the cars. I mean, you have tear offs on your visor and your suspension parts are much the same way. There are parts in the suspension that are designed to give so that the mounting tabs in the frame doesn't have to. Right, because they, they, like you said, going to race these cars Saturday night. Right. So they can't go to the frame shop and put a new snout on them or any of that kind of thing. And a lot of these guys don't have backup cars. So you got to be able to repair them at the track. As soon as something happens, you got to be able to repair it right there so you can race in the feature. The feature is what it's all about. It's getting to the feature, and we're, t we're talking about the race they're going to run for this weekend, the dream. These guys are going to run these cars again. They've got to rebuild them. They've got to be capable of getting in an accident on a Thursday night and being ready for the heat races and everything on Friday night to be able to get to the feature on Saturday or Sunday. And when most people dream about the dream, most drivers dream about the dream, the nightmare they see is Scott Bloomquist. He's won three of the last five. That's truly amazing. That's truly amazing that somebody, and we've heard these drivers talk about being here for three years in a row and how different the racetrack was three years in a row. Coming back year after year and the racetrack being tacky one year, or really dusty one year, or whatever it was, to be able to come back as a driver and repeat on a racetrack that's constantly changing shows the ability of the driver and the crew to adjust to what's going on at that given time. I think that's one good thing about a dirt track, and particularly with somebody like Tony Stewart's knowledge, he wanted this track exactly like it is tonight. You can prepare this track to be hard and slick, like asphalt. You can prepare it to be tacky and kind of gooey for certain kind of race cars that you're going to run here. So you can do a lot of things with the track if you know how to do it. All right, the drivers are strapping in for the A main 30 laps around Eldora. Matt? Starting all the way back in 24th, Drag Racer Cruz Pedregon. And you have had an eventful night. Yeah, to tell you what, uh, we appreciate Advanced Auto Parts car coming out here looking like the funny car, but uh, I actually got sucked into the wall there and knocked the front end off. So uh, we're lucky enough to get this car in here. And uh, I'll start at the back, but I'm having lots of fun. It's a uh, pretty tough track with all the dust blowing. But uh, hey, I want to thank the car owners, Mike and uh, Mark Walker from 5150 Trailers, Advanced Auto Parts, Herzog, everybody. I'm having a blast. I told Tony Stewart, sign me up for next year. I'm ready to come back. He is ready to come back for the fourth annual Nextel Prelude to the Dream. So he's going to climb aboard a backup car to be able to run this feature event after his primary machine was damaged in the B main. I think we have just about everybody on board. Can you imagine how many times Red Farmer has climbed in a race car? I, I, I'm going to tell you, I can't believe <laughs> just, you said it because I was just thinking the same thing. Just, and, and he just jumps up there on the, on the window sill and climbs in like he's 21 years old again. Slides right down in there, been doing it for 50-odd years. That, that was truly amazing. I was just sitting here. I, I cannot <laughs> believe you said that because I was just sitting here thinking exactly the same thing. How many race cars on a Friday night or a Saturday night or a Sunday afternoon that he's climbed into in his lifetime and climbed out of? Yep. Yeah, you know what I mean? That's just, that would be a statistic. But, you know, we were talking, one of the things I think is wrong with short track racing to some degree is, and not that there's things that can necessarily be fixed overnight, but we used to have all these local stars, people that were good at that racetrack, and you knew when you went to that racetrack, 
whether it was Nashville or whether it was Hickory or whether it was Bowman Gray or wherever it was. There were people there you knew you had to beat. And those were the guys that bring gunslingers in to try to beat them, you know, and just created so much excitement for the local fan. And then that guy, if everything worked out well for him, might get a chance someday to move up to the to the cup division or to a bush car sometime. I'm going to tell you, it's, it's funny. In, in the early 70s, Chrysler came out with what was known as a kick car. Uh, and they built one, my father and those guys, and they'd take it around through the southeast and run it. And I'll never forget being 11 or 12 years old and hearing Jody Ridley's name for the first time going to Woodstock, Georgia. You come to Woodstock all you want to, but you ain't going to beat Jody Ridley. There ain't no way. And he kicked Richard Petty's butt six ways from Sunday at Woodstock, Georgia. But that's the kind of local heroes they were. And those guys wanted to see their local heroes beat Richard Petty or Tony Stewart. That builds that, that, builds that momentum. And then you pull for that guy to get to the big show. Yeah. I thought I saw Rodney Combs there. Now, he was he was great on dirt. Oh, he was. He the cup. There's a great example, a fellow who was a local hero, made it to Nextel Cup. Yeah, he was a dirt king, that's for sure. When we run a bunch of those Patreon shows early on, he taught us all how to run. Two weeks ago, I had to push, help push one of those Chrysler kit cars out of the weeds. No way. Mike aggie has got one, the engine builder. He's got the one that he used to race, and uh, he's got it at his, his little toy shop there in Mooresville, and he's going to restore it. That's, that's incredible. Every yeah. now and then you'll, you'll you'll run across somebody who shows you a picture of one that they found and they've restored. And that was just, that was an incredible program that Dodge and the Chrysler and Mopar came out with and got a lot of people into racing on a budget. And that was what was good about racing at that time. You could race on a budget. Well, it was a factory car. It was right. a factory car. Factory pieces you could buy right from your Dodge dealership. Yeah, Chrysler yeah. engineers designed it. It was either a Plymouth Volari or a Dodge, uh, what was it, Dodge? Dodge Demon? Dart. Dodge, okay. Do no, yeah, Dart. I learned to weld on those cars. I was 12 yeah. years old at Petty Enterprises. We <laughs> built them at Petty Enterprises. And I could lay up under the dash with a with a Miller welding machine or a Lincoln welding machine or an ESOB and, and weld those things up. And Richie Bars and those guys would put me in with a leather jacket because they knew I wouldn't scream about getting burnt because I was just excited <laughs> to be working on a race car, man. All I wanted to do was weld. Uh, last year, Tony Stewart won the prelude to the dream with a last lap pass of Dave Blaney. 2005, Kenny Wallace, the shy one, was victorious. And here we are at the A-Main for Victory Junction Gang Camp. The A-Main of the Prelude to the Dream. Nearly 20,000 people ring the hillsides and the grandstands. And more than two dozen NASCAR and Nextel Cup and other celebrity drivers are set to go. Let's have a look at the finish from one year ago. Dave Blaney almost jumps the cushion. Stewart takes advantage. Here comes Tony Stewart. Smoke has got the lead. Stewart grabs the lead on Dave Blaney. One mistake is all it took. White flag the next time by for Smoke. Pretty exciting stuff right there. Yeah. Man. Pretty exciting stuff. Great, great call by Mike Joy. Your voice has changed a little bit this year <laughs> than what it was last year, but that was the, a great call. The thing, the problem with this race tonight is, I mean, we're here. We're going to be able to see the whole track. You folks at home, you need about seven TV sets so you can see all the action because there's going to be action all the way around this racetrack. What's the best we can do? Already maybe four screens at one time. We, 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 got, all the, we got all we got, and we're going to give it to you. I want to thank Pam Miller, our producer, Artie Kempner, our director, production manager, Ling Mignani, and all of the folks who have donated their time to put this event on television for you tonight. Many, many thanks. Had a great event up at uh, Delaware last week for Artie and autism. Great autism 400 on Sunday and or autism, Monday. The autism speaks autism 400, 400 great. 400. We're here tonight Incredible for Victory event. Junction Game Camp. And I think that just shows how what motorsports, the motorsports community. A lot of times we get caught up in the NASCAR community, but I just think motorsports. When you look at crews and you look at and, and everybody that's here tonight and from so many different forms of racing and so much charity work and so many things they do, it's just a great community to be a part of. These guys care. They care about each other. I know every week, you know, we always talk about a, a family. We might be a little dysfunctional at times, <laughs> but everybody loves everybody and they work hard to, to help everybody that they can. One more look at the Old Spice starting grid for the feature event. An all-star cast with a pair of 99s on the front row and a pair of champions on row number two. And Kyle, if I understand correctly, you, you have had an awful lot of celebrities from the motorsports world to have buildings named for them and activities named for them, both individuals and sponsors at the camp. But the real task that this camp and any camp of its type and a number of charity organizations face is 
the weekly operating cost, meeting the weekly nut. Uh, that seems to be the tough thing. Yeah, you know, everybody wants to, to build a building. Everybody wants something named after them or to look at it like that. Nobody wants to say, hey, guess what? I paid the heating bill. I paid for yeah. the food at this camp. And that's what camp's all about. And, you know, li like Austin said in, in the little piece on the Victory Junction, it's $2,500 per camper. It's free to everybody that comes. We'll see almost 3,000 campers this year uh, and continue to build and continue to make a special place. But uh, we've been, and I say it and I, and I continue to say it, our family, and especially Patty and I and Austin and Montgomery Lee, we've just been incredibly blessed uh, to be the focal point of some of this stuff. And all these fans that are here tonight, everybody that's sitting at home watching it on HBO, uh, the drivers, so many people give from the heart. Uh, and they know it goes to a good cause. And these kids are just great, great kids, and it changes their lives. I think it's time to go uh, racing, boys. What do you think? Oh, oh boy, here we go. Uh, all right. I don't know anything you're, uh, about buckling up your yeah, seat. You're I can't, I can't do the Larry Mack <laughs> thing. I can't do the Larry Mack thing. I'm well, sorry. Not, All right, DW, we... check those tear-offs one more time. I got one to go here, guys. One to go, baby. I'm excited, man. After watching these three heat races and the, and the B main and, and, and look and all this Kyle, stuff. That's something I miss on every race. I used to do it every race. Waving, waving at the, the fans. When you come around one to go, waving at the fans. I remember AJ and Parnelli and... And the, and, Mario, and, oh, the and, all, and the fans respond. And the fans respond. And they come off turn four waving at the fans and, and everybody announce, waving back. And the announcer yell at the fans, wave something white so the drivers can see it. Fireworks. Fireworks coming out of each corner. Sparklers. That's pretty exciting. It's a big sparkler. Man, I'm telling you. Right. All right. This could be big. 30 laps. This is probably the most important command I've ever get. Boogity, boogity, boogity. Let's go dirt racing, boys. On the break, Edwards on the outside of Schrader for the lead. Schrader battling back on the bottom. Stewart third, Gordon fourth. And Bobby Labonte fifth. Mark Martin, Rowdy Bush. Boy, look at these guys. Look at them in there working. Turn right to go left. Turn right to go left. And that's what they're doing. Jeff Gordon on the bottom, working on Stewart. Did not make the pass. Tell you what, it's going to take something to get the lead away from that 99 car. I like this. This is action. Folks, we got cars everywhere. Matter of fact, we got one in the wall down the back straightaway. And it looks like Ron Caps. No caution as yet. Hello, caution flag. You know what, though? I, I, I love this kind of racing. They make sure they need a caution before, before they throw they one. Throw yeah, we saw that earlier. We saw these cars do 360s down the back stretch and 190s or 180s or whatever and just keep going. No caution. Track manager told me earlier, if we throw the caution for debris, you'll have no trouble <laughs> finding <laughs> it. That's right. That's what he said. <laughs> you will know where it is. That's good. All right. Let's get the old cone out here. I, this is cool right here, babe. I tell you what, man, that was pretty intense right there. We've seen the heat races with eight or nine cars in each heat race. All of a sudden, you've got all 26 out there. This track is full, man. I tell you, a guy that made a great jump to get to where he is in a hurry. Keep an eye on that 07 back know, in there. You, you were going to bring up the 07. 07. He did make a great move on the first couple of Man, I'm telling you, look where he is. He he's went eight. to the bottom, he went to the top, and then he went back to the middle. He, he when I up. looked at him on the line, I said, he's too far back. Too He'll far never back. make it. And, man, I looked up, and he went up. He's passed about 10 cars already. He started 11th, and Boyer is up to 8th. Well, that's almost 10 cars. <laughs> I'm telling you, though, he was coming. I he mean, was. He just had thing that looked so good. You know, we talked on the uh, Dover telecast about we were going to talk to Jimmy Spencer about maybe taking that Mr. Excitement name, transferring it over to Kyle Busch. Spencer says, no way, it's copyrighted. He said, we might be able to make a deal. I said, never mind. He, he's got Rowdy on his truck. That fits him. That fits Rowdy him. Rowdy Busch just kind of fits Kyle. It fits him. A lot better than Shrub, I can tell you that. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and let's face it, you can't duplicate Mr. Excitement. That is Jimmy Spencer. That was Jimmy Spencer during his time. Yeah. He was, I, I, I never forget. I would, Spencer never forgets all the, all the great ones. I would man, love to see ones. Spencer on a dirt track like oh. this. Because in a modified, there was, oh, yeah. that's where he got his name from. In a modified, he was electric. I mean, he was amazing. He was a driving machine. I'm going to tell you that. When he was in a modified, he was a driving And he did great in cup, too, but he was a driving machine. Green flag with two laps complete. Well, you can tell these guys have got their game face on. This doesn't look anything like those heat races. Here comes Jeff Gordon. He's got the bottom on Stewart. Jeff slides Gordon. up, 
He's got too much stagger. Closes it up, third place. Stewart goes to the bottom, right back after him for third. Jeff's car just uh, doesn't get a good jump off the corner. And not I'm, as good as the 99s. No, not as good as the 99, but I'm going to tell you, to get around Stewart, he drove that thing off at one and put a slide move on him coming out of two. He just stood in the gas and drove it straight up the racetrack. Yeah, but Smoke with it. He's gone to the top now, and I think that's going to pay off for him because that's where the 99s are running. Edwards the leader, Schrader second, Gordon coming in third. Stewart, Labonte, Bush, and Casey Kane. Then Mark Martin, Clint Boyer, Matt Kenseth. Does it, but let me ask you, I, I, people get tired of me talking about Jeff Gordon, but you know, he amazes me. I mean, you would have thought coming here tonight, ah, oh, Jeff Gordon, he's, you know, he's leading the cup standings, and he's doing this, he's doing that. He's not going to put that much effort into this deal. And there he is trying to get the lead away from these guys if he can get up there you know and, and he's been he's driven everything and i think there was a i don't think there was this big a deal made out of it when he jumped in that formula one car a few years back uh and just got straight up to speed this is a great race out here between rowdy and uh and casey kane but i don't think there was this big a deal made jumping in a car jumping in a car of that that much drastically different than anything we run i totally and agree is that right back two. there that looks I, like Everdam's car. I think that's right. He got in the wall off of turn four, and he just pretty well, he just rode it all the way around turn four, and then he finally just, I think he just said, the heck with this. That was that quarter panel he was talking about earlier that had the Darlington stripe. He was going to buy from those guys. I think they'll give it to him he's now. He's bought it now. I think they, I think he's definitely bought it now. So, uh, we'll fix it. Yeah, he's, he'll still be able to race. He, he's lost yeah. a little bit of his downforce there, but he'll be all right. Yeah, he opened up the back end. There's my cone. Like that. Talk to him. I don't think I'm going to talk to Mike Hilton about that. See if we could about do the something. Cone? Yeah, about the cone. Well, you know, uh, find a sponsor for it and cone hits. Could happen. <laughs> You've got that right. Something else to sell. Nothing <laughs> wrong with that. <laughs> Put That's a right. decal on it. All right. Ray Evernham has gone to the pits. We get ready for the restart. Here we go. Six laps complete. The restarts are incredible. I mean, I'm telling you, Jeff Gordon for Schrader, second. Schrader really, Schrader gave up a bunch on that restart, but he's getting it back down the back. But Jeff did the same thing. Jeff drove to the box, look at him, gas, and tried to do the slide move. Just put, he can do. Oh, he's got him this time. He'll slide it up there this time. Schrader's going to cut him some slack. I thought Schrader was going to root him up a little bit, but he didn't. But Stewart on the outside of Kane, and here comes Bobby Labonte on the bottom. That's the same thing Jeff did earlier, but I tell you what, Bobby and these guys, there's multiple grooves out here. Tony's got a great racetrack out here because they're getting it done on the top end on the bottom. Bobby Labonte's gone straight back to the bottom and is making a little time there. Well, that's what I like about a dirt track. If it's asphalt, you can't do anything about it. You got what you got. You run the bottom, you run the top, whatever it might be. Dirt tracks, you can just move around. You find your groove, baby. Boys, let me tell you, Casey Kane is coming right down the middle and he's coming forward. Boy, he is. That thing is a good getting in and he's got a good forward bite. This is out of his camera. It's out of his car right here. Looking. Jeff Gordon looking for the lead. And you know who probably had a lot to do with uh, Jeff's car tonight is, is Bickford. Because uh, Bickford, it, that was Jeff's mechanic when he drove the sprint cars. Keeps trying Carl Edwards on the inside. And can't close him off this time. Edwards has the run in the back stretch. Yeah, but the way Jeff bombs down into the corner right there, he just, he's just he got enough to slide it. He's going to put the slide yep. job on him easy right here. Yo! Oh. See that? That was sweet. Well, you got to gotta give. I mean, when he comes flying up in front of you like that, you got to give. Baby. I'm going to tell you something. Jeff Gordon looks like he's been running dirt last week for the last 15 years of his life. He is doing what they do. He's All right, doing what and Carl's going to do. do. Here we go. He and Carl are going to trade places now. Carl does a crossover. But I'm going to tell you, Jeff Gordon just proved why he's one of the greatest race car drivers of all time, just driving up there and taking the lead. You think Carl knew he was there. Schrader is third. Because he got no way of knowing he was there, and all of a sudden they're, they're having a lot of action here. I think Schrader. Carl let him know he was there. Schrader third, Labonte fourth, Rowdy Bush and Casey Kane fight for fifth. But the lead is still in doubt, and they're going to get into traffic soon. Whoa, Jeff pushed up bad off of turn two that time. Here comes the 99, back to the bottom. Up the hill he goes. Where he stops, nobody knows. I tell you, the 24's got good power off the corner. He's, he's, Jeff's driving it in hard, but when he gets it cut, it really accelerates good. 
And you see right there, he's coming straight up off the bottom and only loses about a car length, car length and a half down the back stretch. Carl Edwards has the fastest lap of the race by three tenths, and it's halfway for Carl Edwards over Jeff Gordon by a car length. He is making Carl work for this, man. I think what Carl did, is doing now is he said, okay, I'm trying to figure out where I can get in Jeff's way to break some of his momentum. Now they've caught a little traffic, and, and there's Schrader. He's in right back into the pitcher. Schrader's caught them behind them, a three-way battle for fourth. There it is on the right of your screen. And Bobby Labonte, Casey got up there, and Casey kind of dropped back a little bit. Bobby's kind of held his own right in that single groove right on the bottom. Boy, yeah. something's wrong with Jeff Gordon now. Here comes uh, the 99 of, of uh, Schrader. Jeff Gordon's having trouble off the of turn two now, guys. I'm not sure if something's happened to his car, but he's really slow. But Won't you know what? As, as hard as he's been driving that thing into the corner and standing in the gas and driving it up off, he, he could have pushed the right front off of it. You it's, know what I mean? Oh, because, you got, we got a spin. Oh, got cars Stewart crashes. Stewart and Casey Kane, boy, Kane. big time. And Bobby Labonte's in it somewhere, I think. Tony took a big hit down in yeah, turn Bobby one. Bobby spun down to the bottom of the track. Tony and Casey Kane really made big contact. Wow, look at Casey's car. Yeah, it... It, now this all started back at turn four as Stewart fires up. You know, uh, these guys, all things considered, have been kind of hard on these cars tonight. <laughs> they haven't been easy. They have been taking it easy at all. And Labonte on the inside, 43. There's Rowdy on the outside. They make a Ooh. little contact. Oh, and Bobby gets up on the berm right there, and he can't get off. Here comes Casey. That's what I always wondered. When somebody's in your way like that, how do you stop or how do you turn on them? Because you're in a basically a slide all the time. That's always saying the things that worried me about dirt racing. Man, it ripped a body off that thing. Yeah, it just ripped a body. And I think Casey, Casey and, and Tony were the innocent victims on this right. thing. What, I think, what's uh, this? This is in car. What's this? Bam. Oh, bam. Look how much. Jacking on that wheel, and he? he jacked on that steering wheel. Golly. And I thought he had it turned all the way to the right to begin with. He put two more rounds <laughs> in it. <sighs> Dang gum, smoke's gonna be hot about that. Yeah, I get a tear off. I can see clearly now. I can see I'm wrecked. Bergie, <laughs> Dick Bergeron. Tony Stewart is trying to bring his car into the infield, but the front wheels are not connected to the steering wheel. It took mechanics pushing the wheels from side to side to get Stewart through the opening in the wall and into the pit area. They are going to have a massive job to get this car back together again and on the speedway. Doubtful that they'll be able to return. Well, um, he is the promoter. You think the uh, steward would give him a couple extra laps of caution? Uh, no, usually. It's his short track race. Yeah, it usually works the other way, really. Oh, okay. No favors for the promoter, especially when you got a packed house. And that, that's too bad. Stewart won it last year, had a good car, and uh, like everyone else here, just wanted to put on a good show for the fans. i tell you what's happened here, though. It's, it's the level of competition has gone up every year. The first year there were, what, four or five of them here? Right. Last year there were six or eight of them here. This year there are 25 of them here. Uh, I think everybody's gotten serious about this. Been to Goodwood. You know, Goodwood started off as fun. Right. Just tanks them open. And vintage cars, race them. That got serious in a hurry. Caution laps do not count. 17 down, 13 to go. Looking for green this time. There it is, green flag. Carl Edwards, Jeff Gordon for second. Schrader third. Bush. Jeff's got a problem with his car. He's pushing. It won't come off a two now. He's pushing real bad. Then it's Boyer, Look Kane, Kyle and Bush. Kenseth. Kyle Busch to the outside there. Kyle Busch is in third now. He I gets around Schrader. Jeff is it. Jeff's either worn out his right front tire or the car's picked up a terrible push. You can see it right here. It just, it won't once he turn. gets in the gas, it just wants to go straight up the hill right He's got the wheels turned left and it's going up the hill. And here comes Rowdy. Rowdy boy! <laughs> and uh, not too far behind Rowdy is my hero. Clint Boyer. Clint Boyer is Boyer. Clint Boyer is on it, baby. All he needs is a couple of cautions. Cool those tires. He's going to look at Casey Kane in it. And that's a jalopy right there. And yeah. it's it's still, I think it's faster than it was before he wrecked it. You know who else is rumbling oh. around the bottom just waiting and lurking is Matt Kenseth. He's seventh. Mark Martin is eighth. J.J. Ailey is ninth. And Al Marola is tenth ahead of Rudiman, Kenny Wallace, Dave Blaney, Kevin Harvick, and Montoya.
I think Jeff has just pushed the right front off his car. Yeah, I think he's pushed it off, and he's just enough right now that he's been able to hold up Kyle. Whoa. Whoa. I don't know if I do that very many times. Kyle gets a good run on him, but I think Kyle's afraid to mess with him right now. Remember, they are Hendrick's teammates. You don't want to mess with too many. You don't want to mess up your big pro over here. Kyle's already got enough on his resume for one season. Yeah. We started off today in normal Kyle fashion, knocked the right front off, and they fix it, and now he's got a chance to win the race. I tell you, guy, that he's back in there. And I know, I know, I shouldn't even be talking about him, but Kenny Schrader does a whale of a job with that car he's driving. Yep. He, he's just run steady right there in the middle of the racetrack. Yep. You see him. He's made it work high. He's made it work low, and he's moved around. He's looked for different places. And you saw Tony Stewart from where he did not want to be, watching the conclusion to this one from the infield as Schrader tries to hold off Boyer and Kane. Whoa, baby. Whoa. Whoa. Look at that, man. How do you do that? Oh my God! That is incredible. Hey. And, and look, here comes Casey in the in the jalopy. Hey, dirt racing's a contact sport. Here goes Rowdy Bush toward the lead. He's side by side with Jeff Gordon. Takes him on the outside. Six laps to go. I told you, you can't watch all the racing that's going on right now. There's They're racing race. everywhere. You got to be here. Jeff's not giving it up. Jeff nope. didn't give that up easy. I'm gonna tell you what. Oh, oh. Excuse me. Cal going to the high side here. He may be able to run down the 99 because the 99's moved to the bottom. I think I think the 99 and the 24 both have worn out their tires. They've worn their tires, but Kyle I, is Kyle's doing his typical Charlotte deal everywhere else. He just moves up next to the wall and lets her eat. As long as he doesn't jump the cushion, he's got a shot. He's jumped her a couple of times already, but he just stands in the gas. I don't think he knows there's a cushion there. He's just driving the wheels off. Of it, we talked about it earlier. It always reminds me of when, what Junior always told me about drivers like him. You know, it's a lot easier to slow them down than it is to speed them up. Every time he makes a run, every time Kyle makes a run on uh, on Edwards, Jeff sticks his nose back up in there. Jeff, Ooh, Kyle oh, Kyle just not oh, jump the oh. cushion. Oh, he's trying so hard. You know what he's doing? It's the Bristol. He's overdriving it just a little bit. He needs to back off a little wee bit, and he'll be all right. He's giving her 110. We only need 100. 28 laps. Right here, if he could just keep it off of that berm. He just can't get in the wall. Now, he got it that time. He got it that time, Kyle. He got a nice run off of two that time. There he goes. Lap car just ahead. White flag coming. Boy, I tell you, this is going to be a three-way battle right here. Jeff Gordon's cool his tires. He's back in the hunt. Brian Newman just ahead of the leaders. This is the last lap. He's going to slide up on Kyle, Jeff is. But here we're going to. And that lets Edwards get away. Now, now Newman. He didn't get away Edwards. by much because, let me tell you, when they come off a of turn four right here, it's going to be sheet metal flying. Three wide finish, and it is oh, Paul Edwards. What a finish. What a great race, man. What a finish. Schrader's fourth. The 07, your man finishes fifth. From back in the pack. Casey with a red car is sixth, and there's Kenseth in seven. That was a great finish. That was a great race all the way around. We didn't have enough cameras here. Uh, that's what I said. I, I'm with you, Daryl. I'm looking here. I'm looking there, and I'm trying not to talk about it except what we're showing oh on the screen. Oh, my God. We did not have enough. I think you could do a backflip off that roof. I'm gonna tell you, man. We'll find out here. We're, going, we're getting ready to find out. Look at him. That was incredible. That was that shows the talent of these guys, man. That was just phenomenal. Kyle Busch beat race. Jeff Gordon to the flag by two <laughs> one hundredths of a second for second place behind Carl Edwards. And that would relate to translate to about six inches. <laughs> Kenny Schrader fourth, Clint Boyer fifth. Oh man, look at Carl. Casey Kane, Matt Kenseth, J.J. Yaley, David Rudiman, and Mark Martin, the top ten. But the big winner tonight, Victory Junction Gang Camp in North Carolina. And, and you know, that's incredible. And I, I want to say this. You know, we saw Tony on top of the truck, and I know he's disappointed. But Tony made everybody here a winner tonight. All the fans were winners. All the drivers were winners. And, and he's changing the life because of this. Of, of here we go. Of the kids. He made them winners also. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Stuck all right. It. Do it off a dirt car, too, baby. Yeah, Kyle, I just want you to know it's an honor and a privilege to be here with you no. tonight. And all these people that have come out, and uh, this is a great evening for you and for the camp and Tony and these fans have made it all just uh, so worthwhile. And thanks to HBO for uh, for the program tonight. Mike, thank you for being here. I, I've yeah. had a great time. I can't imagine not being here tonight. I know. I want to thank you guys for allowing me to be in the booth with no. you guys. And Old Spice and HBO and Next Nextel and, and Tony Stewart, especially Tony Stewart, Eddie Jarvis, who's done so much for us. So just God bless these guys, man. And all the folks that helped prepare this speedway and manage it for Tony and run it. This is just, just wonderful. And we're just blessed to be able to help you spread the word about Victory Junction 
and uh, be here for such a noble cause. They're going to trot Carl off to victory lane. Kyle, we're going to ask you to head down trackside for the check presentation, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, guys. God bless you guys. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Kyle. Let's get out of victory lane where Matt Yoakum is with the winner. Carl Edwards, the fireworks going off. You dreamed about racing here, and now we've got the third straight different winner in the Nextel Prelude to the Dream. Congratulations on your big night. Man, I just can't thank uh, Tony Stewart and uh, everybody that's, all you fans, everybody at home for doing this for Victory Junction Gang Camp. Got to say hi to Larry McRae and uh, thank Office Depot, Barry Wright Race Cars, uh, Stacy Holmes. But the, the biggest thing is that's, uh, that's just unbelievable. That's just so awesome. I, I'm, I'm so fortunate to get to do this. And this is uh, one of the biggest wins of my career. It's fun. You describe coming to the finish. You had two guys. If you had them here, you could have seen they were right behind you. I figured they were behind me. Uh, one of the guys from uh, Barry Wright Race Cars was down there giving me signs, and he finally just quit. I was like, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. But uh, my little brother, Kenny's at home watching, and uh, just is so awesome. Everybody's supporting Victory Junction Gang Camp. Uh, it, this is cool. This is fun. And, and talk about the night. I mean, this is one of those nights that for you has to go down in your racing history as one of the most special because you know the great cause that this all goes for. Yeah, this is, it's unbelievable. And, and you know, uh, Stacy Holmes is getting out of the car here. Uh, that's my car owner. But um, just the fans, to see everybody. When we were rolling around waving at the crowd, the fans' excitement, you guys out there doing the wave and cheering. and I. I mean, we grew up on dirt tracks, um, you know, a lot of us did, and uh, around this country there's a lot of good dirt racers, and if it weren't for that, you, you wouldn't have the next Cell Cup drivers, so it's cool for everybody to do this. It's really amazing for Tony to do something on this scale to give back. That's, that's cool. Carl Edwards, first ever trip to Eldora, and he goes to Victory Lane. To Nick Bergeron. With Rowdy Bush, who also in his first trip to Eldora. Look at you, your face is all full of dirt. That's the way a race driver is supposed to look when it's over. Yeah, I don't think my visor closes all the way. I got work to do on that thing, but, uh, you know, that was a lot of fun. You know, I got to apologize to Bobby there. He, I, I slid up on the front straightaway. I thought I had enough alongside of him, but I didn't, so I wrecked him there. But, uh, you know, it was a fun race for us. I had a great time, you know. I want to thank Electric and Centurion Boats and everybody that Help me get here for this trip. So, um, you know, hopefully there's not too much expenditure that Tony has to put back into this thing. But uh, I'm sure he doesn't mind. You know, it's just a blast racing with these guys. And I'm not really known for a dirt racer, but uh, have your own opinion after that one. You are now. Tell us about the last few laps. It was fun. I mean, I had a great race going there with, uh, with Carl and Jeff. I finally got on the outside of Jeff. Every time I get there, you know, he'd come up on the straightaway. So I figured I'm going to have to slide him through the corner. But... Um, Finally, I got on the outside of him there and uh, was able to get by him. And I thought I had enough to get Carl, but I just couldn't get enough grip on the outside entering the corner and then get the drive off down the straightaway. So it was just a, uh, a great run, but a little bit short. Congratulations on a terrific night. Mike Joy. Daryl, how about Juan Pablo Montoya? First time ever on dirt. He finished 15th and first time on dirt for Elliott Sadler. Also gave a good account of himself. Well, there's just so many guys. I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with the way these guys all drove these cars around this racetrack. I'm amazed that they can slide these things around here the way they did tonight, and then they're going to go to Pocono this weekend, run 210 miles an hour down the Long Pond straightaway, smooth as silk, right in the tunnel turn. Here's our Chevrolet recap of tonight's feature event. Four-car crash on lap 18. But Carl Edwards won it over Kyle Busch by three-tenths of a second. Jeff Gordon, another two one-hundredths back. Give you a look at tonight's results. A check from Nextel, uh, the folks at Old Spice, HBO, and all of you watching tonight have uh, really helped drive the dream of Victory Junction Gang Camp. And Mike, this is the backbone of our sport. I don't care what anybody says. This is where fans are born. They learn. They look. They follow racing from here. They want to go to Talladega. They want to go to Daytona. But they wanted. They started here locally. They got local heroes, local race cars. This is what our. It's what. This is the platform of our sport, and it's healthy here tonight. I can tell you that. NASCAR Nextel Cup has not raced on dirt since probably the mid 1960s. I think it's time to come back. <laughs> <laughs> well, the car tomorrow. I don't know what kind of. Uh, it might be all right on a dirt track, but our cars are pretty big compared to what these guys are racing here tonight. I, I love what Tom Curley said the other day on the wind tunnel. St build the car, make the rules for your track. And Tony has the right rules for his track. 
Time for the check presentation. We're going to go down there where they will wrap things up. This has been a wonderful night at Eldora Speedway. Thanks to Tony Stewart, to Old Spice, to Nextel, to HBO, and everyone who made this possible. What a great night. It really was. I was so excited about being here. I'm so glad I came here personally to see these guys throw these cars around here tonight. Carl Edwards, you're the man. He's the best. If I was going to start a team tomorrow, he'd be my driver. Jeff Gordon, you're, the, this, you're awesome. I can't get over how great you were tonight. Thanks, everybody. Matt Yoakum will close us out with a big presentation. Oh, yeah, Rowdy's not too bad either. <laughs> a historic night for a very heartwarming cause. And, Tony, the third straight year that this event has drawn 20,000-plus fans for so many special kids at the camp. Yeah, it really has. And I, I can't be more proud of this group of people that are sitting in this grandstands that weathered a storm last year, came back in the fall, and have come back this year to support this event. And everybody from HBO and Old Spice and Nextel and, and you know, Daryl and everybody up in the booth and Kyle and all Dick and, and you, Matt, and everybody that came down here and everybody that helped make this possible. I mean, I, I don't know how we could have any more fun than what we had tonight. And uh, I bet we're probably going to be talking about El Eldora a lot while we're at Pocono this weekend. So it's going to be pretty cool. I just, I just want to thank everybody that came here tonight. You guys don't realize how much you helped contribute to the Victory Junction Game Camp tonight. So I'm really proud of all you guys in the stands tonight. And normally we'd have a check already written out, but there's so much that we don't know that we're going to be raising tonight. But KP, what a great night for your camp. Uh, incredible night. You know, I, I think Tony said it. You know, it, it may be the next tell prelude to the dream and, and all that stuff presented by Old Spice. Uh, but the people at HBO, uh, Pam and Artie and everybody, Daryl and, and Mike and everybody up there, you guys doing this. But like Tony said, none of this is possible for the fans or for the kids at Victory Junction Game Camp if it wasn't for people like these drivers that you saw here or for people that sat in these grandstands and come out and do it. I think you saw why Jeff Gordon and Tony Stewart and Carl Edwards and these guys are the greatest race car drivers in the world and the greatest humanitarians in the world. But these people sitting in the grandstands, they're the ones that make it all possible. And thank you guys. God bless you guys, man. Are you guys ready to come back next year for the fourth annual Next L Prelude to the Dream? I think that's a big yes. Now let's go to Dr. Dirt one last time, Dick Bergman. With Jeff Gordon, and you certainly must have had some fun behind the wheel tonight. I had a blast. What, that was great racing, and I was just glad to be a part of it. The guys on that 24 team, they hooked that thing up for the feature. And I, I'm just sorry I didn't drive it as well as it needed to be driven. That car was a, a, a winning car, and I, I got up there to Carl. I couldn't believe it. You know, I was just shocked that I was even running with him and got by him, and then I made a little mistake, and that's all it took. Carl was just so smooth, not making mistakes. And, um, you know, right there at the end, I saw Kyle go up to the outside making that work. So I just started searching around and actually started coming back to the front. I ran out of laps, man. I, I need another 50 laps. I, I, I was good on the long run. Well, you can come back next year, give it another try. I probably will. That was just so much fun. These guys worked so hard. I got to thank Tony Stewart, the great job that he did at getting this kind of quality field here and doing it for charity and having all these fans. It, it, this is amazing. Great, great opportunity. I'm glad to be here. And Tony's with Matt. And Dick, when you look back to this night, Tony Stewart, Jeff Gordon, first time on dirt in 16 years, almost pulled off the big win. Juan Pablo Montoya, impressive. It was a special night all the way around. Yeah, it was. And, uh, you know, I think it shows the talent of all these guys. I mean, to get Juan out on a, in a late model for the first time in his career and to see Jeff come back after 16 years, uh, I think it shows everybody why these guys got their opportunity to go next Hell Cup racing. But uh, really want to thank all these drivers. It, it is such a huge undertaking, and it's a big commitment on these guys' parts to take the time out of their schedule. None of these guys would let me pay for fuel for their planes. They all donated their time, donated their money, and uh, couldn't have done this without those guys. So just really proud of them, and uh, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I, I got to watch a really good race from behind and got to watch a, even a better finish from uh, in the pits. So just really want to thank all these guys that came and supported us and, and came out here and raced hard tonight for us. This event gets bigger and better every single year, and we appreciate you at home who logged on to whether it was DirecTV, Dish Network, or your local cable system and bought our HBO pay-per-view event tonight for a great cause, the Victory Junction Game Camp. And if you'd like to learn, out, learn more about the camp, just log on to victoryjunction.org for more. We appreciate you being with us here tonight. Good night, everyone. Thank you.